one just so we can get everyone in here and get everyone on stream. My name is Greg Gouillard, Greg G with you on Candlepin Bowling Network. Looking for the YouTube stream to engage here. Come on, YouTube, let's go. They're remembering Ray Simino right now. Ray Simino, the late owner of Lita Lanes, Nashville, New Hampshire, and this is Ray's Easter Classic in his honor, 20 string marathon. They're doing public address announcements. And we'll be getting started soon. Manual resets announced. So we are using Cubica scores for the first time. Last corrections here, and then we'll be underway. Get it in here for everyone. Like the video and share so that people know that Ray's Easter Classic is on. We are live from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Let me know how we look and sound. I know I'm sporadic right now as we warm up right here, getting into the action. And as you can see on screen, we've got Jeff Surrett, the winningest bowler all time, five-time Easter Classic champion here. And he'll be on our featured lane, lane 24, along with two other powerhouses, Dave Barber and Matt Harnett. All of them ICC champions with respective teams. Matt Harnett, of course, a recent ICC champ. Reminding everyone of the new pin setter techniques. This is the first time we have Cubica scores here. Last year it's been previously Pro Score, a system that Woburn Bulladrome used to use, Olindy's does use, Demanda's Ellsworth still uses, I recall. But the names are all up on screen, so I anticipate this is going to be a pretty short delay before we get into it. It is now 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time here at Lita Lanes, Nashua, New Hampshire. Good to see you all. We are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube today for this 20-string marathon. Point being, if you have any time on this Easter Sunday today, or all the time, goodness gracious, that'd be something. It is great to have you here. You're welcome. And we will be here all day on Candlepin Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. Bowlers will rotate around the lanes, lanes 2 through 35 in this sell-out Lita lanes. I do see 35 lit up. I think I see 2 lit up, although it's shrouded by the many arcade games here. And here we are. First ball has been called for. Bowlers choose their lane mates. Handshakes all around. This is a singles tournament. Bowlers do pick their lane mates just for camaraderie and whatnot, and we have seen Barber, Surrett, and Harnett before, if I recall correctly. Surrett is first. That's Bryant's prize visible in lane 25 out of Diamond Junction in Palmer, Mass. Here's Surrett now on 24, and Easter Sunday Classic is underway. He wipes out, he's got the 189. You can see the leave on your screen here as well at the top. Let's see how he does here. He's got no five pin back there. Oh, he got it off the wall. That's an incredible shot. And that's the caliber of bowler we've got here in this Easter Sunday. Ten and a ball to start. Bears award ten plus the value of the next bonus ball. Strikes ten plus the value of the next two. Anybody who knows bowling scoring knows that offhand. Never seen Candlepin, of course. It scores the same, but you do get that third ball to get up to 10, which could very much matter in this 20-string format. And any pins on the plate stay on the plate and can be used as live wood. Jeff didn't get any, but he got the spare anyway. His shot on the head pin is a good one. He's got the five pin here, and the fill is nine. There it goes on screen. Lane 24 featured. Sam D'Agostino on lane 23. We'll see him later. With the wood, he's got it again. 29 of the ball, bowlers will go five at a time. 
New scoreboard here, hopefully you like it. You see the total auto updating on your left side. Lanes two through 35 in this crowded field of tournament here at Lita Lanes. Named for Lita Simino, the mother of the owner. So let's miss this one. Four horsemen in a nine. The fill is five. There we go. Hits the headpin, that's a good shot and the sidewall action is lively. Well, you remember in times past with this tournament that sometimes the pin action could be stodgy. Of course, the last two Easter Classic champions, Chris Merrill and Tim Douglas, I'll turn my mic back a little bit, were at the two lowest scores and that was probably because of the new pins and the difficult pinfall. But nowadays you see the lateral motion going here and certainly this man who's won five Easter Classics and know how to do it. He's showing you how. You said it, Ben. There's the washout there. He's got seven more. Boy, is the pin action lively. He's got a 1-3-10, one, three, one, three, if I can name the pins. Uh, that's not how we do it. Bill is seven. See if he can do it again. Yes, got it. Four straight for Surrett. It's the second ball that matters so much in this game to rack up those bonus balls. And you see he's heating up here. 61 in a ball through four. Spares are rare in this game. It's, well, they're tough anyway. Strikes are really, really rare, of course. There's no guarantee of those. Any pro score of about 120 is pretty good, and especially here in the Easter Classic, where in last year's tournament, let's have a look here. Tim Douglas' winning score was 25.04. That's about a 125 average. Calvin Locke came second heartbreakingly by just a matter of a few pins. 24.99, only five back. Josh Daly was nine back at 24.95. There you go. Two and eight, he's got it. Eight and another. What a half to start this marathon for Surrett. 79 and a ball. Insane. There's a possible score correction. I'm just taking a peek here to make sure I'm reporting accurate information. And it is 79. I thought it was. Spare on the board. Brings up Dave Barber. <laughs> Robert D'Agostino, Sam D'Agostino's washed. Oh, don't worry. I, we'll see him on lane 24, and we'll see for sure. He's actually working 44 through 4, so, hey, that's fine. Jeff Surrett with 79. I'll tell you what, that's pretty good. Some confusion over the new scoring right here. This is not warm-ups, by the way. I'm just realizing I got the text wrong. Let's get this correct. First of 20. That's it. Pile in here, Facebook and YouTube, Candleman Bowling Network. Like, share, hit that thumbs up button on the video so that more people can see it. This is the marquee annual 20 straight tournament here in Nashua. Lexi Howard, Sean Howard, doing great work to get this tournament underway, including the new Cubica scores you see off screen to the right there. Dave Barber, now on lane 24. Dave Barber, of course, Vice President of Friday Night Pro League, organizer of the Pro Series, along with Nick Zuffalato, Nate Lees, and all their significant others as well. Lori, Samantha, and Allie, they do great work. He's got a spread eagle to begin, tough luck. Drops the two pins, so that's twice accurate for Barber. Got that unique backup ball delivery where he just snaps it across the lane. Really has that stutter step and snaps it across the lane. It creates that motion you see there, and he collects nine out of that, which is very good. So a good accurate start here. 
Yes, the scoring is automatic, but the resets are manual. This should be good for bowlers. They like that. This automatic scoring is a great investment for many bowling centers. Kubica very happy to partner here. Andrew Medeiros in-house as well. It's 7-10. There you go. You see the splits in yellow as I have it here. Sorry, Micah Imperato. I know you do head pin, uh, head pin hits in yellow, but there we go. The wood down low didn't cooperate. By the way, that was Trevor Kennison on lane 25, just demolishing those pins. And he collects the 10 pin, and there's a nine box. And there we go. Turning up the levels now, we have Bob Lee joining alongside our executive producer. Hey, Greg. Looks like you had the high uh, first half of all bowlers on this side of the field, anyway. 79 in the ball. You can see the leaves here. Actually, only two head pins for Surrett out of that, yeah. but straight is, marks is there. Is this uh, the Jeff Surrett then? I, 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 there was a sighting of him the other the other night. He, oh, I, yeah. I, uh, I believe he's, he's in his element here. Uh, I also saw a Brian Mayer had a 66. Nice job, Jeff. Um, and there's uh, Chris M over here on the left, bowling with, uh, with Calvin Locke. Was it, had a well, Chris Merrill, yeah. Chris Merrill, okay, that's Chris Merrill going first. Okay, he had a 71. Um, no surprise, he was running second at the halfway mark, fell off at the end there, but still cashed. A Barber. That's like his third ball here, so he's cleaned this up well for 10. Yeah, that's three straight splits for Barber. See the score updating at the top of your screen. They can only see this bit here, so you can see that horizontal strip and then the score updating. Cool. So honestly, this is pretty good. This is about what you'd want from Barber. Yeah, pretty I'm much accurate throughout. Loving the rig, love the monitors, love the soundboard. Thanks, uh, Mike Morin. Yeah, uh, thank for, you. For the use of your, of your beautiful soundboard. Um, and hello to every, happy Easter to everyone. I hope you um, just came in from uh, Search for eggs. I don't know what the Easter Bunny thinks he's doing. He comes in, takes them out of your fridge, hides them in your backyard, <laughs> sometimes in your living room. How does he know to do it? Where? How, how does he? How does he get around all those houses? I don't know. It's incredible. The less we discuss the logistics, the better. In some cases. Let's see if Barbara can break this string of no, nope, this string of three straight splits with a washout. All right, I'm gonna go back to my lanes. I'm. I'm I'll never see you today. I'm. Uh, We'll be finishing on lane 16 Alongside later. Kevin Burns, and remind me who else? And uh, Justin Coach. Uh, good. Justin. Well, maybe see you later, perhaps, but good yeah. luck. Yeah, no, I, I'll see you when, we, when, we, when we're following the leaders and um, look forward to it. Bye. Sounds good. Bye-bye. That was Bob Lee, our executive producer here at Candleton Bowling Network. Thrilled to be joining you uh, for our, this will be our third year of covering this tradition since 1989. Barber pins out nine. Accurate on the other two shots. So again, those two out of three that just looking to put it together here. So again, the accuracy is there, so hopefully the pin action follows. Almost 100 people on our YouTube stream alone, extraordinary. Y'all know that YouTube has our best video quality. But wherever you may be watching on Candlepin Bowling Network, we thank you very much. Shot this time leaves the 3 7 9 10. Good grief. Pretty good. He had the wood in the back there trying to get something to spin. Unfortunately, Dave Barber missed the three pin. Then we'll miss you. Look at that lateral pin action. My Jove, he nearly made that one. Instead, it's nine. So honestly, 46 half pretty much under reps Barber's skill. I mean, you see all the head pin hits he has at the top of your screen. But there you go. And that brings up defending ICC champion Nova Scotia's own Matt Harnett from A Plus Accounting. Had an extraordinary feat in the Friday Night Pro League where he dumped over 400 in his one and only appearance with Exeter Lanes. Calvin Locke also dropped by the Friday Night Pro League recently. Last year's Easter Classic runner-up. Had a pretty good showing as well. Arnett's backup ball dishes away, wipes out the 4-7-9. Having spilled the head pin from behind, so we'll leave it gray at the top of your screen. 
But last year's winning average was 125. Oops. It'd be nice if the scoreboard would stay put. Oh, high on the wood, and it deflected away. I think that back piece of wood trampolined it away for Harnett. Does it work out? distracted here trying to pull up some stats for him. Matt Harnett. Come on. Where are you? There we are. His best finish was second place in 2019. He's got a 3-4-6 here. 2019, the year Kevin Davis won, if my memory serves. Away on the second ball, he'll look for the third ball out. Every pin critical. Every single pin you can get here makes a big difference. Getting one pin extra per string, if you multiply that by the 20 strings we're going to have here in this all day marathon, that's going to, that each single pin multiplies across the three marks in effect, if you think about it. An average spare is about six and a half, 19 and a half, round up to 20. So every single pin you can get will translate to a mark advantage. And it did create a distinct top three in Tim Douglas, in Calvin Locke, and in Josh Daly. Corey Smith and Tim Hazard were tied for fourth as well, distantly far back. Six out, this is the one, three, one, two, six, ten, excuse me. Arnett shades it to the right side of the pin and it doesn't go. First string of 20 pile in here. I'm watching the comments, following everything as fast as I can. Boy, what an amazing crowd. Everybody knows this is the marquee 20 string tournament. Tell your friends and get them involved as well. There's a lot of bowling here, so don't feel pressure to stay on by. A happy Easter to you and yours. Arnett's second box is an eight, excuse me. Or at least it's scored as an eight. Maybe it's my memory, maybe it's not. I am going by what the Cubica scorer is because that's how it's corrected. Bowler's responsibility to check their scores frame by frame and their professionals, they know how. Takes out the two, five, eight. It away. Uh oh, now you don't want to lose the three pin there. Now there's nothing back in the head pin. Arnett's got a great ball. He had that epic shot to win the ICC championship over Chris Merrill at the end. It came down to that last bonus ball in a match you have to see to believe. That's a great out there. Pin decks are lively here. You can see the pin just roll across there. So it rewards good head pin accuracy, and that is nine for Arnett. So an average of 125 was enough last time around, but we'll see this here. It might take 130 or so. I'll go over historic scores in just a second. Might have to be during the breaks, in fact. Well, we've seen this one already with Barber. He, he finished this one with 3, 7, 9, 10. Now Harnett's got it as well. a seven. Four to two at the half, and now let's bring up the guy who's lighting up the scoreboard at the moment, Jeff Surrett, 79 at the half. Look at all this. Marks for days. Nine and a spare. 
trying to pull this up here, excuse me. Six straight marks for Surrett. On the six pin and gone. He the ball. He's 38 over at the moment. This one, unfortunately, not as lucky here. There's a 2 4 7 and the 3. Or a 6 fill. Going for more pins. That might spill across. Oh my goodness. That got a rise out of everyone looking. That two pin was skedaddling across, and we thought it had a chance. Parallel pins. Difficult for most of us mortals, but who knows? Now it's a plank right in front. Easy 10. That might matter. Put an X on the board. 10 more. 114 through 7. Chance to bust into the 140s in this opening string. Pin again. That's his pocket, the one two sides. Red dealing from the left side of the lane, left to right. 5 9. Petty, that wasn't a fill, but he has a chance for yet another plank there. He's high on the wood. It's perfect. Spare again. 124 plus. Greg Guyar live here with the Candlepin Bowling Network watching the best. Here on whoever cycles through lane 24. Bowl is rotating through 2 through 35. Jeff Serrett and Dave Barber, of course, teammates in the Friday Night Pro League with Team Exeter Lanes, formerly Uber and Bulletrome. That's the team Matt Harnett substituted with. Good, pretty decent guy to get off the bench, if I might say so myself. Serrett, of course, intricately familiar with Lee Lanes, including on the Stars and Strikes show with Dick Lutz and Mike Morin. Lots of those shows from the WMDS days can be found on YouTube. Wolfman12395 for a star. I'm not sure if Alley Chat has some, but they have a lot of great classic as well. Alley Chat on YouTube. Four horsemen right side at six. Let's try. Adverse break to his ball. Oh, the 10 didn't go. You know, four horsemen left, I think, as ball takes it because of that break there. He'd rather shoot at the one-two pocket. Aiming at the one-three, it doesn't quite go. I'm noticing Trevor Kennison made a great shot on lane 25 there where the wood did tip over there. So the pins do seem a little more willing to drop for skilled bowling. That's good to see. Jeff Serrett is at 140 and could possibly go into 150 with a 10 box here. And a tremendous start. Lots of side pools in action right here as well. Just uh, Dave Hodge Malahan putting those together. High single, I believe high triple is one as well, if I'm recalling my conversation with a bowler. And then three bagger pool for just this tournament. And there is a carryover four bagger tournament, which I'm not going to count out the way it's going right now. One, three, six, seven to cap it off for Surrett. It's the power and the angle. You see, he's only got the head pin half the time, but when he does, he simply demolishes it, and he has such a great working ball. And you can see why he's been so strong for so long. That's a spare. And you are all here to see it. 150 plus. Look at all the color he splashed on that scoreboard. I'll have to go over these stats. Oh, get over four. Yes, a hammer to cap it off. Incredible. 160 to start it off for Surrett. Extraordinary. Well, it's a marathon, not a sprint, that old chestnut, but. Every journey starts with a single step. How about that for cliches? 160. Now we shift over to Dave Barber, and we got the shout in chat, Greg. And you know, Tyler with the shout there. Perfect game. That's right. He had 10 every step of the way. Take one more look at it, folks. 10s all the way. 
tens and spares. Back to Barber right now. Again, he's luckless. It's the second time he's faced this sleeve. The seven pin getting chiseled out. He went more into less right here. There is that old adage of trying to shoot less into more, but. It's probably based on experience largely, and I'm not going to question these guys' experience, that's for sure. Barber, you notice, is pinning well right here. Nines and tens, nines and tens. Those of you on candle pit chat, I can't see your usernames because of a glitch in the matrix, but uh, I will tend, I can see your comments. Great to have you all along, even if I can't identify you by name. This is gonna be an outpost leave for Dave. Four horsemen in the seven. Yes, gone! Well, Barber, who also deals left to right, some would ordinarily struggle with the 1-3 pocket, just like any backup bowler, no more than usual. That's a nice shot. Fendo, good to see you in chat. Brandon Martins, wait, I remember you were here last time. I think I met you at Easter Classic, no less. Great bowler out of the ACST. Dave Barber set to fill his first mark. Dave Barber has made multiple appearances, appeared on special, uh, a special presentation of Candlepin for kids when he appeared on the Pro Series Final, of course, a tournament he organizes. He's got a six fill here. Candlepin for dollars with Mike Morin. Candle pins for dollars. Candle pins for dollars, I mean to say. Frank Malicote as well, I remember. Great show. Having worked with Mike Moore, and I can tell you he was one of the greatest gentlemen in the business as well. Obviously, he's done his due, but he still very much enjoys being around the candle pin scene. Michigan guy, convert to candle pin. And Dave the Razor Barber, as he was known on the candle pins for dollars. They had a nickname for everyone. Epic introduction. Again, pinning well, nothing below nine. Remember, those single sticks matter. I see a lot of the score sheets from last year are littered with a lot of bowlers who had promising starts and then dwindled into the 90s. Heaven forbid the occasional 80, and those double-digit strengths can be killer. I think we will see less of them this year because the pin action is more forgiving and more rewarding of skill. As Barber gets another split. Nice kibosh, Gregory. could go. What a great slice that is. It went over the top of the 10. Those candle pins are tall, but not that tall. And that is luckless. I tell you what, that was an incredible cut by Barber in a manner of speech. That skips off the foul line. You see it bounces and trampolines. That's a hard earned 10, and that might matter. Joined alongside by Bob Lee. Here you go. I'll get that set up for you. And uh, I'll turn your levels up. Bob, what are you seeing on your half of the house? Lanes 1 through 18, I'm assuming? No, I, I, I wa walked all the way around, and you have the high score. Jeff Surrett, the Jeff Surrett with a 160. But uh, right on his tail is Nick Leach with a 156 across the way. These are just the first bowlers, um, with the exception of J.J. Torino, who was just finishing up with a 125. But actually, the, uh, the next bowler I saw was Nick Frenzy, who bowls out of, uh, formerly out of Union, Union Street, uh, station, Union Street Lanes. Now I believe he's in Abington uh, at Timber Lanes. He threw a 130. Justin Scally, 123. Corey Alici, 124. Alici, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jimbo Ayat, 127. And uh, Chris Merrill on our left threw a 126. Those are the 120 plus bowlers that I saw. Greg, and not necessarily comprehensive. Fantastic. Barbara, you see, you're getting pretty luckless. I mean, the pin action seems to be a little more forgiving. I don't know what your yeah. experience is bowling out there, although Barbara, you see, six splits there and gets hosed with a 100, unfortunately. A, a despite lot. largely yeah. active bowling. A lot of us had the advantage of bowling in the um, Luck of the Irish tournament last week. Yeah, we got five strings in and had the feeling for it. You know, it there's a lot of variation among the lanes, frankly, especially behind us. Uh, you know, the lane 16, 17, we had a little roof leak last week. Oh. Uh, but I just think, uh, especially on 17, the, the, the approach tilts from right to left. Um, lane one, which is down today, the ball tilts from, I believe, left to right. But it, that one won't be in operation today. Tough crack on that. Oh. Arnett nearly made that three and two conversion there. Lane choice is bowler's discretion right here. That was a topic yeah. of discussion on 
Uh, ripping the rack with Tim Matero, Brian Atherton, and Calvin Locke. Rather rough. Um, Burnett's going to get a nine out of this, I believe. But did you did you have a strong preference on lane in terms of where you would start, considering you have to cycle through 20 of them? Yeah, I like to be on this side a little bit better. I, I frankly, I find the footing and the 19 through 30s. Yeah, and the, and the atmosphere on the other side a little bit, a little bit scary. But that that's where that's where I, I finished next to Tim Douglas last year when he made his, his you know the spare of the year, was, you know, one of the spares of the decade to beat Calvin Locke in the final. Uh, final box last year right he, he was right there it doesn't bother him where he was I mean there's a certain energy about it considering it was really a that half versus this half Calvin Locke was on our cameras last That's year right with that epic showdown Calvin is bowling on our left is it he's now standing at 86 through 86 through 8 uh, you, yeah, like you can see just, the frame numbers please yeah up he there. actually is up to 88 that 88 through 8 and Oh, get it. Might be worth taking a reading on Andrew here in, on our right, but I, I, you're, you're following that. Yeah, late 24 only today, though. Okay. Uh, we've been seeing Terry and uh, we yeah. featured him on Ag Agawam uh, Candlepins for Cancer Fundraiser. That was a lot of fun down there. He is the fastest, hardest goofy footer in the game. Yeah, watch how he deals that. Harnett's luckless with that split. I see. I'm going to have to get you new batteries for this one. Pity. We need the radar gun. Yeah. I, if I don't put plastic in between the batteries, <laughs> it runs dry. Heart, heart. Matt is uh, looking at the spread eagle here. Yeah. Pinning decently with it. A tough side. Nova Scotia's own defending international champion. And previous runner-up of the Easter Class of the Year, Kevin Davis, won it. He's got an eight box this time, having a struggle fest at the moment. Five splits. Yeah, splits galore. For some reason, Surrett right. didn't get the memo that we're supposed to be dealing with difficult pins today, but that's why he's won it the most. And he would really love to finish I, with a couple marks. <laughs> I also need to credit Dave Barber, who we saw earlier. He, Dottie Lawrook, and John Zappi all have been instrumental in getting scores updated. I should also thank uh, Lexi Howard for constant score updates, which we'll have later. We'll have the link for you shortly even though I know it's been posted somewhere. Uh, they've been instrumental in assembling the scores and being able to uh, assemble all these stats. The bowling is breakneck speed right here, but we're going to have some breaks, and I'll be looking forward to going over that in oh just a moment. Oh, no. Ooh, boy. He had the center diamond, 7-10. Yeah, he's, that's happened to him a few times, unfortunately, so uh, that's going to have to struggle for this out at the Eddie. moment. Yeah, he picked the 1-5 out of it. Just... Uh, I mean, he's throwing, he's obviously throwing a, a straight ball. Uh, just yeah. would love to see uh, 74 through 9. Yeah, it's incredible that sort of bend in the elbow he has here, you know. It's still that pendulum motion, which you want in the game of Candlepin. Is that the, However, gets the timing, but. Is that, are those teenage uh, mid, mid, Ninja Turtles on his, on his Um, uh, I think they are. I think it's yeah. TMNT for sure. I think so. Very cool. All right, here's one. Boom. Oh, he unbends it at the end. Oh, yeah. no. Five, seven, eight, nine. I guess he's getting light on the pocket there. That was, Mike that McIntosh was, that was like, full. That's a strike ball when it turns into that one. I, I, I've done that in super slow-mo to see it. Six splits. Oh, what a shot it. that is. All right. Yeah, he's, Incredible. His object rate, I mean, he clearly, it looks like all six head pins that he had I'm not sure if he had a head pin in the seventh. Six, six of his head pins were splits. And then he just converted on that one. He, you know, like, like we said, we saw, we saw the center Worcester where he, where he was actually in a, through an ocean ball and then went right down the middle one five on, on the center diamond. Okay, he's, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not afraid he's gonna, he's gonna have a good, a good day, but he's gonna, he's gonna be in the you know, 90s with a decent fill here. Yep. That'll, be, that'll help him a lot. I've shortchanged him a pin and he's got the eight here. Here it is, boom, another. How about it? That's a big 92. Saving that, that, that was probably about as bad a luck as you're going to see in a, in a string. And it's going to happen to everybody. Hey, Greg, i got to go back and see you around. Lane 30. I'll take your levels off. I'm going to go over some stats here. Again, Dave Barber, instrumental in helping assemble that right here. <laughs> Jeff Serret, of course with scores that are just mind-boggling, including 27-29 in 2010. Several other 2600s. He had a span of that from 2009 to 2013. Then 
of course, Surrett pretty much champion four times out of that, 2010, 2011, 12, 13, and then a break to Chris Bover before getting right back on the train. Chris Sargent had a similarly broken streak as well. He's a four-time champion and the second most winning as the bowler of all time uh, in this Easter Classic Tournament, 2000, 2001, 2003, 2004. Bob Whitcomb inter interrupted him in 2002. And that's 26 37. It's also mind boggling that three of those four winning scores for Chris Sargent were 2,700. The greatest winning score, of course, Jeff Atkins. Where is it? I just need a. It, it starts at the 2 8. I know that much. Yeah, there it is. 28 12 for Jeff Atkins in 1997. <laughs> looking around I thought we had ah there's our tournament average is perfect so I can see Barbara has a tournament average of 126 in this tournament Jeff Surrett 126 no that's not right Yeah, 128 for Jeff Surrett, excuse me, 128.8, that's much better. I guess I'll re refresh the table, just make sure I've got the latest data. There we go. Sam D'Agostino, Mike McIntosh, and Sean Baker are up next. This is string number two coming on up. I'll clear the scoreboards real quick. We will get right into it. Bear with me, folks. Already? One game in. Greg, I can, I can shake it, you said? Mike's a little hot, just so you know. No, you cannot shake the camera. Hot Mike? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Hot potato. Uh, it, yeah. Hot pocket. Hot tamale? Hot tamale. <laughs> Not a lot of hot sauce. <laughs> hot sauce. Mm. Uh, no, you already said hot pocket. Shoot, I, I hate this game. <laughs> Dave Barber. Dave Barber's better than every, me and everybody. <laughs> hot stuff? No, I wouldn't. Funny guy. There we go. Sam D'Agostino, Mike McIntosh, and Sean Baker. Getting you in here, doing production and commentary at the same time. Oh, this is a fantastic crowd. Happy Easter, Albert. Greg in Australia, always good to see you as well. And to everybody else I see here. Yeah, lots of accolades for Jeff's Arrett, 160 perfect string. There you see it. Voice of Sean Howard, I believe you can hear. Well, second string underway, I believe. Yep, action is starting, and we got Sam D'Agostino here. Delightfully, this will be his first Easter Classic. Great to see you. It's a sellout crowd making Ray Simino proud. Look at that backup ball, deals into the one, two. Three, five, and ten. This has a chance here. Vertical Wood may be in the way here. Tailed it away just. Oh, wow. 
Agostino, a Channel 50 alumnus in his own right as well. He starts with an eight box here. Matches online of him versus Chris Sargent, Brian Feast. You can watch that on Wolfman12395. Mike Sweeney with a great video archive there. Great to see his way make his way to Lita Lanes for another marquee tournament. Of course, Lita Lanes will also host the ICC Worlds Tournament. And some people are going to be surprised by that. They're saying, well, wait a minute. I thought it was going to be the, I thought it was going to be Banger Brewer Lanes. Well, unfortunately, machinery or other technical problems, uh, it, it was probably technical problems. I'm actually not sure of the exact nature of it, but Banger Brewer will not be hosting ICC this year. It will be Lita Lanes. That'll be later on, of course. Mixed Worlds is upcoming at Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts. That's a great recovery. Three on every ball there for Sam. He's got 17 through two. Is there a link? Yes. Lita Lanes is posting scores online. Let me see if I can find it. Lickety split and share that with you all. Can I do it without ruining the stream? Don't buffer, don't buffer. Come on, Mixer Sam there. One, three, six, seven. That's got a chance. Yep, and you can see last year's Easter results as well. Fantastic. Ah, just another three, six. That Wood's going to roll, though, and take out the seven. And Wood's going to roll back towards the hat pin. Not quite. And a nine box. So I posted in chat the scores. I believe that will be it. Leaderlanes.com slash Easter dash 2024. No scores up just yet. It takes some time to compile the results, and we've only had one string so far. But that should give us a sense of where we're at. You know I'll be hitting F5 like crazy. It's an F5 Sunday. That's head pin smack dab, and we've seen this eagle minus seven leave a few times. Might be the leave du jour. Sidewalls are lively here, so that might explain the extra trampoline effect. Why we have that corner pin missing, perhaps. Trying to slice less than a more. If he had that bounce off the wall, D'Agostino had a chance here, but instead Sam leaves the 3-6-10. Just seven there. Come on, type properly. This may be Sam's first appearance on Candle Pin Bowling Network, but I'll have to confirm that for sure. One, two, four, six, ten. Head pin there, take out, takes out the one two. And just seven. I missed the leave on that, I apologize. 40 at the half. Now Mike McIntosh. Mike McIntosh 3.0 as he's often referred to by Paul Grant. He starts on the head pin and he's got a triangle. Triangle number six I refer to that as, the 6-9-10. Sometimes called Mongos on King of the Palace, that old show out of the now sadly former New Palace Lanes in Fitchburg. That's a spare with wood. Worth noting as well. Now there's a spare on the board. For Mac Attack. My name, nobody else's. McIntosh has bowled in this tournament in 1998, 1999, 2010, and 2013. 
He's back again. He's got the 5.78 this time. Topped out at a 23.82. So far anyway, but time flies. Trying to leverage that high wood, perhaps. He overcut it over to the left, but the idea was to play that cap there and essentially have the pin somehow trampoline in to the seven, the ball trampoline into the seven, while the wood somehow collects the five eight. I'm not quite sure how the gears would spin on that. But that's a devious leave, and he only has so much time to figure it out. We've got 20 strings to get through, and we'd like to get home at a reasonable hour, even though it is a ton of fun to be here in Nashua. He gets a nine. Uh, oh. That's better. Why did I break the four things? Oh, gosh. Sorry, folks, trying to get the formulas here. He's got the check mark right side. There we go. Three, five, six, and ten. Juggling all the components back there. Oh, my word, look at the wood dance back there. Back at a chance. Five pins stays put. And 10. Bob Lee is back here. Bob, what's the latest? Hey, Greg. Well, uh, didn't see too much out of the number three slot, but uh, Aaron Fontaine, um, who I did who I had, an up, had an update on before, had a 133. Thank you. Justin Waters is here uh, on the wait list. Couldn't get in this year. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> he's, 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 he's an observer. We've got There's a lot of observers today. I, I'm hoping to see Steve Badney, actually. He's one of the he's one really? of my uh, one of my heroes that I have not met in person. I, I hear he was here and I I didn't Steve Badney. If you see him, I just want to I, I never met him before. I, I would really love to meet him. I'll get, I'll get his autograph or something. Uh, yeah, some fanboy thing. I should have as well. Ooh, just wide of the blank there as well. Right. Got away unfortunately from McIntosh. Steve, so Steve Kelly had a double uh, on his way to a 73 first half in the second. Nice. Um, our champion, by the way, Tim Douglas, made the turn. He's now on lane two. Remember, we're not using lane one today. So he went from, uh, I think, 35 to two. We're, we're 36 and one are both down today. Um, his spare, spare lanes. Anyway, he threw a 106. Um, but, you know, he wasn't too upset about it. He was chill. Very nice. And there are some notable absences. Sure, we mentioned Justin, but also Craig Holbrook and Bob Whitcomb uh, are absent from the field today for entirely different reasons. Yeah. Holbrook because he missed the cup uh, for the sellout event. He says he will be doing it again. I heard him talking about it. Um, I don't see an eight pin back there. They're ready, ready psychically. McIntosh. Yep. That's a pretty one. That's, uh, that's two spares on his half, 56 in the ball. Why is he? Th he's 3.0 now. He's, he's a reformed man, and he's uh, oh, yeah, supposedly he's Kaizen. He's always getting better, I hear. So, something along those lines. He's got a thing going with Paul. It's a lot of fun to cover. Yeah. Very musical talent as well. That's right. And now on to Sean Baker, who has some Easter Classic history of his own. Two-time champion of this event in 2005 and 1999 before that. And I wouldn't count him out for this either. Unfortunately, he's got a spread eagle here. Eagle plus the eight. He's also a perennial Lita Lane's TV appearer. Oh boy, what's the oh, yeah. word for that? No, he's, a, he's, he's in this in this generation, in the 2000s, he's been a top five bowler in the United States, without a doubt, often the number one bowler or close, close to it. It's, I mean, easily. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he was up there with Sergeant in those days, you know, like, you, you want. That was, a, that was a ton of fun, I tell you what. I've put the le mic levels up, hopefully it's not too loud for you folks. Um, but 
he was on, on him against Chris Sargent was an epic match yeah, where yeah. Sargent dumped a 190 something. And we had a rematch on for Candlepins for Cancer for Bolarama Portsmouth. That was a ton of fun as well. And he's also appeared Candlepins for Dollars, and then recently the all new skins here at Lita Lanes on Candlepin Corner on YouTube. He hung, he hung around through the Jeff Serret era. Now he's here in the, wait, what, are, what are we now? Uh, is this the, the, the dawn of the Josh Daly era, the Tim Douglas era? Um, we, we, all along, of course, been the epic Bobby Whitcomb era. But, you know, it, it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough. You'll always leave somebody out. But the Craig Holbrook era spans back to the 90s into the decline and all the way back to the Ulta, Ulta days. Baker's two for two on splits. Yep. Um, both of them spread eagle variants, right? You, you, you had to yeah. get a talent on the It's bowling, not hit the pin, although it's quite harsh, I'll tell you what. But can't stress enough the importance of these 10 boxes. And pinning like that, now he's got a chance for 10 if he can deal his left to right ball into the 2 4. 20% for pros to convert these into 10s, right? You bet. And there was a nine box. Yep. So there was a subject on Candleman Corner of like who should, uh, should it just be first come first serve or should any spots be reserved for say maybe previous champions perhaps? Uh, would be opinions reasonable. vary, but what's yours? Um, well, <laughs> Kevin Burns drafted me early and uh, you know from, from the network and he came here at I think around the same time you did, 9.30 to set up because he wanted to get the lane one. He wanted to be on lane 29 and I'm with him, so lane choice is first come. That, that doesn't mean that I think that's that's necessarily the fairest or most reasonable first come first serve. I th I think past champions should get the first pick if they if they if they got it, but mm. it's I mean there should be some you know like so, some rank and, and privilege associated with being a great bowler. I think so too. It's hey, you know, know the rest just like some of it. Even though I love seeing all the newbies as well. Yeah, yeah. That's a spare for Baker on that five pin. Hey, just drilled yeah. it in the face. Nine drop. So right. there's I, that. Actually, I, I see that I'm I'm getting close. I don't want I don't want to be that guy that's not showing up to his lane. And but, also, uh, Greg, I will be back after I'm done, and we'll see everybody else. I uh, hope you're having a great what Easter. Posi what position, first, second, or third do you bowl in? I'm first. Thanks for letting yes. me know. See you okay. soon. Bye. Bob coming around here, Bob Lee, executive producer, increasingly good bowler. He appeared, I believe, on the last edition of King of the Palace as well, that special skins show, as emotive as ever in that edition as he is now. Yeah. 247, 6910. Baker's got a four fill here. All right. Pardon me while I do my Cardo the Magnificent routine, Justin. You can hear me just fine on that, yeah? Of course, yeah, absolutely. So, Justin, you've bowled in this tournament before. But by the way, folks, this is Justin Waters, ACSTA champion, a uh, golf pro as well. <laughs> as well. Um, but you know what it takes to have a lot of longevity in this uh, competition as well. Um, re remind me, you've... Remind me, how's your Easter experience has been in the past before, and uh, how does it translating uh, your usual prowess to the 20 string format. How does that usually work out for you? I'm going to throw you a big curveball there, Greg. <laughs> I've never bowled in this. Oh, I see. Nope, never bowled in this. Uh, I thought you had at one point, excuse me. Nope, uh, unfortunately, I, I, was, I signed up this year, and unfortunately, due to uh, other commitments that I had, uh, I was unable to actually bowl. Um, so I just did I have today off from work, so I decided to come up and check it out, see what it's like. But I mean, it, there's so much good competition here. I mean, right now I'm watching uh, Sean Baker on, on the lane, and it's just watching these guys that have done it, longevity. I mean, you got Surrett, Barber, yeah, and Surrett, Matty Harnett. And we saw Surrett dump that 160 game earlier. It was yeah. insane. I mean, yeah, he's, um, he's already won it. What three, four, five times, four in a row. Uh, Baker twice, surprisingly though. He's finished a lot of top threes as well. We've mentioned it before on this, but you, you're a, being a golf professional as well. That really. Does that arm swing technique, does that really translate into like better bowling as well, just in terms of the mechanics, really, or is that just uh No, it, it does. It, cer it certainly does. Um, just knowing, go using the golf swing itself and knowing where, what I do to mentally, like, bolt with golf and bowling. Um, a lot of people uh, bowling stare and look at the pins. I do not. Um, spot I, bowling. Yeah, I, I, I'm more of a spot bowler. Um, my my target is about a foot to two feet past the foul line 
Uh, and if I, with the arrows that are on the lane, if I know, if I, my ball goes anywhere between the middle arrow and the right arrow, I know that I'm on the head pin somewhere. Here's a weird question. You see Elite Lane's its lob line has actually the red arrows at slightly different spots where they actually like attach to the lob line. Does that yes. throw you off at all? No, no, no. No, it's, it's just like the same arrows as a regular uh, They're pointing regular at the same lane. pins after all. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's just like a normal lane, but uh, with those being attached, I mean, I would use the middle arrow and the one just to the right for like uh, aiming purposes. Right. Sam D'Agostino back up here. He's got triangle number four here. I'll put that on screen here. And remind me, you used to bowl at uh, Fairway Sports World at Natick beforehand. Any other houses before that? Or no, was it, was, it was mostly Fairway. Right. Um, that's where I, where I grew up. <laughs> and a lot of leaks translating now to Ryan Family Amusements and Millis, of course. Yep. yep. I, bowl, uh, I bowl Wednesday in Millis with a bunch of the guys that are here. Right. The leak translates. I never bowled at Wallach. He did. He grew up yeah, Sammy definitely grew up at Wallex, but he, Sam, I remember Sammy from the Monday night uh, Money That's League at Fairway. Yeah. Oh, he was. Very yeah. good, yeah. I was mentioning he's been on Channel 50 here at Lita Lanes as well. He's bowled against uh, Brian Feast and Chris Sargent as oh, well. Yes. But Sa Sammy, yeah. Sammy's been around the circuit a couple times. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what he is currently because I don't think he's been on Candleton Bowling Network as much, which, you know, I'm trying not to have blind spots here, but uh, I'm not sure what leagues he might be in there, but Wallex, what a great shout. 1, 2, 4, 10 here. I wish I could have bowled at Natick more often. A Helen Salou, a very efficient owner, as I recall. <laughs> Don Gillis even uh, referring to her as uh, the former home of Channel uh, Candle Pin Bowling on Channel 5. I'll get yep, the word straight. Saturday mornings. Yeah. Did you have much experience with her? Or like? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I grew up, I was in, I was in the kids' league with Jeremy C. Ohm, Sean Taylor. Um, Helen was kind of a mentor to all of us. Like, she helped us do the three the three step bowl um, she was very very good and she's also in the, in the hall of fame of course and then and then of course jeremy c holm and sean taylor natural fits for your academy lanes uh, team uh, 2022 icc champions yes i mean so that just comes about from the synergy you have is being the uh, same bowling center, same team necessarily in those leagues, or just so, good friends? Uh, just really good friends growing up. I mean, we did we bowled together in against each other in tournaments or the kids' league, but it, it was just a nice, friendly competition growing up. Um, I, I'm not sure if he's listening or not, but I'd like to say congratulations to Jeremy Seaton. 705 yesterday. That was, that was fun to watch. And that you can watch on Candleton Bowling Network as well out of the ACST. I mean, Fantastic, and of course, Jeremy no longer works at Ryan Family Amusements, but he did it on the lanes. He managed well for uh, so many years yes, as well. Yes, absolutely. We have seven box here for D'Agostino, 64 through eight. And then, then ICC was tough last year, of course. I mean, you made a pretty good push there, just didn't get it done against the good teams, but uh, Good experience in Moncton overall, I would say. Yeah, I mean that, that was my first time bowling in Canada. Um, obviously, different lanes. They had they have flat cutters. Big time um, hammer, D'Agostino just murdered those pins. Seventy four plus two through nine. It, it was a, certainly a great experience. Uh, um, I'm very lucky to that I was asked to bowl two years ago, um, and the teammates I have have been nothing like nothing but spectacular to bowl with. It's the camaraderie that comes with it, the friendships. Yeah. Lucky, it, lucky and good for sure. <laughs> yes. Um, it was, yeah, two years in a row. I mean, we uh, we missed we missed getting the bye by just a couple pins. But in in my personal opinion, I, I would rather I would rather bowl through just to keep it going so you don't get cold. What is that cliche? Rest versus routine, or what is it? Uh, I forget the cliche. Six on the first one for Sam. But in any event. Jeff Sorette just doing his thing. Got a 127 and a ball. Again? Oh, my word. Well, I mean, that's peanuts compared to his 160 last time, but I'm not actually holding that against him. That is incredible. We're going to see it on lane 25 in just a second here. Second ball gets away for Sam. Let's see how this 127 and the ball ends up. That's lane 25, him in the purple. All right, six there, but he's just got such a good working ball there. I mean, you're the master of hitting the head pin, but it's the power and the angle that I guess that determines it as well, even though that's not an exact science. No, no I, I, I've seen it time and time, time and time again that 
you know, it's even if you miss the head pin, you can still get a good break out of it. But watching a guy like Jeff Surratt, I mean, it, he's just a machine. Like, it's just, he's repetitive, and he's been on fire lately. He's, I think in the last That's scary. four weeks, four or five weeks of Friday nights, I think he's got three or four, four hundreds. And you would know as well, bowling on Central 3, of course. How is the addition of uh, Josh Daly and Charlie Collins to uh, that team as well? How's that been? It's been good. Uh, I honestly, like, it's me as being one of the elders on the team besides Danny Harris. Uh, it's just, it's nice. It, it's, yeah. we're taking two kids that are in their early 20s who love the game just as much as we do and helping them form into mature men who can take bowling to the next level. And, 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 and they certainly have Josh Daly in the top average, of course, overall. I mean, he's just, it's, it, it gets to a point every week, Greg, that it's, what what's Josh gonna do next? Yeah. And it, as much as, you know, he, he gets angry and can get agitated, we all do, it's being an elder, I'm, I'm trying to harness him in so that he doesn't get so angry, because when you get angry, you just do worse. And then, and then you throw that half worcester and it just feed, fuels the fire of anger. And Candlepin is a frustration generator. It's one of the oldest uh, tropes of the game, of course. And that gets I know you get frustrated as well, but you do find ways to center yourself and calm yourself down, even if you're just getting split after split after split. A absolutely. Which drives you nuts, but still. I mean, it's just if you could find that one thing or make that one adjustment to get to where you need to be, everything will, everything will come right back. And what's your belief, a board back or something, or do you just not change anything? So if you're, honestly, if you're just off the head pin or you're punching a lot, either move one board right or one board left, maybe two. Right or left, after. interesting, yeah. That would change the angle, basically, but, I mean, if the ball's not breaking in the right spot, I suppose, that might help that, out? That as well. I mean, it, it all depends on the lanes. I mean, if it's, you know, there's a big difference between synthetic and wood lanes. Yep. Like, Millis Mil is, uh, is a synthetic lane. So there's, there's a little more friction than there are on wood lanes, but it also depends on the ball you throw as well. And here at Lita Lanes, it is wood, which uh, has been is often considered, I think, by purists to be like you know the better material because you could get better ball hook on it, perhaps. But these are well-maintained lanes here. 36 lanes, Lita Lanes, Nashua, New Hampshire. My name is Greg Guyar on Candlepin Bowling Network. I'm alongside Justin Waters right now. Mike McIntosh has a chance here with that three pick. Uh, personally, in my, in my like experience of bowling in many different houses, um, I, I prefer wood lanes. I prefer wood. I feel like you get better, better ball movement than you do on synthetic. Yeah, Dave Barber on lane 25, I know, is a proponent of that as well. I'll be interested to see if the Candlepin Bowlers Association, uh, which would be an excellent uh, collaborator, like if, you know, ICBA, you could say the proprietors organization as well, but if a bowlers association started up as well. See ya. I, I think that'd be great if we, if you know, like, I, I know we have the ICBA, the, the International Canadian Bowling Association. I, I, I wish, and I hope it comes to fruition, that we do get a Canadian Bowlers Association for the bowlers. Yeah, because there's a lot of things, I think, as well. The history of the game, which, of course, the Easter Classic, thankfully, we have a lot of statistics here. We can track on that. But a lot of tournament history is lost to time. And... It'd be great to have some of that's that's the piece I most want to see. And then of course, you know, there's rules uh, advocacy as well as Macintosh picks this up. And it just yeah, average tr average tracking as well. That's an interesting one. I know NBA as well, but uh, and uh, honestly, Greg, I think that'd be great. Like average tracking from different houses. I mean, it's you see some of these some of these tournaments where you have to use your highest average in whatever league it is. And the Ryan's bowler is going to take exception to that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's, it's tough yeah. when you, when, like, for me, example, like, my, my average on the, in the ACST is about a 128 right now. Um, my Friday night average is a 122. So I would equate that, okay, maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a 125. Right. Between the two, but it's different because my, it's the overall average on Friday night is 122. And that's through all the houses that we bowl in, not just one house. Fantastic. McIntosh has one box left here. He's been eight for 10 on this head pin right here. You can see the uh, all the head pins light up at the top here. It's not working out. Uh, Bob Lee just came over and said that Ryan Cox just threw 160 in the second string. Who did? Ryan Cox from- Oh, Canada. Yep, from Canada. Very nice. Yep. 
What, what's the new scores, Bob? Where are we pointing at here? We're so out we, here, right, right here. Cole Fry with a 66 half. What else do we have up here? One fifty-six for Nick Leach. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good for you guys. Leach has been Leach has been on fire lately as well. McIntosh ends up with a one hundred twelve somehow. So I guess I'll take this pin off somehow. We'll do that. Off you go, Justin. Thank you very much for joining us today. Great to have Justin Waters alongside. ACST bowler, a possible chance to repeat as ACSTA champion. Except for that freaking Josh Daly who's just lighting up the average chart there. That's a spare for Baker. On the five pin. The five pin is his bread and butter so far for the two-time Easter Classic champion. Mike McIntosh pinned very well. A good shout out there in chat. I, I marked something down as an eight box, but I'm not entirely sure that's right. Seven, ten, seven, nine. Yeah, he had an eight box on the end. Okay. Well, that's how it was scored at the very least. Baker's try. I mean, Sean Baker has been so good for so long, including recently appearing on Candlepins for Cancer at our show out of uh, Batwell's Bowling Center in Concord, New Hampshire. Dallas family doing a great job helping us do that. Crossovers lead Kings. He's got the 5 7 10 here. This would be something. Paul Grant took to calling that the Matt Susie special, even though Sean Baker had made it more recently at a Pro Series tournament. Uh, Timber Lane's Abington. Good, good third ball here. And he's going to end up with nine. Great also to get perspective on just all the issues of the game as well in terms of which lane material is better. You know, there is a reality that synthetic lanes are more economical as well. And in terms of creating a blueprint for anyone who might start a new center, what would you do? I mean, there's a reality that, you know, synthetic would be more uh, cost effective, even though wood anecdotally does seem to produce better ball break as well. But of course, the single biggest stopper to the expansion of Candlebin, not the popularity. Sure, we have a lot of work to do in the marketing. That's, that's granted. But the pin setters. Nobody makes these pin setters that you've seen dutifully sweeping these machines away. I believe Lita Lanes is a Z4 model, which was a later attempt to get that to go. That's another cross over here. Triangle 5 does give Baker a chance. But there are people, the Moors, Harry Pretty, Wayne McDonald, who recently had his ICBA speech uploaded, among many others. You can see that later. Yes, spare. Heaven forbid, I might be forgetting someone. I apologize in advance. Someone can correct me in chat. But it's the production of new pin setters themselves is the single biggest killer. Because even if someone says, like, well, I want to start one in Florida. I want to start one in Texas, which has been expressed before. Florida especially. There's been a lot of Hall of Famers. Sorry, Brian. I'll get that out of the way. Don't want to trip anyone on the way. But we got, got a lot of legends who live down in Florida as well. Tom Olsa and Carol Downey as well among them. Uh, Baker's ball again tailing away here. And this time he gets uh, punished for a 7 and a 5-8. Ball weighs less than the pins right now as a savvy bowler like Baker knows. That is such a good shot right there. He deflected the 8 into the 7 and that's a spare. Mercy. Well, you can see, you can see that if you've got the angle, you can get the pins today. And that is a split that is worthy of a clip, I would say, those of you on YouTube, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. This fill on this is, is going to, he's going to earn every single pin of this. Deserves a strike. And look at all the head pin accuracy he's had at the top of the screen on the frame headings. His shot. Got into the two pin by the power and the angle. He's got seven. It's a 1-3-6. The 
two-time champion finding a way. Lita Lane's Ray's Easter Classic for Ray Simino, a tradition since 1989. We'll have updated scores in just a moment. I don't know if they have the uh, scores through one string here. And it looks like they don't just yet, but they'll be uploading scores as they go. I know Pat survives want to know and others want to know as well. Outside, got it. Spare again. Baker finds a way. Scores. The scoreboard has shortchanged him a pin, interestingly. So now I've actually caught the score. And now they've made the adjustment here. The fill is seven. Sam was all over that one. 118 and a ball. Into the two pin, get over seven, that's six. And 124, a pro grade string for Sean Baker. That's the end of our coverage here. Still some frames in progress elsewhere, perhaps? I think there's a few more, so I have some time. Going over Sean Baker's stats here, let's see what we can find here. Sean Baker with, with an obscene average of 128. I mean, it's it's simply insane. And you know, pinning varies on pin conditions as well. But he's finished first two times, second place twice, third two times. There was a fourth place twice and fifth place twice. In fact, if I'm counting this correctly. So strong for so long. It is, you know, maybe that has to do with starting, starting young as well, but no time like the present. Give you a look at all the scores real quick. And we'll take that away. It looks like everyone's moving. Third string about to get underway. Where is my scene selector? Gosh darn it. a way to not get it to update while we're doing that. It's a little clunky, but there you go. Third string of 20. Get the scoreboards reset. There's always that awkward silence while I quickly whittle everything away. There we go. Who's next? Cole Fry, Josh Daly, and Charlie Collins. They seem good. Don't you think, folks? Cole Fry, of course, an ICC runner-up, fantastic bowler out of Maine. And then Josh Daly and Charlie Collins, the newest one-two punch added to Central 3, ICC World's Team Academy lanes. They're going to be so good for so long. It's a treat to see. Let's get these names entered in. Great to have you all here watching. We are live on Facebook and YouTube, Candlepin Bowling Network. Greg Guillard here. Please like the video if you haven't had a chance already. Hit that thumbs up button wherever it, you may be watching, Facebook or YouTube. And subscribe and follow. That'll be important later because there will be a lunch break after the 10th string where we're going to cut the stream and then come right back. But uh, that'll be the easiest way to get notified so that whenever you want to watch bowling on this Easter Sunday, you can come on by, of course. I mean, the time is... If you want to watch bowling on Easter Sunday, you can. We're here. It'll probably be here until the late, late into the evening, even though this tournament is always efficiently run and I think is running good time here. <laughs> Looks like some last frames are being finished up on the other lanes, and then the signal will be given to begin string number four. Great to have you all here in chat. I am watching the comments as well. Be nice, please, but... I do appreciate your feedback. And it is great to have the international bowling community, frankly, with all their eyes on Nashua, having a look here. So we're taking a look here. Cole Fry bowled in this tournament last year. He had a 22.79, so that'd be about a 114 average, close to that. 
Josh Daly has averaged 124.7, of course, last year's third place. That was a thrilling matchup. I mean, it was really a very distant 1-2-3. I mean, Tim Douglas, Calvin Locke, Josh Daly, and then a distant, though very respectable, fourth between Corey Smith and Tim Hazer. Other scores from that tournament, let me re refresh my memory, even though I literally just entered them. Adam Melanson was sixth, Jerry Dunn, Chris Merrill, the two-time champion, Jim A.O. Jimbo, we call him, and then Matt Harnett was previously, uh, that was a tie for ninth place. Also cashing, Steve Reno Jr., Jonathan Boudreau, Corrado Pani, John Kafalas, and then Brian Fuller Jr. and Jeff Surrett, uh somewhat comically tied for 15th in the cash. We actually saw Brian Fuller Jr.'s uh, last string where he secured that uh, 50 bucks. Hey, it's better than nothing. High singles out of the money will also be awarded some prize money. We are underway here in string number four. Cole Fry's name is on the screen, you see. Bob Lee popping in and out, and we will have Paul Grant later about, he estimates 7 p.m., but you know, he's spending a lovely Easter with his family to start out. And then when time permits, he will make his way over to Nashua. He lives in Northern Mass. Eye contact, looking around. Cole Fry, wearing his Fenway Academy shirt, gets underway. It's incredible the bend all these main bowlers have here. He gets a true spread eagle here. We've seen a lot of corner pins chipped out. I mean, the way a main bowler gets down to the lane is just incredible. You see a lot of similarities. In fact, you do see Chris Merrill as well to his immediate left uh, with a similar delivery there, albeit mirror image because of the fact that Fry throws a backup ball. That's 247. That's a good out of that. Sticks matter, 20 strings. That's going to translate very well. Good to see you all in chat. Great. Thank you very much. Arguably, I was fishing for compliments, but I'll take it. Cole tells you how many pins he got there. They call it a half Worcester on those main shows as well. They don't call it that in Canada, but they do to Maine. Dick Leone on those uh, old uh, local Fox shows as well. He had one other as well. And I know Daryl Saucier, not sure of his relation to Don Saucier, the unfortunately late Hall of Famer I've learned from another bowler. I, I am basing it on just on that one report. Good crack at that. Six more sticks. And that'll be uh, seven more. In fact, that 10 pin fell late. So again, Fry pins out well. But Don Saucier out of the old Vacation Land Hall of Famer. Sako Maine. Uh, but look at Daryl Saucier's uh, page. D-A-R-Y-L Saucier. Woo! That's pretty good. What was wrong with that? I know I say the crossovers leave crap all the time, but that wasn't that. That seemed pretty good. Five pin left of Fry's best chance at a mark. Here it comes. I uh, hung up in his hand a little bit, unfortunately. So you see, it didn't get the usual break that he usually does. One of the most surprising videos on Daryl Saucier's channel is an old video of a match between Elmer Tibbetts and Bob Mazur. And guess who was on the call? Gary Thorne. And Gary Thorne, of course, the longtime voice of the Baltimore Orioles and of NHL hockey on ESPN and the ESPN family of networks, ABC family, or Disney family, or wherever else the corporate conglomerate stops. That's a good shot as well. Cole Fry is the 3-6. Fry, of course, the new generation. His epic triple strike on the show was replayed time and time again on the Rob Taylor and Dan Gothier hosted show. Sorry, Brian, I don't want to leave you out as well. Whoops. <laughs> you know, we're not counting. It's a pretty funny way to interact with the ball return. Much more docile than um, kicking the ball return, which of course should probably be shamed and outlawed at every turn. But Brian's probably getting sick of these nine boxes because he knows he's got the range. He knows he's got the potential. He knows he's got a way to dial in. A 
I'm throwing a lot of thoughts around, but Gary Thorne, also the voice of uh, Pete Weber's, who do you think you are? I am! U.S. Open record-breaking victory. Number five, I believe it was, for PDW. 5-9 with Wood. Ooh, just into the nine pin. Chances by the wayside here, but 20 sprints. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Plenty of time to come back. Want to minimize these double-digit ones. But still a 10. The pinning keeps you in it. And it's one of the reasons that pinning is extolled as a virtue time and time again in this game. Because turning your tough starts or your tough breaks into 9s and 10s could matter down the line. Though turning 9s into 10s might matter as well, because again, a single pin can make a three mark difference down the line. If you consider one pin each of your 20 strings, average spare fill is six and a half. There you go. And now Josh Daly. A lot of people thinking maybe this is his year, maybe this is his year. Goodness knows he's dominated just about everything else. Highest road average in the Friday Night Pro League, highest average in the ACST. And you can see why with just that powerful ball he deals. He's got the 2 5 8 10. This shot on the two pin. He got the wood in it. Ooh, interesting. That's a spare. I thought he got high on that wood there, but it ramps in perfectly. We'll put it in the correct box. That's where it belongs. Craig, you're absolutely right that they don't go ball for ball. And frankly, this is an issue that I think bowlers should probably rally around, because, and I'm quoting the bowling community. I'm not trying to dictate anything. I'm just a journalist, after all. But members of the bowling community, including Tim Matero's podcast, I come back to it time and time again, because it has a lot of poignant opinions uh, from a main perspective, is that bowlers should just go when they're ready. Now, mind you, you do not want to cut anyone off. Bowler on the right is right away if you're both ready to go. Get on the 10, that's nine. But as long as you're not cutting anyone off, bowl when you're ready. It doesn't necessarily have to be box or box. Now, in head-to-head -head matches, that makes more sense. But all these lanes are individual, we consider. So, spare again. It's worth considering that Oops. As long as you're being courteous to your lane neighbors, goes for you open bowlers as well. It's doing all right. I know with open bowling, the courtesy of uh, waiting your turn, I know some people who will just like throw the balls to the front of the lane. I don't want to be the fun police, but take turns, I guess we'll say. That's probably the simpler way to express don't cut off another bowler or right of way. Just take turns. That's how I actually expressed it one time when Corey Packard was getting cut off on one of our... Uh, live shows at Bolarama uh, for Candlepits for Cancer. And they, they took right to it. They completely understood it. Um, you know, it's not that difficult at all. Yeah, let's try. Vertical wood there. Interesting. Ah, he hit the three pin at first. So the wood was taking it. Unfortunately, he missed the pin. That's it. Ten. But Lita Lanes caters to just about everybody. I mean, if you are any sort of bowler, they they are top notch. Lexi Howard and Sean Howard do a fantastic job. It's a family affair as well. And I tell you, a lot of people bally who the younger generation, who oh, Gen Z, who oh, the millennials. These are amazing people. I mean, I think you'll find that there's just a lot of goodness in my millennial generation. Thank you very much. But um, the staff here at Lita Lanes however young, however old, are just top notch. I experienced that personally. They're always good to the bowlers, and they're an absolutely fitting host for this big time turn. I believe that was the four pin actually that Daly left on the left side there. Just didn't get the slice. There it is, that's nine. On the head pin more than not. By the way, Jeff Surrett just doubled, so Surrett is off to an obscene start right now. He's actually got 
60 and two strikes at the half. So he could actually be as high as 80 at the half or 90 if he doubles again. Goodness knows. Back to 24 daily. Josh crossed over a strike. Who cares how he enters the pins? He just demolished them anyway. Mercy, 65 and two at the half. That is good going. And now you see why he finished third and who knows, could finish higher. We're looking for more updates later. Bob Lee is joined alongside, just a moment, Bob. We're gonna introduce Charlie Collins here as well. And I will turn your levels up. Yeah. Uh, say something. Not, not too long, um, but Aaron Fontaine threw a 166 at, to close out game two. He's at 299. Mm. He, so 133, 166, 299. I believe that's the year. But, but the news over to the right, if you saw it, Jeff Sorrett just threw a double. He's sitting down with 60 plus, you know, he, he threw a double in the fourth and fifth. So he's going to be plus 30 on yeah. that, you know. So that's, that's it's like a 90 half. With a chance for many more in the second half. He's off yeah. to an obscene start. I, I bet we don't have our updates right now unless someone's seen the least leaderboards. It's not posted out there in the middle in the middle zone. Not just yet. Uh, you know, John Blaze, 240. Uh, I told you about Ryan Cox is 160. I think Justin Waters caught that news. And Nick Leach just threw a, he, he was at 289. Um, he threw a 53 half, but he's on, he had a, he had a strike in there um, to save a, a, a tough half. What else is the news so far this Easter? I mean, Josh Daly is 65 at the half. But sorry, I don't want to say the okay. score too loud. I don't want to put the kibosh on bowlers, although oh. they're pretty good about blotting I out. I wouldn't believe in that. I, I don't think it, it, pro bowlers believe that you could speak something into existence or out of existence. They don't want to hear you yelling about it, but this is a noisy place. Um, so, as Al Johnson so Daly said, sat down on a strike at 65. I see that. Nice. As Al Johnson says, if you're paying attention to whatever cameras are behind you, and he's been a long-time TV show bowler, of course, you ain't paying attention. Oh, look at, look that, at ball. that! Nine drops last. Collins. I know. I know how to call the last of all. Don't worry. We'll get a new uh, last of all pin montage on Candlepin Bowling Network. Don't you worry. On his left, Calvin Locke just matched with a strike of his own on 23. If you saw that yeah. on the left side, you can get a. Yeah. You can see. You sort of see the left and the right here too. Yeah. And the, yep, that's and right. We got a wide angle as well, actually. So I believe I do have 19's pins in view. In fact, hey, three strikes in a row. As uh, that was Mike. Uh, on, over on lane 22 also. Lane 22. Oh, well, there's a three-bagger pool. Congratulations, if so. Well, three in a row for three different individuals. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, three different marks. Yeah. Sorry. 24, 23, 22 just went in succession. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. All right. No, nobody. Mike. Collins working on the strike here. He's got five yeah, down he's, so he's got far. Kaliri, right? And he's right on it. That's where you yes. want to hit it. Oh. And well, Phil is nine. That's a great shot. That back pin cuts your chances down in half of making those four horses. Do we know the those. origins of the Bob Kaliri? I, I, yeah, he, I've Kaliri, quoted the Lexington man so many times. There, there was a time in the early 2000s, as I understand it, when the, there, were, there was a chat site, like before Facebook. There was a chat website. His Candle, website. Candlepin. Candlepin. Uh, I think it was called posted. Candlepin Corner, interestingly. Yeah, yeah that sounds of right. No relation to the Corey Alicia and Jordan Britton podcast. And uh, he, he used to t he used to talk about it all the time there and and in person, as I understand it. Had some high high minded theories about how it happens. Memes before they were memes. Yep. Collins with the fill. Testing my levels, just making sure I'm not he's blowing the audio out. He's now at 42. Yeah. Two seven nine. Six. Uh, well, 42 no, yeah, 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 10, and then... Uh, it updates the score as you go, so... Okay. And it doesn't have the Ryan's glitch where, like, it actually knows how double strikes work as you go, so... A newer model of Cubico's score, for sure. All right, I'm, I'm uh, going to go back and see Stay if I can do anything oh, with my 61 Oh, half. my word! He shot oh. the pin into the other channel, and Sean Baker, hey. thankfully, was not delivering. Oh, my goodness! Pins are flying, kid. That's nine. <laughs> he shot one into the left channel. I mean, that's the power of Charlie Collins. That's why he's on the ICC Academy Lanes team this year. Recently covered one of his matches with Rob Linehan. <laughs> that is extraordinary. Of course, if interference does happen on an adjoining lane, 
uh, then it would allow the box to be completely reset. The rule is you keep any fill you had, and then the pins will be reset. All right, what's next? That's what, oh boy. Unfortunately, he smacks a head pin. Spread Eagle minus to 10. Two, four, seven, that's not bad at all. He got it, he's got it. That's what's next. Two, four, seven into the six, three. Oh baby, 55 and a ball at the half. Oh, are we watching a good lane or what? And I tell you, when we see Chris Merrill, Travis Wallace, and Calvin Locke, that's going to be even more fun. I can't wait. Back to the top of the order, Cole Fry. Justin Kochi is alongside. We got that levels there. I'll pull your levels up in just a second. Uh, half whistle for Cole Fry. Justin, your mic is hot. Say hi to the world. Hi, how are you guys? Justin Kochi, how's everyone today going today? Good to see you. Put Thank that, you. Try not to eat the microphone. That's a great half Worcester make by Fry. Nice shot, Cole. So, uh, Coach, you're in the field today. Sorry, folks. Uh, you're in the field today. Who are you bowling? You're bowling with Bob Lee and uh, Kevin, Kevin, Burns. Kevin Burns. Now, you were involved in an extraordinary uh, thing, and I won't keep telling the story forever, but you were involved in a pro series uh, qual qualifier tiebreaker string recently and that was at lakeside lanes you remember how that went right <laughs> yeah i threw a spare strike and uh the whole crowd went crazy and then uh funny feeling was all three of us made it so you know because of an addition error that's right yep and uh what a good turnout today 102 bullish you know and it, it is a full house right yeah very good Four seven ten. Uh, a bit by cole yeah uh, your dad, Rich, also bowls as well. How's his bowling been recently? He's been bowling pretty good lately. Uh, you know, he has his up and downs, and like everyone does. And, but um, great turnout today. Got a 10 box there. Triple strike by uh, Jeff Surratt. And remind me, so we see you, you're in the pro league as well. Remind me, ACST as well, or so many? Uh, AC. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, Remind me what else. You don't do Friday Night Pro League. Might you in the future? No, I might in the future. Like, you know, keep throwing a good ball lately, and, you know, there could be an outside shot. You'll see me making some noise. And, but, um, triple strike by uh, Jeff Surrett on uh, a 26. I mean, he's just off to an obscene start. He had a 160 in the first string and a 126. Watch him now, lane 26. Let's see. Is he going to get this four bagger? Nope, that's the other side of the candle pit bowling. <laughs> Ain't that the way? That ain't, that is the way. Popular question I've been asking bowlers today, say, and this is a question that was asked at Candlepin Chat at one point, say you get 10 splits on the head pin. Do you make an adjustment? Yes. What, what would you do generally? I it, would, um, not, you know, throw a slower ball or make an adjustment to the lane. Like would you go left, right? Left, left to right. That? Yeah, but also a speed adjustment, interestingly. That doesn't throw off your timing no. really? Or? No, I've been throwing a good ball, just not getting the uh, big halves that I need to throw. But, you know, there's always a chance for me to come back. There's 20 strings to, there's 17 strings to go. Yeah. You know, it's anyone's day, you know. How does the, and we, you don't have to keep answering questions if you're I sick of the interview the at any point. I'm having fun. <laughs> um, how is the fatigue factor? Do you, is 20 strings like okay for you? Do you do anything just I, to make I, sure your stance? I straight? just keep my body moving. I have a couple protein bars, and you know, mm. it gives me some energy, and you know, it helps. You know, uh, but uh, it's a great turnout so far. It's my second one this year, so. Right. I got the score from last time, uh, but. And remind me. So, how often are you bowling a week generally? Uh, um, I bowl Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, I usually nice. bowl. Oh, get over eight. Not quite. In the winter, I bowl three days a week. I bowl Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So, you know, and then I got free time off, you know. And, repeti and repetition is everything in this game. Fry gets a spare there. Nice shot, Fry. What a shot. 98 and a ball, and he's going to go over to triple digits here. Yep. Kind of tough another, another strike by Surrett for his uh, 130 right now. Not on the three bagger anymore, but no, it would yeah. have been nice. But yeah, he's still working that strike fill. They're updating the scores. Like it like updates it ball by ball. I guess it's a short story. Fry, there's the fill on the spare. Get Man, over five. Wow. Yes, the game. fill is nine. 
What a game by Cole Fry. There we go, 107. Had a tough go of it there, but he was on the head pin more than not. The fundamentals there. It's the way I'm, you finish, and you know, if you're out here having fun, that's all that matters. And, and you got it. I mean, you've you picked good lane mates, hopefully. I mean, that goes a long way towards uh, building morale as well. It does. Josh Daly back up now. He's on 65 and 2 at the half. Speaking of good games working right now. I mean, everyone I thinks about Daly and, like, you know, oh, he's probably going to be a contender every single time. He's, and he, he's a really good bowler. He's, you know, he came a long way and really happy to see the games at a high he's been growing. And, he has a really smooth ball, and yeah. when he's on, he's on. And even when he's off, he's on. That spills a bunch there, a one, two, seven. Yeah, it's like anyone you ask. You know, you ask like Craig Holbrook, like, you know, or Sean Baker. Uh, I don't mean to interrupt. I apologize. You are yeah. fine with that. Craig Holbrook, of course, a notable absence in this tournament. Didn't make the registration cut. Yeah. Um, then another question I had is like, how's the pin action been uh, seen on your side there? Um, like, are the pins like uh, behaving as well as they should? Is it a tough going out there? You got to hit them a little on the left side. You don't want to hit middle, I don't think. You know, I've been I've been throwing a good ball, just not getting the leaves that I need to hit. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's been a rough go, but I'm staying over like 106, 108. So, you know, I'm right where I have to be. You know, still plenty of games to go. Fantastic. Got the hour break to go as well, so should be fun. Yeah, that lunch break is going to be really good. Josh I bet Day you can't wait, right, Greg? Oh, oh that's going to be good. I <laughs> Thanks, Lexi, for cutting <laughs> me in on this as well. Four, six, seven, ten for Daly. You know, watching the Terminator Bowl, you know, Charlie say a Hultz. lot about Charlie, you know. Ooh. What a bit by Josh. You're making the four, seven, tens pretty impressive out of that. So remind me of the houses you've bowled out of, and I know Lucky Strike Lynn was one of them at one point. Uh, I have bowled out of there. I bowled out of Woburn, um, mm. Wakefield, and you know I bowled out of Academy. Um, I bowled the Pro Series at Lakeside. I bowled at a lot of houses, and no, I'm third. <laughs> Don't be late for your turn this second. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can watch for you. What is it? Eagle, it's Eagle less 10 for uh, Josh there. What? I'm having fun, you know. I'm having fun commentating. <laughs> Y'all having a good time. Where, where, which lane are you on right now? Or is I'm it? on 30. I'm on 31. All right. Maybe peek it there. Just takes out the 4-7. I can see out of the corner of my I eye. I have 47 and a, yeah. a half, so. Don't, don't ruin the pace of play. I don't want to be responsible for that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's nine. There you go, Josh. Yeah. Sit big, Josh. That's only, big a, ones. And that's only a second pin left standing. Uh, all the colors lighting up on the scoreboard here. Let me know if it looks too much like a pinball machine, I suppose, <laughs> folks. But, you know, that's the idea. Make it more colorful. The more, the better a bowler's doing. That's how it goes. Heating, the score's heating up. He's got that 120. Let's see what 120 Josh pace does here on a ball. What a pitch, Josh. There you go, bud. Oh, roll. Roll? Ooh. Almost took it. You know, those pins roll off the edge of the plate. Two pins standing. With wood, so I'll put a slash there. There you go, Josh. Nice shot, buddy. There's the spare. 113 and a ball. I know Paul Grant has asked you these questions a million times already, but how did you get started bowling? Was it was it Rich, your father? It was or? my dad. My um, I was uh, when I was a kid, I used to go watch my dad bowl like against Bruno DeFeo. You might know Bruno. Oh uh, yeah. They had some throwback matches, and um, you know, it was cool to you know be around and watch my dad bowl. And then my dad got me into it, and it was really fun to get into. And uh, oh, wait, wait, one, one second, one second. I'm assuming you saw Jeff Surrett's 145. Uh, yeah, we saw him make a noise on that lane for sure. Hold that. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Bob Lee letting us know. Oh. You know what it was? The microphone wasn't on. I'm not <laughs> a smart person. 
Now what's Daly doing? He's got the three and two split, so he had the- Daly's at a 127 right now. Um, bowling pretty well today. There we so go. Nice game for Josh. A nice That's pretty good, all told. Nice 128. 127. 127 they have it as? Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait, he had, no, he had 10 on that. They should be correcting that, I think. Yep, yeah, it was 128. Yeah. The automated scores I've noticed, have been missing a pin or two every single time. And you know that's what we're expecting with some automatic scoring, you know. Well, heads, up, uh, heads up for you out there. I'm up, Greg. Thank you so much for letting me join. My pleasure, Justin. I'll take your levels out. You're good. Thank you very much. That was Justin Kochi, of course, ACST bowler. So is Bruno DeFeo. He name dropped him as well in uh, Bruno's matches against Rich Kochi. Collins is on a spare. With that incredible, yes, that does say Eagle minus 10. Yes, Collins did just make that. And yes, he's going to load it up big time with a nine for a 64 half. Five pin with Wood. That's tricky, Wood. He's got to hit a low side, I believe. Bruno DeFeo, of course, famously the Janet Pock heartbreaker. The one time Janet Pock made the Channel 5 live show. Only time a woman made the live show with Don Gillis. Big Bryant. I forget if Brian O'Leary had the call, or was that the year Dick O'Connell did the guest commentary? Heck if I know. <laughs> Collins deals away, he's got 10 that time. Tough wood there, tough wood. 74 through six. Any Candlepin leagues near the Upper Valley, asks uh, a certain Northeast Rural Wanderer. Uh, I. I believe so. I mean, certainly middle New Hampshire. I'm not intricately familiar with the map up there, I would confess. I have a bit of a Massachusetts bias as well. I'll try as I might to keep tabs on where the bowling centers are around the world. Around the continent, anyway, for now. There's 4 9 10. This will be something. What's available? He's got it. Spare for Collins, his third mark. 84 and a ball. And Ed Harding as well. I don't know if, I don't know if Ed ever did a live show, but he, er, yes he did, yes he did. Of course he did. He called that, he called, oh no! And Tom also made that four, seven, six, ten out of like, he did not just do that, you know. It was a double wood shot, it was just beautiful. Here's Collins, spare Phil. It's a good one. Boy, those pins have got to get over. I thought they were all hit at some point, except for the nine. And sure enough, the nine pin is all that's left. Ed Harding, of course, a great host of candle pin doubles. Gone. Easy as you like. Just leaving the wood all over the plate there. My nomenclature is forward slash if the wood's good and backslash if the wood is bad. I reserve the right to change my opinion as the bowler plays it. Yes, Candlepin Bowling on Channel 5, formerly called Fun for All Ages, as Mike Moore details in his book, Lunch with Tommy and Stacia. The greatest Candlepin Bowling show of all time still to date. Channel 5, interestingly, did a Chronicle documentary recently. I believe they re-aired it. Uh, and it is available on Facebook, where they go to small businesses, including Wakefield Bolodrome in Massachusetts. Now, there's a tough house, but a lovingly owned place. Ooh, tough split for Collins. He's got eight. And... Yeah, interestingly, there was no mention of the Channel 5 show on the Chronicle documentary, but... Good to see Channel 5 covering this great game again. Collins has to really slice this one. There is a possibility of the sidewall bank as well. We've seen the sidewalls be lively today. Calvin Locke is to his left, last year's runner-up, and he's on a 125, maybe more if more sticks are picked up, 126. Collins' third ball. Ooh! Okay, I guess the shot wasn't on. Did you see that slice? Mercy, 120. Folks, by my estimate, we have upwards of 300 people in this crowd alone. 
there is no way you would all fit here at Lita Lanes Nashua. I think the fire department would be called. You are an amazing crowd. And if the, we and the bowlers, trust me, thank you all very much for making some time today as part of your Easter Sunday. Or wherever you may be watching in the world, Greg. Our friend from Queensland, Australia. Hmm, three pin just. Six four ten. Pace of play is pretty good. Everyone's finishing at about the same time. I tell you what. I'll probably I'll have your levels up in just a moment here. Uh, Bob, with the latest. Yeah, um, not a bunch of four hundred. So I'm watching. You know, not everybody's done with their third string yet, and, and I and I'm just taking notes, trying to follow hundred bowlers. Nick Leach finished with a four oh eight. Aaron. Fontaine, remember he's at 299. He was he was through his eighth box. He was at 405. Of course, uh, Jeff Surrett throwing his 438. Um, other than that, I'm not. 438. Tired. Yeah, 438 to our right. Uh, with that 145 after after what? <laughs> 160. Man. Um, yeah, 160, 145, 148. I believe was his scores, right? He, he's uh, he's. Right now, walking away a little, little bit, getting a little distance from the field. How about here? You, you are actually. This is a hot zone over here where you are. I mean, I mean lane 24 is popping off right here. Daily and Collins, the central 312 is uh, popping off for a 128 and a 129. Yeah, head pin accuracy, good more than not, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I haven't seen scores posted yet. Um, I will try to bring him from you. I'm, I'm going to be bowling next. Um, yeah. Um, but but that's he's going to tell us to move balls before I have to leave. But yeah, you're going to try to keep my mind on that. I have noticed that, uh, I mean, with the Cubica score, it might just be an adjustment here. Okay. Chris Merrill, Travis Wallace, and Calvin lock up next. I can't wait. Speaking okay. of hot zone. Yeah, talk about, um, two time champion, Chris Merrill. And. Uh, he started hot. Where, where was he? Where, where was Chris uh, after three? Um, I'm I'm score blind at the current moment right here. Unfortunately, okay. I'm just tethered to this chair and unfortunately haven't had a chance to see it. If you see them posted at any point, then they might be posted on that okay. cork board over there. Maybe we could share with the viewers. Yeah, I'll go walk around. Thanks, Bob Lee, our impromptu intrepid reporter, since I demanded it. And uh, we'll take these scoreboards away and update accordingly. Bear with me, folks. Just some uh, technical jostling to get this ready for you for the next string. Hello, Timothy. how are you, buddy? I'd hum Spanish flea, but nobody wants to hear that. I have no idea. I don't even look at it anymore. Elevator, Muzak? No worries. Merrill, Wallace, and Locke up next. We need to hear more text stories. Yes. String four. There we go. Oh, we got updates through two. So, uh, Bob, I'll turn your levels up. We can watch right here. But, but of course, the, the big Justin Discozio over on my, my home lane just threw a double strike for a 126. He's, he, he, uh, he was speaking to you just a few moments ago. Right. Move your mic up a bit. Yep. Um, you can see through two, Aaron Fontaine was our leader. This is when I was giving you that 299 I can see, number. yeah. Yeah, so, so they, they've only posted scores through the first two. Top, we'll give you the top five. Fontaine at 299, Surrett at 293, and like we said, he's up to 348. Nick Leach, uh, JB, Jason Gauthier, at, who was sitting at 276. I, um, he had a decent third. Uh, third game too, and I I, I, I I did not write it down. Um, and then Ryan Cox uh, at 275. Those are, so 275 was your were your leaders, and uh, I'm gonna have to go bowl. All right, okay, bye. <laughs> you have your iPad. You want your iPad back or nah? Okay, thanks. I get to use. I get Bob Lee's iPad. Hooray! All right, bowlers are starting to move around here. Chris Merrill, our 2021 and 2022 champion. We'll be up first on this lane. Charlie Collins moving his selfie stick. He, he streams as well. Um, let's see if I...
Oh, I've forgotten Charlie Collins' TikTok. Yeah, I agree. Hey, Charlie, what's your TikTok again? Underscore. Got your, got your TikTok label for you. If you want to watch Charles Collins' live stream, that's underscore Charles one underscore. That's underscore Charles the number one and then underscore. We're going to get set for a string number four, but I'm going to turn the levels up right now because we have alongside Kevin Burns. And, Kevin, you've been bowling alongside. We've got Bob Lee. We've got Justin Cushing. Now we've got you. That makes up that three. How's the bowling been out there right now? It's been pretty good. Uh, no struggles. A couple ways that could have gone, but, hey, that's the nature of the beast. Like I said, new pins, few years old. Tough yeah. house, so. Now, you are Alita Lane's house bowler as well, of course. I mean, formerly oh, Masons. Sure. And it sounds like there's a good game going on in the back. Oh, oh, we're going to have to get to the bottom of that. Well, Bob is running like a madman. I'm pretty sure he'll give us an update. Hang on. I'm cutting audio. I'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to announce that Austin Barnes has just thrown a 203 on lane 13. Austin Barnes with a 203 in lane 13. Let's get some 203 hype and chat here on Facebook and YouTube. Austin Barnes with a fantastic score. And that is going to rank as one of the highest Easter scores of all time, obviously. Um, in fact, it is only the second time in the history of Easter Classic that we have a 200. The only higher string is John Zernike, 211. Austin Barnes, 203. He almost beat that. <laughs> 10 more pins, he would have easily tied that. Yep. Now, Austin Barnes does work here, and he's also one of the coaches at Academy, so that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, he darn near doubled on that uh, strike at the end here. The house record will remain Mike Yao with uh, 213, in fact. He missed it by 10. He missed that house record by 10. And, and you know what? He could have doubled there, and he had he crushed that 10 drop there, and he actually had a wood next to the 10. If he got that double strike in the 10th, he's in with a chance. Easy. So let's go back to what we were saying. <laughs> no, no, nothing against us and Barnes. I, that's probably the highest string of the day, but oh, who yeah. knows. But, um, well, day's young. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, come on. I mean, just about a couple of years ago, threw a 199, just missed a 200. Uh, but, yeah. Simply insane. This is string four of 20 right here. Chris Merrill now up. And, of course, I got to keep an eye on 32 because I'm the second pull. Of course. Now we're doing a pretty good job of that. Justin Kochi didn't lose his turn, did he? <laughs> no, he didn't. But um, That's not a thing that happens anyway, of course. No. Nah. Not with, uh, not with uh, Justin. Um, yeah, great to have you all here. One of these days we're going to get a 200 squarely in our camera view. We got like Nick Norcross's uh, 200 like at the Pro Series, but it was like off camera. Curses. I was that, I was there for that. Remember? That's right. Well, we were all covering the Pro Series, of yeah. course. You and uh, uh, your friend's name, I've forgotten his name. Me and Terry Yen were bowling. We were two lanes away from Norcross. Yeah. And uh, Nick just went nuts. He was bowling with Mario in that, in that tournament, if I remember right. <laughs> Chris Merrill in 19 box to begin. Now, Greg, are you ready for Spare. the... Are you ready for the marathon week that we have upon us this week? With, I uh, can't wait. <laughs> I mean... I mean, this the 20 stringer here today. Yeah. 
and in six days we have the Pro Series Finals, where it's going to be, I believe, myself, you, and Paul Grant should and be there. Paul right? Grant. So it's going to be a fun-filled, um, a fun-filled week of Candle Pin Bowling on Candle Pin Bowling Network. Merrill doesn't quite get the cut across there. Now, Merrill is a former 20 string champion, two, two times. That's, yeah. I think he went back to back. Yep, he went back to back, and then Tim Douglas is our defending champion. I think, disappointingly, we won't see Tim again this time around. We can't cover all the lanes, of course, and it is what it is. Nine box there, 45 through three. Now, I purposely started on 29, so that way I wouldn't be on TV. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's fair. You know, not everyone does, you know. I mean, come on, I'm on TV enough as it is. I mean, I cover the Pro Series with you guys. And yeah, that's enough. Okay, bye. No. <laughs> <laughs> Five, seven, eight for Merrill as that two pin tumbles. That's going to be a toughie. But, uh, I mean. Yeah the, yeah, the hype for the 203, like everyone crowded around there. I can't believe that shot didn't go. Merrill almost had that. If Merrill did have it, he would have easily, easily had a the house record or that maybe beat it but yeah but, uh, chris merrill of course a runner-up at icc worlds as well but with his teammate cole fry to his right i mean that last frame is a sore subject for him of course but that was an epic match and he should be very proud he and his whole team of where they got they put on a tremendous show that pin rolling forward is Deadwood. It'll either go in the channel or have to be scooped one way or another. Can't shoot until it stops moving anyway. Looks like it's going to go into the garden. Yeah, it's in the garden. Boink. Nice sound effect. <laughs> I don't know. Unfortunately, I think, Greg, I think you and I work together way too much. <laughs> yeah. No such thing. You're welcome back anytime. I, I got a second chair for a reason. I told you. We're here behind lanes 24 and 25 in the spacious facility here. Lita Lanes is just about everything you could for anything. I mean, pro tournaments like this, sure, but open bowling, you know, on any day other than today. Got the open bowling. Yeah, let <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's going to be a nine. I'm afraid it went out of the channel. And let's not forget, coming up in August, I have my own tournament that I run. And hopefully... The Spectacular's back? The Spectacular's coming back. All right. Hopefully... Hopefully, I can get you and Paul here to stream. That, that'd be nice. Now, weren't you going to do it last year as well, or were there some logistics? I was going to do it last year. It just, try, I had, I was just about ready to make the reservation and stuff like that, but uh, by the time I was going to make the reservation, it got too late in the year, and uh. I just said, you know what? I'm not ready for it. I just literally just, it was the, yeah, coming back from COVID and stuff like that. So. But this year, it is coming back. I got to get in touch with Al Johnson and um, and everybody at uh, Candle Pin Bowl Network. Hopefully, we can stream. Travis but, Wallace is turned up right now. He, we're waiting on him. I think he's going to uh, wait for one of the adjoining bowlers so he doesn't get too far out of pace. Again, yeah. No shame if he went up sooner, but... Go fry with an eight with a nice spare. The split conversion, what was that? I had my head down. It was the uh, two pin. Very nice. I, uh, so we have Travis Wallace here out of King, with Hi, Kingswood Kevin, Bulletproof. Yeah. See you, Kevin. Travis Wallace with Team Kingswood Bulletproof in ICC out of Canada. Corey Jones, Corey Smith, Devin Brooks, Jamie Boyle, Justin Jones, Sean Duthright, Bob Duthright, and Tom McDonald. That was a fun team to watch. Great color scheme too. I like the baby blue shirts the best. World teams usually have like a variety of different colors, so I wonder if one will ever go around to color identity and just get three copies of the same shirt. Josh Daly's demonstrating that on the adjoining lane. That's gone. Three nine ten is a goner. Wood available to deflect, and Travis played it expertly. But yeah, will a world's team take on a consistent color identity? Certainly logo is everything, of course. That Academy Lane's logo is certainly becoming increasingly iconic. Mike Machichi manages some great teams.
Travis is spare. He lands on the two pin, and he's going to take out the two five eight. There we go. There we go. Or seven ten now. Two oh three. I still can't believe that. Only the second time in Easter Classic history we had of a two hundred. There's an eight box. Sound off a of chat. Where are you watching from? We got a fantastic crowd here on Candlepin Bowling Network Facebook and YouTube. I tell you, YouTube's got the great audience. You know where the high quality stream is. Really appreciate having the opportunity to stream on Facebook as well. Please like and share the video so that everyone's in the know about this great tournament. We'll have two streams today. This for the first half, and then everyone takes the lunch break, of course, and then we will be back for the second stream as well. So make sure to like, follow, and subscribe as well so that you're in the know. Wallace, great hit. Seven pin stays put. I'll make it. Got to play this carefully here, of course. If he Let's see. Plays right at the pin. That's about a stripe to the left, and that's a goner. Another spare for the ICC bowler. Got a shout out for Chris Cooper using the OBD logo right here. Sorry, I was talking with uh, Candlepin and Duckpin Bowler Do John Blaze there. Wallace gets that seven pin to go. Nine and another. I regret turning my attention away from that because this is a great sequence for Travis. Wallace on 50 and a ball through four. John Blaze, of course, has appeared on uh, several Candlepin shows as well. And I don't know if he, he's appeared on some Duckpin streams for certain, and he is very good at that game. He might even. I think his duckpin game is honestly even stronger, but his candlepin game is pro grade as well. And he just has a tremendous routine. That, of course, duckpin helps build another game of small ball. 3 5 6. No, it's triangle 3. I should notate it as such. That's a spare. What a great half by Wallace. Possible 70 plus half. Yeah, we got some gray Canadian turnout today here. And now Calvin Locke standing side by side with the, the guy who finished behind him by just a few pins. And that's why he's championship grade. Calvin Locke with a strike to start. Sit on down, Bob, as we watch this great bowler here, the king of the north in action. Bob, what's the latest? Well, I, I assume you know that Austin's 203 brought him to a 460, and he appears to be our leader. Oh. So he was he was in seventh place coming in at, um, uh, what was that, 57, 257, and uh, close to 203 makes sense. That, and then, uh, of course, Serenity at 343. After that, I'm only, I've only seen five or six, uh, four, four or five. There's Josh Daly on our right. Finishes with a spare on a strike for a 59 half and a ball. Lock. That's one, two, very good. Yeah. In the strike, Phil. It, I tell you, the, the power seems to be rewarding more bowlers. It, uh, and a spare. Beautiful. Strike on spare. So 30 through two and a ball. <laughs> He's a great entertainer, including on Ripping the Rack podcast. That is on uh, YouTube and your usual podcasting platforms. Well, well counting those 30 pins, he's, he's uh, only 105 behind yeah. Austin Barnes. Someone, I mean, not a surprise to see him challenging again. Someone wanted Chris Cooper score. 59 at the half right here. He, there's uh, two spares, in fact. Spare eight and spare seven to get him up there. Back on the head pin. 
Six, seven, ten. 37 through two, and now 44. Looking to convert. Three pieces of wood out there. I think it's doable. On the inside, he goes for it, and does everything does its work except the bundle of wood can't cross yeah. back to the 10 pin. People are asking again about the high scores. So the 211 was done by John Zernike. So Austin Barnes now goes into second place all time with the highest single. Mm. The house record is 413 uh, on the wall over there. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why I put a seven fill in this box. I'm not smart. 47 through three. Okay. And oh, I'm going to have to go get ready for my bowling now, Greg, and I'll be back. Take uh, it I, I, got, I got some repair to do on my first half. Good luck. Mike Yao is the highest single, of course, at Lita Lane's all time with a 213. Other house records, let me pull this photo up, lickety split. Um, Joe Ashline, high triple. Sean McKinley, high five. Jeff Surrett, high 10. Who knows about now? 1471 seemed good at the time. Lock carves in, four pin. Doesn't go down. Come on. There's wood in front. Thanks for nothing. Four, six with wood, I guess. That's quite horizontal piece. Doesn't go. Now watch what Glock does. On his third ball, he will not take his full step up. Well, he will wait now, but his third ball is done with a lot less uh, cadence and motion right there. And although he gets a nine box in this case, usually that's a routine that works quite well for him. To just take less of a backswing and less of a wind up on his third ball. Jeff Atkins has the high 20 with a 28-12 done here at the Easter Classic. I'll rattle off the women's names in just a moment. 2-4-10, gosh, you know, this was about the split luck he was having about this side of the house last year. There was some tough breaks he was encountering, and that did contribute somewhat to Tim Douglas overtaking him in the very last frame. What a slice that is! Extraordinary! Unbelievable, amazing, I need more adjectives. And stat, 66 in the ball. King of the North, sure, I'll buy that. Chris Merrill somehow is on the bottom with 64 of the half. Not that this is a direct competition between lane mates. Hi, women, by the way. Melissa Casey is 191. Sue Halloran's 439. We've seen her at Mixed Worlds. Louise Raymond, Debbie Scannell. High five and ten respectively, and Kelly Stoyles high twenty with a twenty five oh one, twenty five average. Thank you very much. I'll check. Look, I'll check to see if uh, that was an Easter Classic. I mean, what else would it be? This is the Premier Twenty Stringer. What's available for Merrill? Let's see if he can send this. He sent the cap in. That's the sort of thing we have seen parallel pins go, and we have seen the five seven eight go. It's incredible. You see, that wasn't that far off. He cut it behind, that's nine. But pins do get tangled up, although that was the five, seven, eight, so it might have been, it might have been uh, different, because the pin angle might be different there. Trying to get just two parallel pins by themselves is a lot more difficult. I just don't count anything out. Notice the Chris Merrill is head pin perfect, by the way. Yup, that trend's continuing. Get over 10, 247. Three pinner. He missed it just. Couple boards too far, and he lands on the four pin instead. Paul Yaden is up there on lane 23 out of Canada. We'll see him in a moment. But 10. He's got it. It's in there for Merrill. I just a coaching swirling around there. Sorry, I wasn't sure what he was going to do. No one ever does. That's head pin. That's a split. But again, head pin perfect is Merrill. 4 7 6 10. I remember commentating a season one match of uh, Candlepins for Cancer with him and Evan Riva, and that was a fun match because that was a rematch of the Easter Classic duel he had in 2022. 
and he beat Evan Riva on the very last string. Evan Riva was over here on lane 20, I believe it was. Making meaningful progress and seemingly putting on a big string. Was that a nine box or am I seeing things? The scorer says eight, I'm gonna have to go with that, but. Is the commentator blind or not? Seven pin, nine for nine on the head pin. Hasn't had any marks since. Had that one out of the channel on the 10 pin, unfortunately. Off the wood, yes. Has that right to left break. There is that stigma about playing the wood, but sometimes your ball just naturally curls across it. If it works for you, why not? Home Depot, am I right? All right. The load is thin on the head pin, so it curls around the two. Oof. Fill a six, it's good. Two, five, seven, ten. Let's see. That's pretty good. He got that! He got that! Sidewall bounce sent the two pin careening into everything. Fourth mark. And double the bookends, basically. First, second, ninth, and tenth spares. Chris Merrill showing you how to do the Easter Classic. And his fill missed the head pin, but it's a good one. Eight pins wobbling in the back there. I can see it standing and wobbling. It's five. 122, that's a good recovery and a great way to build. Remember, the Easter Classic Championship score last time was 25.04 by Tim Douglas. That was north of a 125 average. I have a feeling with the pin conditions and the pins loosening up from where they were two years ago, I have a feeling these scores could get higher. That's pretty good work of it. Travis Wallace will wait a turn and we've got a second here. I can check in on something. So I was... So this is interesting. Hmm. I don't think uh, we see. Travis Wall is up now. This is the seven in a ball. I don't see Kelly Stoyles' name on the Easter Classic registry, so I guess it's not. Uh, one of the, that's not where the 20 stringer was set. I know at one point Lita Lane's advertised a uh, 20 string tournament as part of a different thing, but I guess it was something else. Four horsemen. Yes, gone. Four straight for Travis Wallace. You know, if you want to see a lot of great Canadian bowlers like him, although from yesteryear in this case, there's a YouTube channel, Sean Benoit, Sean B-E-N-O-I-T on YouTube. Sean has been going through whatever attic he's going through, I would say facetiously, and he has such a trove of content that is worth seeing. If you don't mind the occasional VCR hum on some of them, you can see these uh, great clips of uh, bowlers from yesteryear. And that's worth a while. Sean Benoit on YouTube, check that out. Phil is six for Wallace. Good to see you again. We're gonna have Justin Kochi in just a second. First we'll get this one, three, eight, ten. Give it a look here. Wallace gave it a ride. Get back, Wood, get over. Gone, yes! He's got it. Somehow or another, and that is five straight marks for Travis Wallace. Justin, your mic's hot again. Uh, how's the recovery effort going as well? Bob put it for his game. I threw a 126, um, threw a double strike. I joined the double uh, game so far, so uh, just threw a 59 half and a ball, so we'll see what happens. You know, plenty of time left. Are we digging into the granola bars yet or not just yet? Yes, I had about five of them. Excellent. Well, they're, one, one they're, for every string, seems perfect. They're helping, let me tell you. Well, more than one a string, I suppose. Oh, what a seven here. Yep. All right, let's see what he can do hit. Yep. Well, we've seen the power. 
Yep, Daly hit a single. <laughs> Josh Daly hit a single, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that's that's a first. I know Austin Barnes hit a 203, but a Josh Daly just made a single. Hey, anyone can do it. Yeah. So there was a ladies 20 stringer on one point. Uh, thanks, Tasha and Chad, for helping me recover the lost history of Candlepin Bowling. Yeah, there's a good Facebook channel as well. Now, Travis, of course, you mentioned out of the ICC. Now, you haven't bowled in Worlds yet, or have you? Excuse me. Um, I haven't. I will uh, get up there one day. I got asked by a couple pros to bowl the Worlds, but uh, take it step by step, you know. What a great shot that what is. What a shot, man. One, three, seven, eight. Wallace is raking. Look at all the smudges on the board there. I'll tell you, Wallace is a really good bowler. I think he's out of Canada. He is, yeah. Um, with Kingswood, uh, Kingswood, as they were at least known last year. Sometimes the team identities change on you, but they are consistent franchises, so yeah. good to know you're getting the ins with them. I, I have a feeling you're not far off. Nope. Uh, see what he does here. Fill in the ninth. All right. One, two, four, six, ten. I mean, he actually hasn't hit a single head pin this half, interestingly, but he's still raking despite that, and he's going to go... 130 plus. Possible 140 if he can get this. Man, what a ball by Josh. They even skipped off the foul line. Wow, what a bit, Josh. Now, where. Now, since you're here, Justin, where do you usually like your ball to hit on the uh, lane? Do you like near the lob line or not even that close? Or does it. Not even not that e close. It, I try to just put a little spin on it and hope for the best. You know? 140 for Travis Wallace. There you go. That 10 box securing that. Extra plateau. What a game. But yeah, sometimes you hit it off that rubber foul line, of course, and then you just lose all break on it. Yep. And who knows where it's going from there. Calvin Locke up next. He's a great bowler. I learned a lot from him. Uh, watched him up in the uh, Canada when he threw the 205, uh, I think it was. He's almost just another hammer like he did the first time. He's going to have a nine fill and a six pin with wood. This is unreal, the action he gets. Hit that blank. Oh, he's hit it too far on the cap. No. Oh, dear. I mean, right on the stripe, it probably would have taken it, right? Yeah. And there's 10. Justin Kochi alongside. My name is Greg Guyar. This is Candlepin Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube, live with Ray's Easter Classic, the 20 string marathon since 1989 here in Nashua. What a fun day it is so far. And the Howards do such a good job with everything. I mean, we could gush about a lot of bowling owners in this game, but. You know, I just, I just learned to become a uh, good pro and just throw my ball and just, you know, have fun with it, you know, laugh a little bit, you know. Yeah. I mean, you got to have a good sense of humor to play this game as well, though, because these, these pins can drive you nuts sometimes. That ball hung up at Calvin's hand, unfortunately, so it didn't break in the way he wanted. Yeah. See that thing again where he just, he doesn't really step back on his third ball. He just sort of goes for it, and that's a good out anyway. All right, but, uh, Greg, I think I'm up, so I got to go do my... See it? See you another time. That's a good out for Locke out of that. I mean, he punches through, basically goes all the way to Worcester, which is not a Canadian term, I hasten to add, but. <laughs> oh my God, Adam Melanson, that is savage. <laughs> Adam Melanson of ICC Bowler as well. Please stop talking up Galvin, his head might not fit on the lane. <laughs> well. That, that's a uh, two punch outs like that. A great way to bring you back to earth, I suppose. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, again, Canadians are nice usually, but you know, you get sport involved and then suddenly they become straight savages. Two, four, five, six, ten. You know, this does have the ability to take out four. I mean, I wouldn't put it past Locke's ball there. Here it is. Oh, he's in the four pin this time. 
That'll be six. Still a good game working here. Slapping his thigh and other things, and he'll get up to the 120 still if he can get another mark here. Spare seven, spare nine, and a strike. <laughs> the half Moncton. I forget. I, I forget if Calvin's mentioned his uh, home center uh, before. I usually I don't usually say hometowns. So I usually say home bowling center. He's definitely said it before. I so much to pay attention to. Four horsemen and the nine pin. Easier than four horsemen in the eight, and he does have wood back there if it doesn't deflect it all away. Just try. Just wide of the head pin. That got everything else, though, so it was going. Unless it rides off the plate edge, it won't. And he's got a 10 box. Adam. Adam Melanson in chat again. No, I don't. You do stream, huh? So I see you got your YouTube channel there, Melanson Bowling. Some people say Melanson, but that's incorrect technically. Um, and so are you streaming on that channel or are you streaming elsewhere? I know, for example, Charlie Collins is TikTok, and uh, there are bowlers trying to, you know, do breakout streams of their own. And, you know, we need more bowling content. Tenpin has us crushed in that department for now. Lock. Interesting. The two pin dropped, and the wood scatters away. So actually, that's a terrible development for Locke. Calvin's going to have to pin out the 810. <laughs> he turns over and says, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> that's the thanks I get. Oh, any other? Any other streams? Uh, I can tell you Charlie Collins has one going. I know there's another one over there um, on lane 2930, but I can't for the life of me figure out what this is. Yeah, that, that shot's never going in a million years. Turning up levels now, Bob Lee is alongside yeah. me. A couple, a couple of partial updates for you. Um, Austin Barnes, after his 203, came back with a 67 half in the He's in the fourth now. 67 half. You made yeah. my heart skip a bit. No, no, 67 half. I know so Jeff Sarek crashed to earth after a high string once. Yeah, he's at 527 through four and a half. That's going to be close to the lead. Jeff Sarek is now finished with with four at 569. So he's likely to, you know, a 40 half. Yeah. You know, he's likely to catch him. He, he was open in the fifth. Oh, shoot. Am I forgetting a Jeff Sarek 200? Like, he definitely had, like, a really high string than a really low string. But I'm trying to remember. Okay. Let me pull the notes up here. Sorry, Bob. I want to yeah. make sure accuracy and reporting uh, is well, paramount. Well, I'll just give you a couple more updates before I go get back to my lane. Oh, that was 199 in 2016. Bob, sorry. Okay, Aaron, uh, Aaron Fontaine is in the is in the conversation. He's at 521. He's six behind Austin at the half. So through four and a half, uh, through three and a half. Um, he threw an 87, and he's on a double. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, double strike, 87. So watch for him. You'll, you'll hear, start hearing noises behind you. So that, that's, uh, that's Aaron Fontaine. Uh, Tom oh, I don't, know if, I don't know if my heart can handle another 200. But Well, I, I can't believe I'm in the room again with another 200. I, I, I didn't have it on the air, though. Candleman Bowling Network. You can't you know, them to bowl them this Paul, side. Paul got it for the, you know, at, the, at the Worlds with that uh, Calvin Watt 207. But uh, I have not, I have not yeah. filmed the 200 yet. The gorilla oh, camera Collins work. Barry's one on yeah. 25 on your right. That's uh, 121 plus two in the tenth now. <laughs> He's at 477 on the day. Josh, oh, Josh that, Daly at oh. 482, and, uh, and and Cole Fry at 489. They're all going to be in the conversation. John Winchell on our left is at 473 through five. Um, you're going to see those scores. Like uh, uh, I saw Chris Merrill's. I think you just saw him at 487 through five. Yeah. Um, so I think you're going to see the the leaders. Like like, like we say, so we're at 569. That's going to be the number. Through you know through four. Of, you know we're we're only. In, we're only nine drop for Collins on late. What year is it, Jeff Surrett? Good grief. Did, did he win five or six, Surrett? Um, five, five. five, which is the most. And he, it was like four out of five in a row. And the one, as I recall, Bo, uh, Bobert yes. inter, um, got the interim. Kind of like Bob Whitcomb interrupted Chris Sargent's run of That's four. That's right. That's one way to think yeah. about it. Good. By the way, thanks for telling me the totals were on screen. I, am, hey, I yeah. These are new scorers here, yeah, lead to my defense. But I feel I, like. Above you. I, I should go back and, pl and play with my, uh, move my balls and, 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 and re resume my 1-0 my bowling. Go move your balls. Thank you, Bob. 
bowling balls, people. Come on. We play with balls to bowling center. 122, 140, and 119 for Merrill Wallace and Locke, and we'll get string five going. Paul Yaden, Chris Cooper, OBD, and uh, Mike Brown coming up next. Take all this away. Do my usual, uh, I, always call it, I always call it Cardo the Magnificent. I'm such a board game aficionado that I'm always the one like setting up components and reading the rules and it's just like, uh, uh, just forgive me. I have to do like all this and then this and then this and then this. We do get the game started eventually. Yeah. One of those try-hard tabletop people. I know there are some people who are into the classic games as well. I think, I know there was a poker tournament at ICC Worlds at one point, but you could get a cribbage tournament going easily. I mean, it, the, the sick part was that Fairlane's Moncton did have a cribbage board in their <laughs> pub there. I don't think Lita Lane's Shooter's Pub, uh, sorry, Kegler's Den, Kegler's Den is the name of Lita Lane's food center. I always get that backwards. But a lot of great grub there, and they're gonna be serving a fantastic uh, barbecue lunch for us. Just a moment. Just to, just to demonstrate, not to make it, uh, just to show how they take good care of their bowlers. I had the pleasure of meeting these fellows before, Paul Yade and Chris Cooper, and, uh, Mike Brown. I'm trying to, let me just check in real quick, see if we got any past scores for them, or if this is indeed first across the way. We have Rob Brown, of course, but no, nope, this will be the first time for all of them to represent. So I'm seeing Noah in chat here. Good to see you. I, apparently there is another stream going in the Maritime Candlepin group. I wonder what lane that is, but uh, Maritime Candlepin Bowling. Ah, oh, what's the name of that page? Excuse me. I've, I'm a member of it, too. Pull this up here without breaking the stream as we... What is it? Come on. Oh, I'm a, I'm a member of the Nova Scotia Candlepin Bowling Site. But yeah, Maritime Candlepin. Uh, yeah, joint group. Let me in. I thought it was thought it was in on all the cool Candlepin pages. Yeah. Yeah, you can see them all, yeah. Technically 30. Yeah, technically 30. The lane, the, it starts getting worse and worse the further you go. I'm on. I'm centering on 24, but there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Candlepin Bowling Network live on Facebook and YouTube to see it all. Explaining it to the passerbys, but also here. String five is underway. It's Paul Yaden first. I got to update the thing as well. This is string number five of 20. Here we go. Here it comes. Interesting delivery. Yadam probably wanted to be cross lane there. Look at the arm swing of that delivery. All a great contributor to the Candlepin chat form as well. Yeah, he really swings that arm over from left to right almost. Really gets a lot of power behind it. And he took out the 1 2 8 with that ball. 1 2 8 10 to start out. There is a 10. Great to have you all here. It's Lita Lane's Easter Classic, the annual 20 string marathon since 1989. Many thanks again to Dave Barber, John Zappi, and I think most of all, Dottie Lara, who's here again today. Here to, who were instrumental in getting us the statistics, all synthesized in the score sheet here. John Zappi had a huge couple of binders that he entrusted me to not spill coffee on or get my cats into. Thank you very much. 
we, and all you viewers, I'm sure, are thankful to them for the help. That shirt, I was joking with Paul, that shirt sort of looks like John Winchell's shirt out of Exeter Bowling Lanes in Exeter, New Hampshire. He was loaded, he explains. It's a good looking shirt though. One more stick, that'll be seven. Great to see the Canadian showing here. Is it just my imagination or is it just more and more? After all, we're selling out this year, 102, and I think it technically sold out last year, but not all payments were collected, so unfortunately the house didn't fill up past 93. But this year, I am told it is 102 right now. Paul Yadin comes in 380 through the first four. Chris Cooper in with 422 to this point, and Mike Brown with 442. Bob Lee is going around calculating scores. They are online as well. We're trying to get that. That's a good hit here. Get over five, get over eight. Nope, the wood's going to tail away there. And Paul's got his best look. Wood's disappeared. It's a clean shot. Got it. 27 and a ball through three. So Easter Classic. Definitely becoming a bucket list item for a lot of people, including you, Tim Matero. Saw you here today. We know you could show up. Well, sooner or later, we'll get him to the, into that tournament. Main Hall of Famer, of course. Want to watch the ICBA Hall of Fame. So, I mean, a lot of United States bowlers, of course, and contributors, but. Great showing there at that October 2023 ceremony that I finally had the chance to upload. But there is a playlist. It's in the description of every single video. And it, it, there are some really heartfelt speeches there. I think uh, I think the speeches for Jack Sanic the posthumously were some of my favorite. That's a seven pin cluster hit. Paul Yadin is back to back. But you can see that playlist in the description of each of the videos. Yeah, Maritime Candle Pin in all caps, that's right. There we go. One, two, four. Ooh, ooh boy. One, nine, ten. Is that wood going to hit the ten? Not quite. The fill is seven. It's, the inner, it's that nine pin that's a tough one. He's got it there. I'm using X for 10, of course. That is in Canadian scoring in some places. But I'm using it to notate pin numbers because space and constraints. See the 110? Planks right there in front of the 10, easy as you like. That'll be nine. 56 half there, 10 bonus pins. Uh, it's short changed of a couple I've noticed. Hmm. Interesting. It's actually giving him a six fill and an eight box there. I don't think that's right there. Talking to Ryan Hoagie alongside, he's, uh, we'll see him in just a moment on lane 24. Chris Cooper now. Eight fill. And a 10 box here. Four horsemen left side. Uh, do you want to join me on the headset or no? It's up to you. Cooper starts out with a 10 box. Those 10 boxes are critical. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. I'm gonna sound like a broken record. I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but those pins matter. Four horsemen and an eight pin. Eight pin's not too difficult here. 
I have OBD, obsessive bowling disorder. <laughs> There's someone else um, who is a, a Tim, I believe his name is. He's created a page where he quips, I have IBS, irritable bowl syndrome. You know, Candleton is habit forming. Got the head pin that time. That'll be seven, unfortunately. Didn't get the break he was after. All these three bowlers, first time in the tournament. Cooper in it. This is on triple digit pace at the moment. These strings do not get easier as you go. Denise and Glenn Pinsent alongside Hoagie on lane 23. Yeah, no, I'm taking your. I got the cues here. And gone. Three pin taken by Cooper. Got caught watching chat there as Cooper picks up his first mark. Multiple women in this tournament today. I've seen Ashley Breton. I saw Brittany Underwood. Laura Dorfler's done this tournament before as well. I'm not sure where she's at. Or if she's in this year, but she has before. The fill is high, it's nine. Chris looking to build on this. He's got the six pin. It's possibly had the pin wrong the last time. And a spare again. A question in chat here. Hello to Scott in Raleigh, North Carolina. Unless is an average needed to join the Easter Classic? Nope. It's a scratch tournament, of course. So uh, scratch tournaments, you don't need an average. There's no handicap, no mercy either, you'll find. But technically, anybody, it's first come, first serve. And if you can afford the admission fee and you can bowl properly in sequence, you can bowl. It's really that simple. Five is the fill here, four horsemen and a seven. The outpost leave for Chris Cooper. The sleep goes. Lefty goes left to right here. Outside on the head pin. Nice. Got the sidewall carom and it's three straight. And he'll sit on that. 61 and a ball at the half. OBD getting it done. Up comes Mike Brown. Wearing a Toronto Blue Jays cap, we'll forgive him. And nothing else, because there's no hard and fast dress code for this event. You know, caps are much more aligned. Or, well, no, hang on, hang on, words, Greg. The rule against caps has incurred some controversy for ICC Worlds. But, you know, it is the marquee tournament of the year. And always want to dress to impress, especially since uh, people, like me, are pointing cameras at it. They want to do a good impression. But sound off a chat. How strictly should hats be enforced in a major tournament like ICC? Again, with no bearing to Mike here in this tournament where there's, there's absolutely no relevance. Gets a 10 box. There we go. Did not bring... I almost broke my formulas. Yeah, I know, it's XL. They use XL scoring in the PBA too, relax. <laughs> 10 mugs for Mike. Uh, 10 pin spills as well. And one and three. How about being a Maple Laps fan? Oops, sorry. Oh, oh, geez. Well, it was nice having an international audience. Three pin taken out, and the head pin stays. Though Austin Matthews, 60 goals. Congrats to the. Congrats to him. What a huge. How huge he's been. Turning the levels up, we got Bob Lee alongside. Yeah, Greg, have you had updates through the fourth or not? Uh, speak again, Bob. Sorry, I had you down. Have you had updates through the fourth string? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. So Cal officially destroyed those pins. How about Austin Barnes? They have met a 600 Ooh, through four. 
604. I mean, yeah. little surprise. I mean, that, that's what's up on the wall there, and I'm, I'm like reading it going, uh, is that right? 203. Yeah, 203, and that, I, I guess so. So big hit, Brown, nine pin, uh, seven pin, excuse me. Um, unbelievable. So Aaron Fontaine, like we said, was in second at 581. Jeff Surrett, 569. Those guys are all in range for a, for a 700, easily. Surrett will need a, a 131. Uh, Fontaine at 119, and obviously Barnes just needs a 100 for a 700. Haven't seen one of those since yesterday. Um, <laughs> Jeremy Seaholm again. Oh, I was seven so, under five so, for Jeremy Seaholm. I was so moved by that. Absolutely, um, that, that was a thrill. And you one, can, first time I'd covered a seven hundred other than oh, I got daily. You daily can watch that on Candlepin Bowling Network and the Atlantic Candlepin yeah. Single Store. I think I might have had a couple of six hundreds, but I, it was a, that one was was moving because they have been talking about. It. Anyway, third place, Jeff Surrett, five sixty nine. Nick Leach hanging in fourth at five forty one through four. Ryan Cox. At uh, 516, Brian Fuller, 508, Jerry Dunn at 506, and uh, let's get you down to 10. Jerry, Nick Norcross, five at uh, 98, 490. No, Jerry Dunn's at 498. Norcross is tied at 98, along with looks like Jimbo Ayet at, at 497. And after that, uh, J.B. got here as an 11th at 4.95, and it yeah. goes on. The, the score should be posted. Yeah, Norcross was uh, surprisingly low last year. Good to see him milling about in the top 10. Yeah. He, he can sneak up on you. He's at a 200 as well. Uh, oh, absolutely, recently in a pro series event, right? That's right. All right, I got to go bowl my uh, second half. Bye-bye. Until next time, Bob Lee riding the radar gun as well. I just noticed that Mike has a candle pin logo on his uh, left thigh there. I don't know if the camera's going to give it a good look here, but. Paw prints from Morgan as well on his other thigh. I like how the candle pin's got angel wings, like he's going to send them into the heavenly dimension. Like that. Although he crossed over, crossover is Lee Kings. He's actually got the old setback shot, 4 5 7. Although it's actually worse, he doesn't even have wood to play with. Usually you do. Now there's a Canadian term we can all get behind. Sorry, Dan Castle, I, almost everyone. Though I will credit Dan Castle with helping further the movement for it. We need a name for that shot where you just buzz by the two pin and just nothing good happens at all. That's a 54 half, and apart from a seven box, that's well pinned by Mike. Canadian, uh, Montreal Canadiens fandom will be reluctantly tolerated in this chat. Again, I'm from Massachusetts. I'm allowed to say that. Also, I have definitely cried one time when the Bruins lost as a one seed. It, it was like, it was like earlier. I think it was like, what was it early 2000 when the Bruins were doing really well? And then, I don't know. Apart from maybe Saku Koivu, I hate them all. Oh, hello. These pins are going to spill for Yaden here. I tell you what. Off target. Yeah, well, we had that statistical clip of, like, we had that statistic here on CBN of, you know, why is the head pin the hardest single to supposedly make. Well, it supposedly implies you don't have the range earlier, I suppose, so. I guess if you've lost the range on the first ball, you're more likely to lose the range on the second ball. That's one frame, set it and forget it. You gotta have a short memory. We have seen time and time again the struggles on these lanes, even from the best of the best. It's how you rebound from them that's really what counts. Ball's doing quite well here, still has those two marks to build on. Head pin, that tailed away. Check mark left. As you see there. That slide foot almost goes out to the side for Paul, interestingly. 
So I guess Yaden's aim is to just slide it in line with the pins, I suppose. Let me make sure I'm not just seeing things. Yep, he definitely has a right to left slide about it. His entire approach goes the direction he wants to throw in. Pretty logical and consistent if you ask me. That's a that's how a normal right-hander bowls it, but no, no, all these hot shots out here throwing backup balls and whatnot. I say, looking at Chris Merrill, who of course throws conventionally right to left. I'm just giving him a hard time. Yeah, it's got the head pin again this time, and he's busted up that four pin, critical. Now a chance. Type that ampersand so it lights up. Here we go. 610. That's into the 10 pin. This is a fantastic crowd. I know I've said it a few times already, but if you could please like that video, hit that thumbs up button wherever you may be watching. Get the word out. This crowd's getting better and better as we go, even on this holiday Sunday. Happy Easter to all who celebrate. And thank you very much for spending some part of your day with us. Here virtually in Nashua, New Hampshire. You would not all fit here, so we're glad you're here. Hoagie and the Pinsons will be up next. If they don't go by that group name, I'm calling them that now. then maybe, just maybe, I'll tolerate some go have, I can't say it, I can't form the word, I can't do it. I'm too loyal. Two, five, eight, 10. Really trying to get on the left side of that two pin there. That's really the best way to do it. Now, on the third ball, see a shade after the five pin, after all, the wood is covering. These pins matter, maximize your score down the line. Would you go for the five pin and maybe try to play the five, eight, ten here? Let's see. Go for it all. And he does get the two pin. Gets the three anyway as it happens. Guess the wood wasn't covering as much, but that might have happened on the other ball as well. All still working a decent string here, 91 through nine. Next up will be Chris Cooper on that 61 and a ball half. His fifth string of 20, almost a quarter of the way through. Some bowlers will bring a change of shirts to change into for the second half, you know. I don't want to overstate the physicality of bowling, but it's a strain, you know. It is an exercise, especially when you're throwing three balls a frame. And every single ball matters. One, two, four. I've actually... And yes, yeah, spare. And in fact, I actually have two pins too low, in fact. So actually, they did detect that. I remember what happened. They did detect the mistaken fills from earlier. Remember they, I said, oh, fourth and fifth box was misscored? They found it. So actually, it is a seven fill and a nine box. So that 103 in a ball is correct as you see it now. The ball now firmly in triple digits. And this fill could take him into one tenth. Average spare fill is six and a half. Let's see. Lita Lane's pins are looser now. Yes, he crossed over on this one. He's gonna get five out of this one, I believe. And that will be 108. Hey, throws his hands up. He's not totally happy with it, but that's pretty good anyway. And now, Chris Cooper. 61 and a ball at the half. There you see. Just on two head pin hits. His shot. Get over five. You were hit. Yes. Triangle six. Six, nine, ten. The fill was six for Paul Yaden, so that is 109. And a spare here. Cooper. Just gonna pop 
pop this up here. So there it is for you folks at home. Yaden 109. Thanks, Noah, for the catch. What was Tim Douglas's winning average? 125. Thanks, Craig, for the question. There you see it. Cooper. Four straight marks. Bob Lee, you have an email. Now triangle three. I think it's the first time we've seen this leave all day. Getting some good breaks off the head, on the head pin and off. Oh, he crossed over though. The lefty wants to deal that one into the 3 5. Really has that sidearm delivery about him, and his feet go straight. In contrast to Yaden's delivery earlier. The box is 9, 94 through 7. You notice the score is kind of heating up, sort of, that slight shade of red. It gets redder and redder the more over, under par they are, assuming par is 10 a box. He's crossed over again this time. Another triangle. Now three triangles is apt, I suppose. This is triangle number four in this case. And it's gone. That's a sidewall shot and a good one. 104 plus in the eighth. So a chance to go 130s right here. In this fifth string of 20. Such a pleasure to be here for this 20 string tradition. Hey, a few years ago, we wouldn't have even had this at all, you know? What a pleasure it is. I don't know much about this. Uh, is OBD just a shirt or is there something more to it, like a, a team name or some such? We're looking. All right. Now this is interesting, the sidewall carom took out that two pin. So this is the four, five, seven, eight, ten. It is his nickname, simply, okay. OBD is looking at a plank, four, five, seven, eight, ten. Let's see. Low on the wood possibly could send the five to the ten. He goes high on it instead, actually too high, he overshot it. And it's low on the wood. Okay, low on the wood didn't work terribly well either. Well, pretty. Maybe the second ball got away slightly. That's a pretty decent eight box all told. Sometimes it just happens. Got a little unlucky with the break and that's that. That's Travis Wallace demolishing a rack on 25. He's got 112 plus plus at the 10th. All right. One, two, four. He's actually had pretty good leaves throughout. Like, it's either Horseman or something. Cooper's got a fantastic working ball today. Had been, oh, the wall shot didn't do it for him this time, unfortunately. Two pin caromed over thin and unfortunately all the way in front of the four pin every step. A nine. So a, hang on, have I mangled the score sheet? 19, 15. There it is, 126. Apologies, I'm not sure how I missed the frame in all of that. But it's 126 in the 10th. On to Mike Brown. Head pin, 124. Ugh. Brown's been pretty much all over the head pin, just not getting the leaves he's after. I tell you what, he nearly cut that seven into the nine. That's a nine box. 71 through 7. Vince might matter. 
Three newcomers here, last year's defending champion, Tim Douglas. Other multi-time champions. Jeff Surrett, Chris Sargent have five and four. Craig Holbrook and Gary Carrington, three each. Chris Bovair, Chris Merrill, Jeff Atkins, and Sean Baker, two each. Spill everything, get overhead pin. Well, gotta get something yourself, I suppose, but there's a pretty decent leave. Nah, just that. Well, hey, got the nine on the first ball in any event. Quick tempo to that. Love a bowler who's just ready to go. No, no Gary Carrington this year, Noah, but uh, I don't think he actively bowls anymore, but Paul Grant recently ran into him uh, at Academy Lanes and uh, had a great conversation with the Hall of Famer. And Carrington's highs, interestingly, are a high single of 199 and a high triple of 499. That's rough going right here, but it just shows that you do need some luck and, you know, High single and high triple, you know, are tons of fun and part of the allure of this game. It's also just not everything. Nicely pinned out of that spread eagle for round nine is totally fine out of that. That's the sort of pinning you need to succeed in this tournament. Joe Ashline hasn't bowled in this tournament since 1996, but he had a 126 average. Hardly a surprise. Now, there's a fireballer for you. I think Ashline could have been considered one of the greatest of all time if perhaps he got a few more. He dialed in that accuracy just a little bit more. But there's a reason he got on show after show after show, including many you can see on YouTube. That's 10. And a 99. And yeah. Someone's shouting the Sean Benoit channel, which again is fantastic on YouTube. Sean Benoit. And he has a great trove. And there was a video full of bowlers. Uh, who was in that? Bob Kelly was in it. I know I saw Gary Carrington. That's why I thought of it. I'm trying to remember who else appeared in that. So again, I'm a box off somehow. Is it my imagination? Ooh. Seven ten split here instead. So, and that's converted. So, excuse me. I seem to be somehow an entire box off yet again. That's not very cash money of me. Then a spare. And there we go. So Phil is nine. I'm not sure what keeps happening to me or how I keep getting a box off somehow. But in any event, 110 is the final score there. It's actually official. And there we have it. Great to have you all here on Campbellton Bowling Network. Greg Guyar here with you in Lita Lanes, Nashua, New Hampshire for the annual tradition. So there's Brown's final score, 110. So he actually had a head pin hit there. No, it was 7, seven ten, excuse me. Gives you a rough sense he had the higher than average accuracy. I'm still not sure how I got messed up there. Pretty good pinning throughout as well, just that 1-7 box mixed in there. Chris Cooper. Fantastic. 126 with five marks. All those crushing head pin hits you see. And that is that. All right, I'll learn how to count to 10 and we'll be right back with string number six in just a moment. Um, I'll just 
take the scoreboard away here. I'm going to see also if I could get some scoring. So it doesn't look like the online scoring updates have been coming necessarily. Uh, there could be just some, a lot of setup, and you know, there's a lot of moving parts to this tournament. I mean, the Howards bend over backwards to make this work, and they do a tremendous job with all the moving pieces. Levels are up on Bob Lee here. All right, I'm going to have to go soon, but um, Austin Barnes and Aaron Fontaine are finishing up. They both just crossed the 700 barrier. You saw that Jeff Surrett finished through five at 695 with a 126. Fontaine, oh. Fontaine and Barnes were both in the low 700. They have splits in the 10th. They're, they're going to be like around 710. Um, Stephanie Miller, uh, our first our female uh, high scorer so far, 159. Um, back on lane uh, 18, 17 and 18. Uh, we saw Barber just went nuts with a 167. He's at Ooh. 626. Uh, um, and we got Nick Leach hanging on with a 114, 655. Daly's up to 631 through five. Nick Norcross through a 144. He is at six. And I, didn't, I stopped writing there. He's, he's in the 620s or 630s. Uh, my, my apologies. I gotta go. I gotta go get ready to bowl. Okay. Bob's out. That's the other microphone that's rustling there. Great to see the women representing. All right, Ryan Hogan's going to be up on lane 24 in just a moment. There we go. Pinson's a brother and sister, as I recall, so look at that. I may have made a few Canadians jokes in chat. I'm a Bruins fan. Please forgive me. Well, there goes that rapport. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, Corey, you're right in chat. We got a new scoring monitors here, and obviously I got a new score display as well, but Excel spreadsheet working its magic. We are here at Ray's Easter Classic. Thank you so much for spending all your time, uh, as much time as you reasonably can, of course, on this Easter Sunday. Hope it's a wonderful holiday. Uh... Commentator set the mute on. No, hopefully people can hear my voice. Unfortunately, right? Yeah, there we go. Hogan's up first here. Note to self: Corey Merrill, Billy Elias, and David Elias will be next on 24. Hoagie, you may recall from coverage of ICC Worlds, he made a pretty decent run in the singles KO, if I recall correctly. I'm trying to remember how far exactly. He's bowled in this tournament before, had a 21-28 his last time out. The sixth string of 20 will update that. Unless I've miscounted that as well. <laughs> Hooray, I can count again. Oh, gets up first. And we're underway. Same foot, same hand. I remember that much. One, two, four, eight, ten. So the mood is subdued a little bit here at Lita Lanes, of course. I mean, this is a grind of a tournament as well, even though it is a ton of fun and a bucket list item for many, many people. Hogan with a good crack at that. It's that darn inner pin that got him. And a 10. Trying to pull up some other information as well. That's head pin, too full, unfortunately. He's actually got the eagle and the nine pin as well.
trying to deal less and more. Scooted that wood across. I thought for a second it might have taken it. And just takes out that pin back there. So unfortunately a six. That's right. Spikes Chimney Services. That was his world's team. Bernie Corbett, Ryan Jenkins, Adam Mugford, Bradley Best, Trevor Stinson, Barry Cody, and Glenn Pinsent. We'll see him and Denise Pinsent in just a moment, brother and sister. Two pins down, eight to go for Hogan. Didn't get the break he was after. Lead of lanes in Asheville, New Hampshire is 36 lanes, and Lita's Lighthouse as well. Perfect for glow bowling as well. A nine. So arguably by that definition, They might have the most lanes of anyone. Academy Lanes is 44, of course. I don't know how many are in the lighthouse. I've actually never been inside it. I'm always covering the serious side. Now, I tell you, that is an awful break. I thought Hogan delivered that ball perfectly. Had the drive and everything, and unfortunately, it actually deflected away. That is the 5, 7, 9, 10. Nice try. We've seen crazy already. We did see a shot. I think it was Merrill. Chris Merrill, I should hasten to add. Getting that shot to go. Or one similar to it. It just tagged both corners, and I just could not believe when they both wilted at the same time. Ryan Hogan, 33 through 4. This one's thin on the head pin as well. That's going to tip. Again, I still think the last ball was perfect. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Five, seven, eight. Oy. How's it going to trampoline this one? Plays a lower piece of wood. It was actually doubled wood. Interesting idea. Collects the 10 out of that. Well pin on the end. It looked to build on that. He was on the head pin more than not, as we see here. And now Denise pins it. Forgot to mention Ryan Hogan was 524 coming into this sixth string. Uh, so 524 through five. Benson, 523 through five. She's got the 247. Right one. Oh my word, how did that not drive through? 247 with Wood. That's nine, a brutal nine at that. Thought it went perfectly. Second try here, second frame. Get over four. Really? My goodness, four? on the left and the 3-6-10 on the right. Just with the wood in the back there, the three pin could trampoline. Not a bad offer of that at all. People, I saw a comment once in a Candlebit video of like, why are you saying good bid? Are we at an auction or something? And I was like, I guess, I guess it's a regional term. You know, good bid, a good offer at that Spare there. Yeah. 
funny, the regional variances. Denise has this crushed. Ten pin is all that's left. Vincent gets the spare. Got distracted by side conversation there, but she made that 10 pin go. So three for three on the head pin. I offered Hoagie to join me alongside. He didn't want to. That's his right, though. Mix. Get over six. Thank you. Six on the fill there. Good strings starting to work. One, three, seven, eight. She needs that score corrected, of course. Just the eight pin in the back. There's the one three for a nine. <laughs> Hoagie's still upset about his fantasy hockey season, and because you're a Bruins fan, yeah. There's a lot on his mind, I'm sure. Nice guy, I could tell already. If only I lived further up there. A lot of great centers that went to the drone by trailway and up in uh, Fredericton, New Brunswick. That was lovely. I wish I could have gone to Halifax for the Women's International Tournament. Jill Wood absolutely dominated at that, I remember. Madison Riva, too, though she had second best average. I seem to recall a very good super team took that one. Denise pins out. Wood almost bounces over, so she's got a 50 half, and it's still working pretty well here. Glenn Pinson is up next, and Bob Lee is alongside. Yeah, uh, just not, not too many new updates since last time, but I, I saw that uh, Aaron Fontaine and uh, in, in Austin Barnes are separated by one pin. Seven, seven eighteen, no, six pins. Seven eighteen to seven twelve. Uh, we'll see that officially in a, in a minute. But uh, they, they're the uh, seven hundred bullets, and like we said, Sered at six ninety five. This is uh, Glenn Pinson. Yep. Yeah, okay. I'm Denise did pretty well for herself. Got that one spare six. He's got the 5-9 now with a plank right in front. Our defending champion, uh, Timmy Douglas, uh, struggled a little early, but uh, finished with a 6-0-2. Um, so it just puts him over 100 behind, but, you know, he, he's thinking. He, Spare. He's, he's thinking, you know, throw yourself uh, a few 600s and maybe one, one 700 in the bunch or some mixture like that. I think we're going to see some pretty high scores, though, this year, do you not? But they seem to be certainly trending higher as well. Glenn showing us how to do it. He came he came into this with a 571 through 5. So a 114 average working very respectable, even though we're expecting probably. I bet a, what do you think the winning average will be? Last year it was 125. Uh, I think we're going to see something closer to 130. Um, I, I, I'm just seeing, seeing Daly sit down at 63 in a ball. You know, we have these 700 scores through the first quarter. You know, that, that, that's, a, that's the mark. Maybe that's a, you know, so, so imagine something closer to a 650 times four. What is that going to be, Eight, 18? Uh, I, lost the, I lost the first part of that equation, yeah, sorry. I, I, think, I think it's going to be like 20, 2,600 maybe? 130 average, then. Yeah. Huh? That, 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 that's reasonable given, given the 700s that we're seeing here. If, ever, if, if good bowlers keep throwing 700s. Looks like I got to go get ready to uh, pitch some more balls, but uh, I'll be back later, Greg. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Seven box for Glenn, 22 for the pair. This is the Pinson's first time in this tournament, as far as I can tell. Full tournament here, 102. People love the allure of this tournament. Maybe they've been watching the streams. They want their crack at it as well. It brings out the best of the best. Glenn. 
Yeah, he's got. Uh, it's Dave Chesterko's favor. One, three, four, six, seven, nine. Took out the four, seven. We got the story from Dave Chesterko. We mentioned it on a Friday Night Pro League uh, stream a moment ago, but that four and two cluster. We just blow the five pin in the corner pin. It's pretty when it goes like that. You just see the cluster of four demolished as Glenn shows you how. It's a 10 box, excuse me. I got a little too excited to mark that down. And he's, uh, yeah, he, he dealt it in practice basically and then dealt it the first frame of the match and he just fell in love with the lead ever since. How is DC doing? He's doing well. I'm still waiting for New England candle pins to get out of the can, as it were. Uh, Franklin TV, I guess, still has to edit. I can't throw any stones about sitting on a editing project for an eternity, of course, but glad to finally have the ISTBA videos up. If you haven't had a chance, a lot of American bowlers, of course, but great heartfelt speeches delivered at Wyndham, New Hampshire a few months ago. And that was a really wonderful night. Sorry, I'll find the words eventually. An eight box there. It's still hanging on pretty well right there. The pins got out of way, so he's back to par basically. So 40 through four. Ian, the 5 and 10, the Woolworth split. I like that one. The nickel and dime, I'll sometimes call it. My favorite bad leave is the 3 and 2 split, honestly. Just seeing that 2 pin and the 3 pin rip into the corner is just mesmerizing. Ooh! And a real pro grade shot if you can pull that off. Glenn with a crushing delivery, leaves just the 5 pin. There's a question about payouts now. I gotta take a look here. I don't have it for this year's tournament, but I do know that last year, Tim Douglas took home, it was north of $4,000 for his first place finish. Yeah, 4,400 USD, that, that's pretty good going there. Always easier the second time around. Vincent has a 50 half. Ryan Hogan is up next. Get good handpin accuracy overall of the lot. Greek church leave? Yeah. Oh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, good grief, Scott. <laughs> How is that your favorite one? Unless there's wood in the back there. I remember, oh, was it was it Bruno DeFeo on a live show? Showing my American bias? One, two is gonna go here. Hogan's gonna pick up his first mark. But yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you can pick that wood up in the back. Hogan to load. Ah, half a stir for the two eight punch out, I should say. Pretty good second shot there. There's always that debate of where to play the uh, punch out there. Do you play it towards the curtain and try to get the pins mixing, or do you play it on the side with the pins to keep it safe, or does it really only matter how your particular ball works? Because I have this sneaking suspicion that maybe it might have more to do with just how your ball naturally works. So, of course, Hogan's going to want to dig it into the 1-3 there or on the right side of the head pin, even if the 3-pin was the one he missed and he punched the 3-9 instead. Just try. It just hasn't found it yet, unfortunately. 
There are a lot of bowlers that can succeed off the same foot. In fact, one of them's here, Ashley Breton. We might see her in a second here. Andrew Terrian also off the so-called goofy foot. Jason Doucette. Uh, ICC runner-up last year. He's off the wrong foot. Box is 671. again. Oh, that's a good one. There you go. Found the head pin. Just the king pin. He's all over it. Chance here. Hey, a spare strike. He's right back in this. Ah, oh, it would deflected. That was interesting. It went over the top of it. Thought maybe he might get a deflection off the side. Well, something. Brutal going here. No. No hospitality from the pins today. Gets it the second time around. Big uproar of applause. I'm trying to find where that was. Hogan takes out four on the first ball. Six pin. Tough string there. Want to minimize the amount of 90s you get to go far in this tournament, but one in a while, after all, Tim Douglas started his uh, championship run with a 90 something. It was a uh, 95, and he ends up with the $4,400 payout nonetheless. Hogan makes his way to 90. And that brings up Denise Pinson. See off there, Chris Merrill coming up at 112. Not to be confused with Corey Merrill, who we'll see in just a moment. Denise on 50 at the half. That's her score sheet. Again, good head pin accuracy overall. Try straight over the center arrow, tailed away. Four horsemen and a nine pin this time. Lance on the nine pick. Barry, good to see you in chat. Six box there, 56 through six. So someone made a comment earlier, so Lita Lanes apparently has 48 lanes if you put it all together, which is what Academy Lanes Haverhill used to have, but you add it all up, then that's probably the most lanes of any bowling center in the entire continent, I think. None that big up north, right? I mean, Bear Lanes Moncton, of course, is massive, but that's not 40. That's not 48. Bear Lanes, of course, used to have many more locations as well. I believe that's the only one left, but again, somebody's going to have to help the feckless American out here. Not that you have to. I greatly appreciate your support just by watching. Thank you to everyone who's been taking time out of their Easter Sunday to see this 20-string marathon. Seriously, this is a great crowd considering this is going to be exhausting coverage, all told. Imagine how these bowlers feel. I mean, this string does not get easier as you go. Curl it in. Yes, ran it down. That's 10. Nicely pinned out. 
66 through 7. Looking to get back on it. Yeah, Halifax had another fair lanes, I see. And was that the fair lanes that was the former ICC venue, I believe it was? There's certainly clips of it with uh, John Kafala's Irby, who we'll actually see in just a moment. He filmed some clips on that for YouTube. Pitson is a good hero. Denise has the 5-8. Has to curl around this troublesome wood, just got outside of it. If she hit that wood on the red line, maybe it would have, but the right cap is speculative. 5-8, that should read. Now playing high wood, aha, the shot was there. 10 it is. Pinning well in any event, and that again means with that spare six, she could still be in triple digits. Two more shots left to get it. Greg Gouillard, Candlepin Bowling Network, live on Facebook and YouTube for Ray's Easter Classic, the annual Lita Lanes tradition. Bringing out the best of the best. I mean, consider the caliber of bowler that's come to bowl this tournament. I mean, past champions have included Gary Carrington, Craig Holbrook, Peter Flynn, Tom Olsta, Craig Holbrook again, okay, Chip Carson, Jeff Atkins with that 28-12, which was simply outrageous. Tough cut on that four pin. Denise just missed it. Mike Poulin, Chris Sargent, Bob Whitcomb, Sean Baker, Chris Hallett, and I do believe I'm pronouncing that name correctly now, Hallett. John Zappi, Jeff Surrett, Jeff Surrett, Jeff Surrett, Jeff Surrett, Chris Bovair, Jeff Surrett. And then Jonathan Boudreau, Chris Bovair, Kevin Davis, Chris Merrill, Chris Merrill, and Tim Douglas. Uh, check mark left side. This is. Put it down. That's on the two pin. Got it. On the 2 5 side. That right left ball works perfectly. Spare there. We'll shade the upper left corner, again being Americans. Although I do love that being able to use the Canadian notation. We did it for ICC singles out of Fairlanes Moncton. And then I also in integrated it into my uh, Friday Night Pro League score sheet. I, it's very deliberate to have like the shaded lower right triangle for spares. And, shaded box for strikes. I wanted to pay homage to that. Great fill, it's nine. 103, like I said, you hang in there and look how she finds the range on the head pin on the end and gets it done for a triple digit string. That matters, those 90s strings can be heartbreakers, so. Denise keeping herself in that and that'll keep her scores well. She's 626 through six. Glenn Pinsent now. Yeah, greater, definitely a greater Canadian contingent this time around. Lefty, hmm, crossed over, I guess? Uh, what are, how are we notating this? 5-1 split, 2 4 five, seven, eight, 10 if we want to be precise. Drops a four, unfortunately. Yeah, notice that very, very quick tempo he has there. Just no nonsense, gets right up there to the line. Obviously not cutting off the bowler, but apart from that, boom, ready to go. Box is seven. Thank you, Scott, for dropping the link in chat right here. Ah, we do have... We do have scores now, so we do have scores after five that I can share. So through five strings, Fontaine and Barnes, 718 and 717. Austin Barnes, of course, bolstered by the 203. Jeff Surrett, Nick Leach, and Nick Norcross behind 695, 655, and 642, dropping off sharply. Glenn, there's a nine pin back there as well, 139. Oh. 
three. Yes! Oh, it drove straight through. That was pretty. Not a given at all, but Glenn makes it happen. 67. Remember, bowlers choose their lane mates and their lanes as well. There was a proposal which Candleton Corner, I forget if it was Corey Alisi or Jordan Britton, mentioned it, and it was actually on Ripping the Rack, the other, another great podcast. Not the other, I can't resist the approach, mentioning the approach with Danny Finn and Jeremy Siegel, of course, but um, do should bowlers be able to pick their lanes or should lanes be randomized? And then there was another proposal, should partners be randomized as well, or in, as Candleton Corner might suggest, could the partners be chosen and the lanes randomized? So lots of ways to consider this, even though consider this tournament has successfully run in its current form since 1989 with very little change. Glenn nearly ran down the horseman, just got into the 3-6-10 instead. I also see a YouTube link on that Lita Lanes page. Is that my stream or someone else's? Ten box, 83 through 8. Love of the cross promotion. If it's another link, I'll have to let them know that we're doing another one in a second. Although that'll be uh, for the second half stream. Point being, folks, we'll have a separate stream for lanes uh, for strings 11 through 20. And we'll be sharing for you after the lunch break. Glenn got the head pin this time, did he ever? Again, the five pin with the crossover hit. Crossovers leave kings, I always say. And, well, usually. Statistics means never having to say you're sure, so. Statistical gospel? And the five pin gets away. Second time, unfortunately. Got it. Carbon copy of frame number five. It's 93 through nine. Great arcade here as well, including a uh, boxing machine if anyone wants to take out any frustration on the lanes. Bob, is that you right now, or how are you yeah. doing? Yeah, I'm, I, I hit. I've missed seven spares in a row. I don't want to talk about it. Um, we, have, we had 19 600s through the first five, officially. The, the fifth, um, the scores through five have officially crossed. So this is the, the first quarter scores. Like I said, Aaron Fontaine is in the lead with 718. Austin Barnes, 717. I, I, I read that as a 12. Jeff Surrett, 695 in third. Nick Leach, 655 in fourth. Nick Norcross, 642. Uh, in fifth, Josh Daly then 631 tied with Sean Baker at 631. Ryan Cox and Jimbo Ayat at 630. Matt Harnett at 628 in 10th place. Watch this ball. Oh, nice bid. Um, then, uh, so Harnett and Barber at 11th in 628, 626. Chris Bovera, 621. Charles Collins, 618. JB Gothier, 614, tied with Fuller at 614. We got Joey Lister in 16th at 613. And uh, John Winchell at uh, 603. I told you Tim Douglas got a 602. Travis Wallace in 19th place at 600. Those are our 600, 600s in the first five. Yep. The online post, I've noticed the online postings are going as well. So this being the. Yeah, we're still in the sixth string, so actually they've updated it pretty quickly here, all told. Uh, you seeing that? Yeah, you're seeing the, the scores officially? Yeah, it cuts off at column three, I see, but uh, new new score nor, new score sheet who dis after all. So, but yeah, it's it's exactly what you just said, okay. point being. But now we have a, well, in a maybe I won't, I won't give those updates necessarily then. Um, but well, we should share it with the viewers. They don't. As soon as they shouldn't have to log into a web page to see it, even though we'd love to provide okay, the information. Okay. Um, so lane 13 is down, and so people are moving straight. We can see Joey Lister over now. Um, they've, they've used the backup lane 36 for people that are supposed to be on lane 13. So they're going back and forth. Gotcha. So, um, so, so if, if you're on 13, you're on 36 instead. Yep, and then you go back to 14 on the other side. All right, but our ro yeah, you can't mess up the rotation for everyone else. You can't insertion sort this uh, right. nonsense. That wouldn't work. 
Not without ample protest, I suppose. String 7 of 20 will get underway in just a moment. We'll have Corey Merrill, Billy Elias, and David Elias. Uh, I don't know much about these three bowlers. I wonder if any of them will be willing to share their story or if anyone out there knows anything about them. I believe they're all newbies to the Easter Classic as well. Oh. And that's one of the joys of this tournament that Corey, chat was mentioning as well. Is Corey one of the main Merrills? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to invite them on, but I'm going to have to go move my balls and get back to the links. Sounds good, yeah. Great. So yeah, got the level down before he plunked the headset down. We'll clear the scoreboard and get ready to go. Just doing my thing, deleting this, deleting this. Actually, be right back. I'm going to mute the audio. Don't be surprised. I'll be uh, right back in just a moment. All right, we're back. Still, we, so there was a breakdown, so some lanes got slightly behind here. We'll update everything and uh, get this going again in just a moment. It's a string seven of 20. Coming on up. I was talking to the Elias brothers, Billy and David. They bowl out of Westport Lanes in Brockton. And this will be their first tournament. Yeah, I noticed that the I noticed that the columns are cut off on the score sheet here. Maybe by the lunch break they'll be able to figure that out. Can score sheets be posted landscape instead of portrait? so that we can see all the columns. They should know what I mean. Thank you, Scott, for the suggestion. Thank you very much, everyone, spending some of Easter with us. String 7 of 20 right now, so current leaders, it appears, are Aaron Fontaine and Austin Barnes. 700s. I thought Jeff Surrett had a good shout at this and is 695 through three after min cashing last year lopsidedly better and he might have a chance to make a deep run as well. Nick Leach and Nick Norcross, of course, high up after five. Josh Daly's dish to 138. What else is new? Finishing up on lanes 27 and 28, and then everyone's going to get the signal to move. This is Corey Merrill on here. Don't 
Don't get it twisted. Greg Gouillard, Candlepin Bowling Network, Facebook and YouTube. Lanes following John Winchell, Jeff Walsh, and Brian Fuller Jr. There's a fun trio. All Friday night Pro League bowlers. Massachusetts bowlers. No, Winchell's New Hampshire, excuse me. Walsh and Fuller are Massachusetts. And then stay tuned for Jeff Bugia. Irby Kafalis, that's John Kafalis, and Troy Fournier on lane 21. I'm sad I don't have more information on the Canadian bowlers, trying to go off of prior stats, of course, as well for the Easter Classic, but really would love to see more of a streaming presence from y'all. It's a tough thing, and you know, bowling center Wi-Fi is difficult, I know that much. And it ain't easy doing what we're doing, but if you manage it. I think it's a bit of both. You, you know well, you know we'll be watching here in, here in the States. Because there's a lot of talent north of the border. Of course, Calvin Locke shares it on Ripping the Rack podcast if I haven't plugged them enough times already. Here we go, all moving now. And we are here with Corey Merrill, Billy and David Elias. So again, if you missed it, Austin Barnes, 203 for the defending Friday Night Pro League champion with Team Academy 2. 203. And it was the third string, if I recall correctly. I love this. <laughs> Corey Merrill wearing an Academy Lane Haverhill sweatshirt gets it started. Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Now there's a fun house to bowl. I tell you, Northern Massachusetts, a great hotbed of candle pen. A lot of great houses up that way. And the DeBurros do such a great job managing that place. Gets a nine out. Nines are fine here. Pens could make the difference. After all, it is just one pin at the top between Fontaine and Barnes. Log on, I've posted the link to the standings in uh, Facebook and YouTube chat. There's a candle chat, sorry, you won't be able to see it quite, I don't think. Or actually, maybe you can. Maybe you can't. 247, a good shot for Merrill. Corey. God, it ran it down. Spare in the second. 44 lanes up there. I'll have to ask him what all those patches are about as well. Here's his head pin hit. Get over four, six, ten is all that's left. As would have out to the left side here. Let's see if he uses it. No, go direct at the pins. That's how you do it. See the pins, play the pins. Spare again. And for a man who's a mystery to me, he is off to a great start. Oh, I can. Corey is currently 603 through the six.
definitely a refined technique. I can see why he's triple digits there. He fills six here. Good action to his ball as well. You saw that sidewall action as well. One, eight, nine, ten. Nine, ten taken out with a plank. Even if you're not getting the head pin, get on those sticks. He's got an eight here. And a 51 through four. Into the seven pin on this first ball. I tell you, I could never, I'd say I could never bowl with long sleeves, but I rolled my first 100 wearing a dress shirt. So. Do clothes really make the man? They can to a certain extent. Nine out, nicely done. The half is 60. Two big spare fills and there you go, easy as that. Billy Elias now. Just gonna test this microphone, see if it works at all. No, I don't think the microphone worked terribly well. 258 out on the first ball. Into the hole, so third ball coming on up. So a release there. I think the ball got hung up in the hand there, unfortunately, for that three box. You know, this is one of the great things. As long as you can bowl properly and you can pay the entry fee, you know, you can bowl. It's as simple as that. And what, what other sports allow you the opportunity to bowl against the best of the best so readily? Of course, many leagues, of course, you might have one or two pro bowlers. And that's a thrill in and of itself. So you haven't had the chance to go league bowling, of course. Those handicap leagues can give you that experience. Those red and white balls Billy is dealing reminds me of my own set. And I actually got it here from Matt Susi. At Lita Lanes, they had like a stockpile of bowling balls to give away there as Elias pins out nicely for nine. And they were just giving them away. And it was a lovely discount they ran here. Just another example of Lita Lanes taking care of the uh, bowlers. Matt Susi, of course, bowler of the Friday Night Pro League. And a boy here at Lita Lanes. Very good one, too. By the way, Ryan, Ryan, Noah says hi. <laughs> Ryan just gave me the biggest look, Noah. You're welcome, though. Four horsemen and a seven bin for Billy. Bob Lee is here. Bob. Right, they just po they just hung this up um, about 30 seconds ago. Austin Barnes is our leader, 875 through six. That uh, if you're, it's 275 over through six straight. Aaron Fontaine second. 842, that's a 33 pin difference. So good, good for Austin Barnes. Um, looks like you threw a 156. No, 158 in, in the sixth. Take that lead. Nick Leach in third place at 805. Jeff Surrett in fourth, 796. He hung on just barely with a 101. Josh Daly in fifth, threw a 138 for a 769. Jimbo Ayat, Nick Norcross, Ryan Cox, Sean Baker, and Tim Douglas enters the top 10. Douglas uh, having just thrown a 141, now is at 743. 
The other highlights among the leaders, Daly's 138, Ayat had a 131. He's at 761 right now. Rounding out the top 20, if you got a minute, is that okay, with Greg? Say again? You want me to do the top 20? Uh, go for it. All right, so 11th, Dave Barber, 743. Uh, Joey Lister at 12th, 740. Jerry Dunn for Canada at uh, 739. Chris Bovert, 14th, 739. Jeff Walsh, the bulldozer, 723. Charles Collins at his 16th. Matt Parnett, who we saw a little earlier, 720. Travis Wallace, J.B. Gothier, and uh, Brian Fuller Jr. That rounds out the top 20. And uh, that's my update. Billy with a good hit there. Fortunately, spread eagle minus the 10. We've seen this two and three combination go before. Right down the center. Up. Oh. Sorry about that. That's that's how it should be. And there we are, 31 at the half. I had the preview monitor here. Usually I'm better about that. At least I don't have it in the way of the pins this time, but there we go. David Elias now. Two brothers who simply wanted the thrill of Easter Classic. They bowl out of West Port Lanes and Brockton, by the way. I believe I mentioned that. Lane delivery there into the seven pin. Let's see here. It's a multi step delivery. I see. It's a four step delivery and right hand, right foot. So count another uh, same footed bowler, in fact. I mentioned there's a few in the field. Ashley Breton, Andrew Terrian, Ryan Hogan. It's away, unfortunately. This is Candlebin Bowling Network, Facebook, and YouTube. Live from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Best of the best. Taking part in this tournament. Tim Douglas, last year's defending champion with a 25 of four, which was technically the second lowest, but do consider that there was, the uh, the pins were new as of Easter in 2021, or 2022 rather. So that probably had a chilling effect on the scores. That's a head pin hit there, three, five, seven, nine. Chance here with the third ball. Goodness gracious, Glenn Pinson just massacred those pins on 25. That was fantastic. So last year we had a thrilling conclusion right here. Tim Douglas, Calvin Locke, and Josh Daly at the end. I mean, Josh Daly was a bit more distant there, but he was the one in with a chance there. And then how close it was down to the last frame. We simul broadcast that here on CBN. And four horsemen in a 10 for David Elias. That was a thrilling conclusion right down to the last box. This is why we watch every frame. You just never know which pin is going to be the winner. That's outside on the head pin. Oh, brutal outcome out of that. So this one is still working. Curl around the four. I guess then on the head pin, but got on the object. Eight box there. You know, sometimes I have that same struggle of dropping the ball at the line. I remember it was at Norwood Sports Center, and I was bowling, I think, arguably my first time open bowling when I took Candlepin seriously and not say at a birthday party, even though I love active bowling drum for hosting uh, Cosmic Bowling when I was in fourth grade or so. And 
when I was in Norwood, though, I remember dropping the ball. It was just like, hey, get it out there a little more. And uh, yeah, it worked. I went from a 50 to a 60 that day. <laughs> Tell you what. But the point being, it's a it's a tip that I've heard Deck Klein, uh, he actually gave me the advice very kindly. It was just like, you know, really pick a spot out there on the lane and really deliver it far out. Now, of course, Justin Waters, who we heard from earlier in the broadcast, really takes it a step further. Good sticks there, one more to get. He really takes it one step further and actually picks a spot of the bowl. Most bowlers will pick pins, of course. But really delivering that ball further out will yield a better result overall. Because then, although the idea is not to lob the ball, of course, and it is really more delivering the ball towards the pins instead of just driving it into the ground where who knows what direction it's going to go at that point. Easier said than done, though. Otherwise, I'd be a millionaire. There are rumors of Norwood Sports Center shutting down. I have not heard anything definitively right here, though. Obviously, it's on prime real estate, and I can understand any decisions to possibly sell the place, but that would be a sad one. You know, it was really a old-school classic, obviously a dungeon of a house. You earn your pins wherever you get them. So John Cafalos, who we'll see soon, posted a video on his Irby 4 YouTube channel where he does a pretty good job with those pins nonetheless. Third ball coming up. Nope, sorry, excuse me, that was that. Brings up Corey Merrill, who I do mean to speak to at some point if I could get the chance. Working a 60 half here. You, you all value who the sweatshirt, but there's power in that. I mean, look at all the accolades on there as well. I'm going to have to ask him about that. Work a triple digit pace. The fill is, well, the drop is high. There's that 10 pin with Wood, of course. Ah, I angled it too far to the left, unfortunately. The Wood actually rolled away on him, unfortunately. I don't think it would have made a material difference to the shot, but possibly took it too quick there. It's nine. Ah, Kate, good to see you in chat. Four out on that one. Two, five, eight, and ten out. Jester goes favorite again. It's pretty when it goes. Corey Merrill has the ball for it, I think. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. I thought he was actually going to take it on the one, three, but... I tell you, it's such a joy seeing those pins clatter as one, and that's his third mark as you see. Had a few of those four, had a few of those punch outs, but as soon as he gets dialed on the head pin, you see the marks do follow. Kids are going to be all right, that's for sure. Two pin. Get over 10. Thank you. Fill a six, one, three, seven, eight. This is going to be a tough one. Updating a scoreboard, of course, that's correct. 85, uh, 85 and a ball through seven. Very business-like demeanor about him as well. Very no nonsense, get the ball down. Get it going. I like this guy. Cuts the one three away, so that's how difficult that shot is. It's hard to really cut. I mean, what are you gonna do? Cut the one and the seven and the three into the eight? Get out of here. Eight box, 93 through eight. Right. 
So this ball escapes from him, but look at the power on that ball. He's actually got the center diamond, interestingly. One, two, three, and five. Dial it in this time. They'll need it on the third ball. Rob Brown, Laura Dorfler, and Jay Paul up next on our featured lane, lane 24. Corey spills two more. <laughs> you know, that five almost took the three the way it rode up like that. Another eight. Want to be careful now. He wants to get a 10 box somewhere along the line here. You don't want a three mark 99, of course. No way, that's not good. What am I talking about? I don't want to already for nine. Not used to my own score sheet. 20 bonus pin, that's never going to happen in a million years. Got to pin this out, though. To guarantee himself a 110. All right, 610 toppled as well, because the two pin just shot through the gap of the 39. That's candle pin for you. How's it going? A uh, person in candle pin chat, I, I can't see your name because of my system limitations. I apologize. You might have to sign your name so I know. So there's the eight. So there you go, 109, but still three marks. That's a good string working. I'll talk to Corey between strings, maybe. Billy and David Elias. Billy up first. It's Ryan Hogan on the right side there with that massive nine drop. He's into triple digits already. Taking a peek around. I see Chris Merrill. 135. Oh, two pins spilled backwards. What a hit for Billy. Five pin stands in his best chance of the string. Cole Fry is a 73 half. Josh Daly is a 68 half. Actually, there's a spare. Nice shot. Billy's on 41 on the ball of the half, uh, through six, excuse me. Is that 160 for Cole Fry? Mercy. 160, folks. Jeff Walsh's 124 is not too shabby. Bill is zero, unfortunately. So four more strings here, and then we will be breaking for lunch here in just a moment. We just had a 203 earlier from Austin Barnes which will go down as the second highest Easter Classic score of all time. There we go, finally got that score updated. Did it correctly this time, seven box, 48 through seven. We now see it correct. I got Corey's scores correct this time. Got it, got rid of Corey's scores this time. So the interesting thing to me is that Tom Olsa has only won this tournament one time. I'm trying to see if I remember a post out there I had where if I could find a post for y'all. I'm trying to scavenge data as quickly as I can. Good sticks on the end there for Billy. That's eight. Hey, I'm 
Diamond Maritime Candlepick. Yes, I got admission. <laughs> I don't know if any movers and shakers out there got that to happen, but thank you very much. That's the Maritime Candlepin Facebook group. Also, Nova Scotia Candlepin. I know the uh, Poens post frequently in that unbelievable lane to Muscadabit Harbor. I live for those Comic Sans uh, score sheets we see there. Ah, I found it. I'll share it with you in just a second. So, if you gave first place an imaginary three points, second place an imaginary two points, and third place an imaginary one point, like gold, silver, and bronze medal points, let's say, uh, here's how that would shake out. Jeff Surrett would have 19 he would, for five first place, two second places and never in third. Uh, Chris Sargent would have the next most, having finished first four times and second three times. Gary Carrington is the only bowler who has finished in the top three eight times. Three times first, one in second, and four in third. Craig Holbrook with seven top three finishes, uh, including three championships, comes next. And then comes Sean Baker, uh, two times first, second, and third. Tough break for Billy Elias here. He's got the 6, 7, 10. Send it off the wall, not quite. Put that in the correct spot, Gregory. And then Tom Olsta had one first place finish, three second place finishes, two thirds. His grandson, Aaron Fontaine, yes, you heard that correctly. That's a great 10 box there. Billy's happy about that. And I don't blame him, those sticks matter. David Elias is up next. Four bowlers, had, four other bowlers had, uh, you know, three bowlers had four top three finishes. Jonathan Boudreau, Kevin Davis, and Mike Poole, and all of which have had it one victory. And then there's the bowlers that have had multiple top three finishes, three top three finishes. Jeff Atkins, who has the highest 20 of all time, north of 2,800. Chris Bovair, Peter Flynn, Mark Gregory, and John Zappi. Oh no. So this is an intentional gutter clearance here. Unfortunately, the pinch being a bit of a bother. Um, Yeah, we'll just get the pin center to work on that one. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when a pin just doesn't cooperate, you get the bulldozer out and just sweep it through. Chris Hallett, I believe, was the last Canadian champion. Four horseman right side. And Calvin Locke darn near came close. Matt Harnett came second in 2019. Glenn pinson has got a way to go, but he just massacred the pins at 25 again. I said that word already, demolished. That's it. Eight down, two to go. And a nine, nicely pinned out. Has anyone, hmm. That's a tricky challenge. Has anyone come second or third multiple times in a row? I don't think so. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure, to be honest. I'll have to look into that. I think there's a way I can. Box seven coming up. Not Craig Holbrook, no. Obviously, there's been multiple people who've had a chain of coming in first multiple times in a row. Sorrett and Sargent come quickly to mind.
And then... I know I'm spending a lot of time on this question, but I'm very curious now. Using the spreadsheet Dave Barber helpfully gave me. So... First ever Easter. I don't. He had a lot of third place finishes. Were any of them consecutive? I wonder. There's an interesting progression where he actually. Uh, goes from second to third to fourth to fourth in a span of four years. That was between 1991 and 1994. Well, the 13th and then one in 95 and 96. There we go, 10 box for David. Nicely pinned out. So I don't I don't think there's anyone who's been that. There has been a one pin margin of victory. Trying to remember when that was. I forget if it was Craig Holbrook getting involved in that. Hmm. Oh, hang on. I know how to look at this. It was a one-pin margin of victory. That's it, yeah. And Craig Holbrook was involved. He actually got the better of it. That was with Joe Ashline. Uh, yeah, Craig Holbrook at 27-37 and Joe Ashline at 27-36 in that one. Any first timers won? Tim Douglas last year. <laughs> Gary Santora, what an interesting shout. Santora, of course, a great duck pin bowler like John Blazes, who's in the field. Santora's never, uh, Santora finished 10th, always respectable, 25-39. Nothing above that, though. That was in 2002, in fact. Actually, Gary is Gary won a duck pin tournament somewhat recently, I believe. You'd have to check it out on uh, duck pins forever, I believe. Duck pins number four ever. They usually have most of the streams there. There we are, Corey Merrill with that 109. Fantastic going there. Sweatshirt or otherwise. Oh, he's actually taking it off. Oh, development. Sweatshirts come off, people. I think might have a... Anyway, I'll be right back. Oh, and sorry. Uh, we'll be right back uh, with more. It'll be string number eight in just a moment.
All right, we should be back here. Hello. String eight of 20 in just a moment. I was chatting with Corey Smith a moment ago. No, I didn't ask the sweatshirt question, gosh, but I asked him about, um, you know, no, I actually did ask him about the sweatshirt. I asked him what were the patches on it, and he comes out of the Academy Lanes youth program quite simply, and I think he's done it very well right here. You recall he shot a 109 on our stream just a moment ago now, putting a state championship, a uh, youth state championship, presumably he won in 2022. Uh, Patches were honor scores and double strike, of course. You know, great incentives out of the youth program. You know, um, you love rewarding those big scores. And um, the sweatshirt itself, I mean, it was stitched together by both his sister and his grandma, apparently, both like doing that as well. So that's how he's got so many uh, on his shirt. That's really nice. Falls about twice a week these days at Academy Lane Haverhill, and he's done that house proud, I'd say. We'll let the scoreboard away. String 8 of 20 in just a moment. Rob Brown, Laura Dorfler, and Jay Paul coming up next. Technical fussing about. So remember, folks, the scores are up updated online. We're featuring lane 24, but consider lanes 2, well, it would have been lanes 2 through 35, but for one breakdown, so now... Two through 36 in a way. Ah. So we now have the update through six strings right now, having just finished seven, of course. But yeah. Uh, looks like it's sorted in alphabetical order, but hang on. We're going to figure this out. Aaron Fontaine is 842. And then who else did we have? We had Jeff Serret at 796. Yeah, Nick Leach at 805. Austin Barnes, of course, dished that 203, but he had 875. Oh, oh, there it is. The position numbers are there. They just sorted alphabetically. So Austin Barnes is first with 875. Aaron Fontaine with second place, 842. So third place goes to Nick Leach with 805. Fourth place is Jeff Surratt with 796. Who's fifth, please? It's Josh Daly with six, 769. Jimbo Ayad, 761. That's just through six strings still. And uh, I'm going to run out of time to say the rest of these, though. Nick Norcross, Ryan Cox, Sean Baker, and Tim Douglas are defending champion, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I, fig I figured out the formula. I've got the Da Vinci Code sussed. Easter Classic, race Easter Classic here in Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, there we go. Streams working. And Rob Brown will be up first. That's a familiar name, Rob Brown. I'm trying to remember from where. He's done this tournament before, that's for certain. And there we go. So yeah, that's right. So yes, yeah, Rob Brown out of ACST Class B, of course. Atlanta Candlepin Singles Tour, the traveling singles tour we have. He starts off with the four horsemen left side. Danny Finn, like so many things, runs a fantastic league there. A league formerly put together by Frank DeLuca and Mike Machichi. And really one of the first major sports leagues, uh, major Candlepin leagues to be straight as you would a sport. A nine to begin. Home house in the ACST is Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Mark Ritchie, fantastic owner of that eight lane house formerly known as Lafayette Lanes. Mark Ritchie, of course, a very accomplished bowler in his own right, including high triple. 
world record. Just the head pin. And still just the head pin, unfortunately. So the ACST is a 18 week season. Sort of like NFL divisions, essentially, where uh, bowlers have their own home house and then travel to others. They have four in their four divisions are four and four or four four like the NFL again. But what's fun about it is that the division winners all advance, so you get four division winners there. But then you also have four wild cards where the top four of the remaining records, even an entire division in theory, might also advance as well. Spread eagle, unfortunately. And it's great to see all the individual bowlers. It also provides us a plethora of bowling contents, goodness knows. Rob Brown currently has a 103.7 average. Of course, consider the house. Riverwalk's one of the tougher ones. John Alosa likely top of his division. And eight. Current top record, J.J. Tarigny, who I met here at Easter Classic the first time around. That was a really fun lane to cover in that 2022. 1389. Jim Hunter is top of Class B South Southern Conference. Talking with Justin Waters, of course, as well. He's 134 and 34 in that, based on the match point system that they use. That's 10. Nicely pinned out for Brown again. Justin Waters, Josh Daly, Billy Shiner, and Ed Woodside are the division winners. I think I saw Ed Woodside in the field today, so. I don't believe Rock has bowled this one, Ed Woodside. But we might just see him now. Apologies, said that's mistaken, excuse me. Oh no, that no, that's very no, that's very wrong. It, oh, the last time was in 2018 on my defense. Uh, 2014, 2015, and 2018. We're re-racking the 7-pin didn't come set on that lane. I've happened across a, the name Elbow Doherty. I have no idea who that might be. Boldest in 1998, 1999, and 2002. Tough out here for Rob. Got the heavy. Oh, a tough one. Accurate on the third ball. But unfortunately, with nothing behind the headpin to support it, that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. Well, Dorfler's been on our featured lanes before. It was back in 2022. And uh, it was Dean Sullivan and one other, I can't remember, on that same lane. out three there. So these bowlers, I believe, without exception, have all done this before. Yep, so this is Laura's third straight Easter Classic together. What a great bid that is, and that's a spare. Nicely done. There you see the lively sidewalls doing their thing. Have to be accurate. We've seen it before. We've seen how brutal these pins can be. If you're not totally dialed in. Dorfler finds a way. Yeah, that's right. She was featured in. I even remember it was after the lunch break. She was featured in String Eleven. That was when we were on Lane Twenty the first time we did this. I just think I remember Bob Lee having to 
fetch me a replacement camera because mine didn't technically work, unfortunately. Punch down to the half Worcester. Charlie Collins hit a 164. I saw Cole Fry's 164. Thank you very much. That's a tough break here. I mean, it's about as good as a ball as you want to put on that punch out, and unfortunately, it just didn't drive through the back row. So now look, Dorfler's scrambling for pins. And that's very good, honestly. That's a great nine to work out of that. Bob Lee with the latest. Well, uh, Austin Barton's holding on to his lead. His, his average has dropped from 145 all the way down to 143. Oh, no. Um, but he is very much our leader. I, I, I took this one on my iPhone. I got to blow it up a little bit. But uh, his, his score is at scratch. He just cracked 1,000. He's the first one over 1,000, 1,007 through seven. Second place, Aaron Fontaine, 954. Jeff Sorette, at a, I was just talking to John Blaze. He said, can you believe that the guy, that Sorette, bowling at a winning pace, is uh, is trailing by basically 83 pins? I can and I can't at the same time. So he's averaging 132 and trailing by 83 pins. 924 through seven. Josh Daly uh, is number four at 921, just behind Sorette now. He, threw, he just threw a 152. In the seventh, Nick Leach uh, dropped down with a 113. He's at 918. Sean Baker holding on to sixth, 895. Nick Norcross in the in the running, 889. Charles Collins in eighth place, 880. Joey Lister, Ryan Cox rounding out the top ten. Jerry Dunn, Cole Fry, Jimbo Ayat. Last year's champion Tim Douglas drops down to 14. He threw a 111. Chris Bovere. In 15th, Dave Barber, Jeff Walsh, Travis Wallace, Kevin Davis, a former winner. Mm -hmm. um, 2019. He just threw a 144, got himself cracked the top 20. And uh, Travis Sandman, um, who, I, who I just uh, met, threw a 136. He rounds out the top 20. I'm going to go back. I, I just made the change over to lane two, and all the bowlers will tell you it is significantly slanted. <laughs> <laughs> the approach is, at least. It, it, Balls are going way right. <laughs> uh, late two, you said. The balls go to the right because your body, your, the whole, the whole slope is tilted to the right. Ah, there you go. Yeah, it's tough. It's a tough transition. Anyway, good luck. That's what we do here. Well, early lane choice. We mentioned bowlers do get lane choice, so they can pick their conditions. Although, of course, you still have to cycle through 20 lanes and a large run of the house as well. A lot of Dorfler rebounded very well with balls two and three. I see you, David Elias, making that 5 7 10 for the 10 box. Very good. That just seemed dialed in. Good to see you, Denise and Chad. Corey did very well on our featured lane just a moment ago with that 109. Spread Eagle. Yikes. Yeah, I'm trying to overhear Laura, and I think she said, like, well, yeah, hit the head pin, hit the head pin. Look, I finally got the head pin. That's, what, that's the thanks I get. <laughs> Brutal. That's two accurate shots, unfortunately. Nothing to show for it. Chatting with John Winchell alongside, I believe that's two New Hampshire bowlers, if I'm not mistaken. Certainly explains why she could take the trip to Nashua often enough. And that's a third accurate shot. Okay, gets an eight box. Finally, some respectable pin action. So that's a hard 147 half, all told. But hey, that's quintessential candle pin, you know? If the marks aren't coming, you gotta hang in there and. You can build on a 47 half. Jesus. She was on 753 through 7 coming into this. J. 
Jay Paul is at 688 through the first seven. Look at that massive delivery. Totally arms it in there. Curses, the radar gun's busted. And I know it's a cubic of score, but they don't have the radar guns in house. Too bad. Maybe another time. Then I drop it, that's never gonna work. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. Did I use a second battery, actually? Yeah, I thought I was missing something, thank you. Look at that! Mercy! Jay Paul destroying the pins on 24. Well, I might need to change the batteries on my radar gun, but he sure doesn't the way he's hucking that ball. Hopefully you've got enough in the tank for all 20 strings, but there are some bowlers who say, no, 20 is really not that. It doesn't really physically hurt or anything. It's just the, it's just the consistency is the difficult part. Eight on the first ball. Nice leave here. Knock it in, just didn't get the arm to go all the way across. Timing is everything in game open bowling. That's the tricky thing. It's the late great Dan Murphy, out of formerly out of Batwell's, or former owner of Batwell's Bowling Center in Concord, New Hampshire, would say. Nine fill, nine box. Just where is that arm swing going to be as you deliver the ball? That's the main thing. I mentioned the importance of getting the ball out further on the lane, to deliver better results. This does skip off the foul line. So maybe took some action off the ball. Nothing exact and scientific, and certainly no dogmatic opinions about it. And it is unlucky that he left 2-4-6, because it seemed like good pin action overall. Jay Paul has done this tournament two times before. Had a 21-74 in 2019. Rob Brown, of course, had a 21-86 in 2021. Also 2118 in 2023. This is his eighth Easter Classic. Chance of the split. Needed to hit the two pin on that one. And then as for, and then, no, we went over to Laura Dorfer at that 20-35 in 2022. Oh, what a slice that was. The score at nine. Yep, they've noticed the glitch in the matrix there. They'll get that fixed on the scoreboard. 41 through 4. Great to have you all here. This is Candleton Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube live at the Lita Lanes Easter Classic from Nashua, New Hampshire. We're tracking scores all through the field. It is available online as well. We've been circulating the link. Let's circulate it one more time. What the heck? Uh, boink. And that is now pushed to YouTube, and that is now pushed to Facebook. You see it there. You can follow along with the standings there, or just watch along, and we'll keep you apprised. Currently, we show that Austin Barnes is leading with an 875, and Aaron Fontaine with an 842 at this moment in time. There's a 10 box, left, right, and center. I believe that was a half whistler. I'm sorry. I had my back turned trying to 
get the statistics there. But that's well, that's a good recovery there. Started with that four and then nothing but good results from there. Out of the top. And that brings up Rob Brown. We'll wait for him and we will pull up some scores here. So remember the highest 20 strings of all time came from Jeff Atkins. He's a two time champion in this event, of course. 28 12. And then 26-13 in 1995, two years before his 1997 juggernaut victory. Nobody has come particularly close, honestly. Here's Brown. Punches out three to start. goes to his towel as he lets that one get away. That possibly implies a ball grip issue. That looks better out of the hand. Just missed, unfortunately. So a seven box. Ball, toweling down a bowling ball does not happen as often here, but on occasion, grip either moisture in the hand and on occasion residue from the pin setters, though it's not a really commonplace issue here at Lita can sometimes occur. So on occasion, to get a better grip, the towel can help from time to time. Some have some unique traditions with the towel, of course. John Cavallis has the towel in his, by his side, in effect. Just as he goes down the lane, just tucks it into his uh, left side, uh, left side of his waistband, in fact. And of course, Nick Zaffalato who sets his towel at the back of the approach so he knows exactly where to stand. At least I presume it is a foot placement issue. I'll have to ask him about that sometime. Wipes out, ooh, look at the action Rob gets on that one. Brown is the one too. Got it, first mark. And you can see the body language. You can see his tempo quicken up. He's eager to get back out there and deliver another great ball. There it is. He hangs up in the hand a little bit. Phil is four. On the line this time trying to really identify the relief point of his delivery. Because you see, it really crosses behind his back is the interesting thing. So if you get the timing wrong, it can go either this way or that. But if you get it exactly, the torque generated by that arm swing can really do some damage. Class B and ACST for a reason. Again, the Atlantic Candleman Singles Tour which has its own page on Facebook and on YouTube. Facebook primarily for the live streams, but. Still, follow both pages, because it is a trove of content. Tough break there. Got the diamond, but a diamond and a seven. The hay bale, the cluster of five. Paul to, to calling it the Canadian bucket at one point, but I don't think that's quite really a commonplace term. Laura Dorfler up next. And referring to that pack of five, that diamond plus a corner pin. He thought it, it was a term he heard while we were up there in Canada for the Worlds, but I don't think it necessarily is commonplace up there, per se. Maybe someone can set me straight. Good. Jeff 
Walsh at a 120. If uh, you, someone was curious about that. 610 for Dorfler. Six and ten, Gregory. Ten out. Such a tough game, Candlepin Bowling, but one we love. I mean, it's so devilishly inviting. I mean, sure, anyone can roll the small ball just about, but it's the small pins at the other end that'll get you, drive you crazy if you're not careful. People think, oh, it's easy. You, know, you got you got, you got three balls? Oh, you get to play the pins where they lie? Oh, this game's easy. I prefer regular bowling. You know, like, come try it then. <laughs> there are some PBA bowlers who tried it. Jason Belmonte was one of them. He went to Westport in Maine and had a, well, he enjoyed his time. I'll say that much. You can't really throw with two hands. What am I supposed to do? One, two, six, ten. That Australian accent was shocking, but I think Greg P has gone to sleep, so I think I've gotten away with it. been 29 scores in all that have been north of 2,500, and only seven that have been north of 2,700. And then, of course, Jeff Atkins all by himself with that one 2,800. Yeah, I remember one time I was at a Needham Bowl away. Now there's a hidden gem in uh, downtown Needham, Massachusetts. And tough split for Dorfler, three and three split. And she looks at the two, four, six, seven, nine, ten. I remember going away after I bowled an inexplicable marathon of bowling. It wasn't 20 strings like this, but it was certainly close to it. <laughs> and I remember one of the kids like looks at it and not realizing what sort of bowling he was about to play. It's just like, well, how are you supposed to get the pins down with this? <laughs> Looking at everything, and it's just like, I was about to quip, well, with great difficulty, that's how. Tough box there. I mean, sometimes the head pin hits create the toughest leaves out of that. Annual resets here. Sure, the scoring is new, the new Cubica scorers, but you can disable the automatic reset to centers who have them. And I mean, it's good for uh, open bowling. Sorry, I got distracted by David Elias' Super Bowl in lane 25. But having a manual reset really is in the spirit of Candlepin because there's not supposed to be a time limit. There's not supposed to be a pin set or racing you down. You can actually, uh, you're supposed to be able to hit the button when you feel like it because you never know when the wood's gonna roll and take it out or something like that. Duck pin, it's even more prominent. Those pins can break dance on the pin plate for an eternity and you could have a strike out of it. Slower otherwise. Ooh, the head pin went just to the way from the nine. I thought she had a chance here. Good to see a Winifred in chat. The Woods are ridiculous anyway, so we'll score that nine. Coming up next, Jeff Walsh, John Winchell, and Brian Fuller Jr. Big applause there. Josh Daly is pumped up. I'll have to peek on that score sheet in just a second. I think Daly's had another good one. Is that 147? He's got the snooker score, 147. One, three, and seven for Dorfler. You 
can't find the standings, leadalanes.com slash Easter 2000 slash Easter dash 2024, excuse me. Leadalanes.com slash Easter dash 2024. Lita, like you see it spelled in the description. But a great Lita Simino, mother of the owner, Ray Simino. The late, great Ray Simino. He thought there would never come a day when Easter Classic would be sold out. That day is today. 102 bowlers, the absolute maximum. Well, then the score one too soon. Let's give 10 on that one and said that seems better. Just one of those strings you'd rather forget, but enough going there. On to Jay Paul. He's working a decent half. Found the range partway through and delivered a crushing blow on lane 24. Strain my eyes to see any other scores here. Josh Daly's definitely in triple, uh, quadruple digits, I need to say it. Everyone's in triple digits by now. Anybody could be in triple digits by now. 1 5 10. What a strange way that fell. And in fact, the five's even slightly off spot, just a little to the left. Third ball coming up. Look at that whirly dervish back there. Turn your clip the head pin from behind. The box is nine. And thankfully the wood doesn't ride up. Joint 15th with Jeff Surrett last year. We'll see him soon. Four horsemen, the five and the eight. There's a right side out in effect. Ooh. Huh. Oh, that is going to fall. Get over two. Go on. Go on. <laughs> I thought Paul was going to get that one for a second. J. Paul does collect 10 out of it. That foul line is taking a beating. It is my YouTube stream. Great. Yes, a five pin goes. Jay Paul has another one. Five pin last to fall this time. A second hammer. Bob Lee's hopping on the headset. He's been roaming around for scores, and here's the latest. Hey, Jay, Jay Paul in front of us. Nice. Uh, former uh, Major League Baseball player. All in one. Uh, Tim Douglas threw a double strike and was at 75 for the half. He's, he was, uh, I think, 14th heading into this eighth. Just Aaron, checking my own levels, sorry. Aaron, there we go. Aaron Fontaine at uh, 28 over through 7, so 98 through 7. Nick Norcross just threw a 140. Jimbo Ayotte, 123 among our leaders. Austin Barnes, our leader, 73 at the half. And just a second ago, I looked, oh. he started with a double strike, um, but was open for a little while, then threw a strike in the seventh. He was at 92 through 7, I think, working on two balls. Um, Jeff Surrett on our right through a 132, and Josh Daly with a big number, 167. 167. So he has himself up to 1088. Remember, uh, our first man to, to 1,000 was uh, was Austin Barnes. It, it through seven, he was at 1,007. So Barnes is going to be. He's, he was already at 92. He's, he's, already, he's, he's cracking 1,100 just now, right behind us. 
fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bob. Two strengths until lunch. Uh, how's the feeling out there? I know I'm getting a little winded. But. I, well, I, I uh, didn't really adjust to the... I, I took I took my phone out and checked the measurement on lane two, and yes, there is a one-degree slope <laughs> from left to right, and my balls were going left to right, and my body was going left to right, and I, I adjusted by around the seventh or eighth. I finally made a mark and, and threw a 95. Yeah, Tough, was, tough on you point. especially, I'm sure. I, I threw four, four nice balls in a row into the... Three pins. Ooh. But that's what's happening to a lot of guys as they make this change. You come over, you finish at 35, everything's kind of normal. You know, the balls move, balls, if thing move, anything moving right, right to left. And then all of a sudden, a significant left to right break, um, especially if, you're, if your footing matters to your delivery. Sure. Um, yeah. Which it Jay, does for many of us. Jay Paul just got hosed by a plank there, but he ends up yeah. with a 103 nonetheless. And. Coming up next, one of the guys who cashed last year, Brian Fuller Jr. Oh, yeah. Uh, I apologize. I think I've mangled the batteries in your radar gun. I dropped it. And <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. It, it, it Corey needs, Merrill it, it had to come by. It, it, it needs a pair of C batteries here. Yeah, well, you had them in backwards. That's, that's odd. Bad start. <laughs> they're, they're hot. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, was, it, was, it, was it about to explode or something? No, they're just warm. <laughs> they're not lithium batteries or anything. It's just a... There's okay, C good. batteries. They're, they're like the, the, it's the last appliance I have to use is C batteries. Yeah, you get the little number there. Yeah. Glad we can take it. Let's see if I can get it to turn on. Huh? There it is. Hey, you might, might be able to get a measurement. Oh, we missed Jay Paul. Uh, no, it, 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 it's okay. I'll, I'll, go, I'll, try to, I'll try to get someone to buy us some C batteries. Any, yeah. Anyone in the na neighborhood bring a couple right. C batteries. Are there any hardware stores open on Easter? I'm glad I... Um, the 7-Eleven will have them. <laughs> there we go. That's down, true. Down at the uh, corner. Yeah. Anyway, I gotta I gotta go move move from two to three. There we go. And uh, we finished eight of twenty. And uh, nice string of coming up on up. Balls. Bye for now. I got it. Some scoreboard updating or scoreboard deletion to do. Rather, we'll get right into it. Hope you're all enjoying it. Debuted some new graphics today. Hopefully. Good use for single string events, of course. Candle pin score sheets in America are usually vertical. Good to see fans, including Ralph from Moncton. Good to see you in chat. We are watching how you hear. Fantastic crowd. I mean, this is 20 strings of bowling. That's a lot, and it's on an Easter Sunday, and yet you're all still here. This is incredible, and we and the bowlers all thank you very much for spending some of your Easter Sunday with us. I know I say that every Easter, but I really mean it every Easter. Greg Gouillard, Candlepin Bowling Network. That was the voice of Bob Lee, our executive producer, earlier. And I need to update. That's right. That's what I need to update. Ninth of 20. And that's Jeff Walsh. Wearing a Team USA shirt, so is Jeff Bougia to his immediate left. He takes aim. He's got the 1-2. And 10. I thought he had the 7. Now he doesn't. Walsh, Winchell, and Fuller on these lanes. Oh, man. One pin rang around the 10 pin. Incredible the force he gets. I remember Walsh had a fairly recent Pro Series victory. <laughs> nah, bowlers always have good integrity. They'll call that off. That went out of the channel, so we score that nine. Team USA, the world's team. There's a logo of an Iron Workers Union on the back of it. And Jeff Bugia, former Channel 50 star in Stars of Strikes. We'll see him in a moment. Wearing a same but different colored shirt. One, two, four. There we 
go. There's 10. Jeff Walsh, Walsh, of course, out of Academy Lanes for the Friday Night Pro League bowling on Justin Scally's team. And recently married. A wedding that many of his teammates on the Friday Night team attended as well. Diamond, left side. These shots only go about one and four times. Anyone who's played this game knows how dastardly the diamonds can be. Yikes. And that's why. Twice accurate, but punched straight through it. Well, picking uh, object pins every step of the way. That's thrice, thrice accurate on the object. Justin Scally captains that academy team one I mentioned. Matt Susie, Corey Lisi, Josh Riapel, Jeff Walsh, and Brian Fuller Jr. also on that team. Walsh and Bogia side by side used to be teammates, I believe. They're the same Riverwalk Lanes team if memory serves. That's two. Always gets a lot of eyeballs. Everyone loves that matchup. No, it's not two this time, Jeff. One, five, six, seven, ten. This team, Academy One, is currently on the playoff bubble, but we've seen them a lot on our featured coverage on Candlepit Bowling Network. They're a scrappy bunch. And they find ways to win however they can, and that's why they're on the right side of the playoff bubble at the moment. The box is eight. One of the and one of the many reasons why we think, oh, Josh Daly might have a chance this year at Easter, you know, he's got the highest average of the Friday Night Pro League and by a lot as well, 127.4 on the road. Next closest is Peter Crawford, 124 or 125 in effect. But also Jeff Surrett, 124, and it's probably no accident that his recent success is parlaying into success here in the Easter Classic, even though he's got stiff competition. If Jeff Serrett is going to win a sixth time in this historic Lita Lanes tournament. 2-4, just off. It didn't break over as much as Walsh's ball usually does. There's usually more of a cross lane bite to it. Just didn't get it all the way over. Just a millisecond of timing can throw the whole thing off. It's a vicious physics equation. Overthrown this time, but hey, that's a stick at least. Score at nine and a 45 he probably deserved a bit better on, especially the diamond left leaf. That was a dastardly one. John Winchell, and we have seen him on Lita Lanes programming quite recently, in fact, he, for the Exeter Lanes bowler. Exeter bowling lanes, fantastic lanes shooter sports club with Rob Ficara Sr. John Winchell has been on the all-new Candlepin Skins on Candlepin Corner, simply titled Skins. Maybe if I put his name in, things would work better, wouldn't it? His shot leaves the five and the 10, the nickel and dime. Oh, he really wanted to cut that over to the left side and try and get that. I mean, John's always been such a great representative of extra lanes on whatever shows he's been on, including Stars and Strikes here at Lita Lanes, the early 2000s Channel 50 show. He scores a nine. Turning nines into tens might matter today. You never know how far these pins will go. By the way, Jeff Walsh came into this uh, with a 967 for the first eight strings. Uh, 
Winchell is 9.37 and Brian Fuller 9.51. If you're curious, I know we all are. Four horsemen left side. Third ball coming up. Great to see you all here in chat. Yeah, it, it, it is interesting how many wrong-footed, so-called wrong-footed bowlers we are, we have here. But I know at least Jason Doucette and Mike Kustak who've made the world with that successful delivery. Seven for Winchell, unfortunately, trying to will himself back into it. Skins is a fantastic show put together by Corey Alicia and Jordan Britton of Candlepin Corner. John Winchell's been on a few of those episodes, as have many other bowlers you might recognize from other shows, the pro circuit, and so therefore on Candlepin Bowling Network as well. 3 5 10. Shaded wide of the three pin. That wood wasn't frozen, unfortunately. He's talking to himself. What a door for who just made a great half Worcester conversion. She did it again. We saw her do that on lane 24 earlier, if and I recall correctly. Pretty well pinned out, I'm told. For Winchell, he gets 10. 26 through 3. I'll say it over and over again how great a job Lexi Howard and Sean Howard have done, including presumably with making lunch as well. I mean, there are so many pieces you need to make a tournament this big work so well. And Lee Delanes has the experience to do it. 10 pick. as you like with the plank in front. Very nicely done. So, 36 in a ball through four. And now Winchell can start building. See the color popping off on the score sheets. It's good to see. It's Irby Kafalas, that's John Kafalas, to his left. You notice John is waiting for him to deliver, but it then throws the pin sweep down. Basically trying not to distract his peripheral vision, essentially with the pin sweep in motion. Some bowlers would say, eh, that wouldn't really bother me, you know, like, why, why would I be getting distracted by that? But it is a courtesy that many bowlers in leagues will employ just to avoid putting the pin setter in the other person's face in effect, even though it is on the next lane over. It's probably a more dramatic effect uh, when it's the Model E pins, and it's like Exeter Bowling Lane. It's also like uh, Ryan Family Amusements, Riverwalk Lane, Amesbury. That's a uh, four fill on the head pin. Winchell, uh, as accurate as ever on the head pin, not getting a whole lot of love. Having one of those days. Really trying to cut this over. We have seen eagle variants go. Not a true eagle per se, but this leave does go. At least today, anyway. And, okay, he rang the three pin around. Uh, that's a brutal eight box, but that's what he's going to get. And now Brian Fuller Jr. mentioned Riverwalk Lanes. Fuller has the highest score. 224 at the old Lafayette Lanes. Keith Beaupre has the highest single, which I believe took down Jeff Walsh's name from the board. Of course, Riverwalk Lanes referring to the new name after Mark Ritchie took owner ownership. Four seven. 
vous souhaitez voir ce match officiellement et directement cliquez sur ce lien. No, don't click the links. Don't do that. I'll ban the scammers. A reminder, you're already watching Candle Bully Network. You're watching Lizzie Spares like Fowler Jr. has. Please do not click any scam links in chat. Je vous remercie. We thank you very much. Ten and a ball for the first. Let's see, what do we got here? Still scores through six so far. We'll check the bulletin board as best as we're able. I'll tell you what, after the string, if Bob Lee doesn't pop on by, I'll pop by myself and see what's going on. Hmm. Five, seven, eight, nine as the ball seemed to tail away. Amazing how these pros get these pins to move. Nine. decided to jump in my throat there. <coughs> A check mark left side. Just straight up died. It's okay. One three nine for Fuller. <laughs> and I have the wrong square up. I mean, good grief. Three nine. If I had to set up this way, then I wouldn't mess this up. There we go. Nine box for Bowler. Bowler, of course, the 2017 Easter Classic champion. He got a 26-16 in that year. Man. Hard to tell the break, but I think it, it, it hits the 1-3, it just deflects away. So a 5-7. This would be something. Now he looks at the tail. There's a 10 box. And 52 at the half. Now we hit the correct scores. Now we show Jeff Walsh's score. Yeah, if anyone's got a couple of C batteries for a radar gun, do please advise. My own batteries I'll recharge in just a moment. Jeff Walsh up now, 45 at the half. <laughs> Jeff Walsh has bowled in this tournament a myriad of times. 10. This is the 11th time in this tournament. About a 112 average by my count. His highest score was 23.92. And that was in, put my levels up here, that's better. 
Three, six, seven, ten. Thank you very much. It was 19th in 2016. Let's get that on the board. So his first mark, and what a way to get it. Just taking a peek around. Troy Fournier, 62 in a ball half, looks decent on the uh, lane 23. We'll see him in a moment. No big halves going right here that I see. Paul Yaden got a 66 half, I see, though. That spare strike combo helped out. Oh, boy. Oh, but it broke up. I was worried uh, Walsh's ball hadn't entered the correct way, but actually, it's a brilliant leave, seven pin, just by sheer power. Oh, okay. Those, those are getting to him. He knows he missed that two pinner. He knows he missed that single pin. He's had some misfortune as well, including with that diamond, but it's a tough one. I was trying to look at the chat here. So it'll be, yes, 10 box. That's how it should be. They have the wrong fill on the board. That was the issue. Got that corrected now. I mean, Willie, it's a couple of C batteries I need. I don't know how close you are. Strike! Ah! The always ball, I think Mark Ritchie calls that one. That 10 fill always comes just as you miss the fill. It would have been a nice fill on the previous mark, but there it is all the same. Light that up. Again, Walsh has been on the head pin over and over and over. Quite convincingly, too. Just a couple of singles that have gotten away, and this string could really be heating up. more six seven nine and ten these pins aren't convincingly mixing for him but they are eventually oh boy oh boy I thought that wood was gonna shoot across yeah, thank you very much you might catch us during the lunch break but we'll be very happy to see you at that time I think we might get a radar gun fixed, people. The power of social networking. Nine fill, 10 box. That's how the score looks. 103 through nine. Pretty well worked out, working that split out for 10. That's how the pros do it. Just had that half Worcester earlier. The only tough sledding he's had. Casey McCool, good to see you. Walsh's delivery, three pin. Wood just skids to a halt instead of doing anything useful. I guess end to end is just never gonna do anything much good of anything. So it's a three, five, six, nine. He took out a diamond in effect. Ooh, goodness. And Walsh has had a lot of those almost shots, almost a board, almost a pin. How different this string could be. As it is, it is pro grade. The box is nine and the string is 112. That's ninth of 20. Lita Lanes, Nashua, New Hampshire. Great we are. Without the frog in my throat this time. John Winchell. See, he's been on the head pin more than not. Wipes out. Yeah, seven out. One, seven, eight. Has a very smooth delivery to his ball. Just you see that cross lane delivery. Doesn't charge the line like we've seen some other bowlers. Just 
just a very smooth, efficient cross lane delivery. You know, jut it out. Maybe it was a little faster in pe years past, but it's always been that same clockwork rhythm. Yeah, yeah, two marks, see? One spare, one strike. The strike is in green as well. Should I have put that in red as well? I just thought I wanted the strikes to be a different color. Anyway. First time we're giving this scoring system a test drive, so any feedback is appreciated. That was the third ball for Winchell, nine box, 57, six. all in chat today, and I mean all of you. Thank you for spending some of your Easter with us. Big strike! We'll put some of those green smudges on the board. Which again, it's only missed two head pins. Clobbering it. Bob Lee joining in just in time, a little too late to see that Winchell oh, hammer, but Winchell, what has he got? Yeah. You're having a little fun here. Um, well, Austin Barnes at 63 in a ball for his first half. He's the leader. Um, staying up there at 141.9. He throw, ended up throwing a 128 in the last. He's on, on target for again as John Winchell prepares for his bid at a double. Oh, wouldn't that be something? Oh, that was a good piece, but no big, big bedpost plus a... One time, he had, one time he had the highest score on our particular lane. He had a 159, so did Paul Markey that year. So Aaron Fontaine is in second. He is 42, 42 back, but he just... Um, he was at 49 on a strike at, at the half. Josh Daly just threw a one. He, he's, he's finishing up over on our right. Um, They're getting harder and harder to a, see. We need he binoculars. Had a spare over there. He, he was at 120, made a spare, so he's going to be at 135, 140. He's, he's in third place. Jeff Surrett finished with a 156 just to his right. Of course he did. Of course he did. I'm and, just not surprised anymore. He's clearly came to play. Uh, and uh, Daly's still pitching over there. He looks like he's on his. Probably on his fill on his 11th rack. Is that a 140? No. I'm seeing a 146 for Daly. I'm chained down here the way I've created this. I'm in a prison of my own making, Bob. Big, big uh, grin on his face, too. He looks he looks pretty happy with himself. He should be the way he's throwing. He's throwing it yeah. way he's bowling lately. Nick Norcross in, uh, Nick Leach in, in uh, Fifth and sixth place, Sean Baker in seventh, Ryan Cox, Jimbo Ayat, and Charlie Collins rounding out the top ten. Spare. As, yeah. Winchell is now at uh, 93 and a ball through nine. He's at 10.30 on the day. By the way, as far as I can trust the internet comment, I think I got two C batteries coming to us for the radar gun. Oh, for what? I delivered in person here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Willie says he's like 45 minutes out and can do that. So, <laughs> well, he should come in. Anybody should enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, we, we'd like to get some ball speeds. Um, yeah, it's it's fun to watch. I'm, I'm watching a lot of bowlers making the adjustment to the significant slope um, on lanes two and three. They're, uh, some of them are over adjusting, and some of them are some of them are just like enjoying it. Cause there's actually quite a lot of pin action back there. As long as and, nobody falls. And the plate back there is flat. I, you know, it's just it's just the approach, and maybe yeah. the first ten feet of the lane, maybe. I, I think it's I think it's pretty level where the ball goes. It's just your body, your, your body's moving. Winchell. Oh, is that it? Crossovers leave kings. Right, five and dime. Yep. Good fill though. I got this new innovation where the score kind of heats up the further higher they are above par. Oh, cool. So the color, it's color coordinated that yeah, way? Yeah, yeah, So it gets redder, redder? Yeah. Okay. Jeff Surrett's 160, he'll like turn the font color black. Ooh! <laughs> wood kicked behind. I'll mark the wood there. You know, I have binoculars. I should have brought you binoculars. You could get yeah. the scores all the way across the Oh, uh, no, we don't need a coffee or a Ko-Fi or a Patreon for that? Okay, good. We are in the ninth of 20. Nice. Is that true? Yeah, it, it so sure we, is. So we still have to go one more, and then we will uh, 
all have a lo lovely lunch break. You gonna leave the show on? Or you, you need you need to restart it because six hours is your max on. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a new stream yeah, after this. Okay. Second half. Am I at six? I can't be at six hours. Hey, so, hey, no. you got Irby and Troy Fournier coming up next, and Jeff Bougia. Yeah, that's gonna be oh, fun. Oh, sweet. Interesting. I am creeping up to five hours twenty, but I don't. I think it's gonna be okay. I think I'm gonna get away with it. Okay, Brian Fuller one just cracked a thousand on the day. Yeah. If we if our stream quits at like forty minutes, someone in chat's gonna just have to let people know. Oh, they probably timed out. Yeah. Boris on the left side. Fuller, our 2017 champion. That's Got it on the oh, one pitch. Yes. Oh, man. Would, would treat it on the seven pin in the back there. 62 and a ball. Go on runs. Bowlers pick their lane mates, as you know. Fuller came in in 21st place uh, with a scores on the day of 160. 118, 131, 106. No, sorry. <laughs> There's a 99 in there before the 160. I, I was in a second. 99, 160, 118, 131, 106, 97, 102, and 138. So he's got three low ones, nothing in the 20s. <laughs> he's got one yep. in the 60s, two in the 30s. Maybe heading there again now, or no, he's at 74. It's the consistency. Yeah. Once he gets dialed in, he could get right back into form. 3710. Darn good bowler as is. Such a balanced delivery. Sweet ball. And another there. spare. Yeah. So that's uh three here in the in the ninth for Fuller. You bet. 78 and ball through seven. Maria Subs bowler in the worlds. Craig Holbrook, Bob Whitcomb on that team. Sean, Sean Baker, notably, that was an acquisition from Lucky Strike. No cash considerations. They just straight up got him. We don't have a waiver wire in this league. <laughs> I, I think somebody ought to have the idea. Like some some, some manager should have tryouts and uh, objective scores. He was fuller on the fill. A little full, yeah. but he takes out the right side. It's such a nonchalant delivery too. It's like incredible how much pin action he gets despite that. Yeah. Um, what I'm seeing is is a, a kind of balance. There's left right balance, and then there's Ball back and ball forward balance. He's got the best ball back, ball forward balance, and he just clips. <laughs> it, it, it is, I mean, th this is something that a lot of bowlers at the, at the higher level have started to talk, tell me about. It's like a secret handshake. That that's one of the secrets is keeping keeping the back and forth part of the of, of the balance. Yeah, I, I'm still working on every other part of the balance. You know, so just your body equilibrium, you know, basically. Left and right balance, and, and you know, and rushing with your feet. You know. Try to run. You, you're always in a slightly different position unless you're yeah. a giant, super sturdy dude. Well, I mean, we have seen some bowlers make uh, consistent timing errors as well because they just, you know, they charge the line hoping to get some power, but then they don't get everything out of it. We've seen all sorts of bowlers today. And Fuller left that one out right on the three pin. Got seven on the fill though. Yeah. 109. Well, he's at 102 through eight complete. 109. Nine and counting. Out of spare, Brian. Nice. Oh, really? Right behind and in front of it. Really? He sent the head pin in that, front that, and the that, wood behind. That was the six pin, man. The, the, the ten pin got snagged from behind so, on the first pitch. And that'll be nine. So 111 through nine complete. Well, I'll have the best score of the trio now yeah, that it's. Uh, <laughs> you got uh, the newlywed, Jeff Walsh, right? That's right. And, uh, was 112. You know, 111. This is this is one one of the things you have to adjust your mind to. You if you throw a 111 back in the old days in the pro series, you owed a drink to the crowd because 111 was like their their 99. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> back you know back then everybody was a 120 or better. Uh, 111 was the uh, you know spare bid. Fuller just. Yeah, leaves the head, leaves the kick. Pin. So they just never had those strings where they get hosed by the head pin and just like end up with a 90 something because they just got nothing. I think they always did. I, I look at archive scores and there were certainly a lot of low scores. Well, <laughs> nobody wants to publish the 90s anyway. <laughs> unless a, was from, were the days, right? All unless right. it was from ye old times to just like, boy, he got 95 in that string. That was impressive, you know. So Fuller with a 121. Nice job, Brian. And I'm gonna go explore lane four over there, Greg. Happy spelunking. 
Spelunking is cave exploration, of course. I know, I know. Yeah, good scores all around. There, there they are again. You, you look at the head pin accuracy and how much of a difference that makes. Only two marks there for Walsh, but still maintaining good form there. John Winchell had some pins get away in the, along the way, but still a couple of 10 boxes. And overall, you know, and again, a lot of the reason the pins were getting away was because of those splits, which are dastardly. And then for Brian Fuller Jr., just then you see getting a lot of good contact. Actually, had the fewest head pin hits out of anyone, but because he had the most power to his ball, those three marks, the four marks, excuse me, getting it done, 121. We'll wipe the scoreboard away, get ready for our 10th string of 20. So again, this will be the last string before lunchtime. After this, the stream will, this stream will disconnect, but we will be back with strings 11 through 20 after this string. To be clear, I am not going away. I'm still here, don't worry. And you will want to Make sure you either like or follow on Facebook and, or subscribe on YouTube so that you're always in the know. And that way you'll be notified uh, when we go live next, which I always forget if it's an hour for lunch or something like that, maybe a half hour. But we'll be here. And uh, literally apart from that lunch interval, we'll be here with more bowling. And believe me, we're going to be going into the wee hours. You will not fret not. You could probably finish your Easter Sunday plans, drive home, and then still catch us. It, it, we're going to be on for that long. So this is the 20 string grind we love here. Started at 11 o'clock local time. Might go into the wee hours, maybe before midnight if we're lucky. Uh, certainly the pace of play seems pretty good overall. Taking a look around, I think we're about to get set here for the next one, in fact. Jeff Bugia, Herbie Kafalis and Troy Fournier coming up. Eagles have been made today. Uh, oh, no true spread eagles, but one uh, eagle variant where the uh, actually two even where there's been the pins missing, but still they had the two and three up, and that was still a difficult cut, and yet they did it anyway. I noticed that uh, Chris Ryder uh, is still bowling on lane 22. That lane's a little behind. Uh, so we're about two boxes away from all being able to move for this one. Now here's an interesting question. I wonder if it will be possible in future years for bowlers to be able to shift lanes effectively and start as soon as they're ready effectively. As long as you're not cutting anyone off, in theory, you might be able to start a match sooner. It's been posited before. Current standings? I can tell you standings through eight right now. We heard it from Bob Lee a moment ago. Uh, but right now, Austin Barnes through eight strings. Through eight strings, we've just had nine, of course. Austin Barnes, 11.35. Aaron Fontaine, 1,093, so that's uh, 42 back. Josh Daly, 10.88, or 47 back. And then Jeff Surratt, 10.56, uh, which is 79 back if I know how to do math, which I usually do. No, sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah, 10.56. Nick Leach, 10-29, as is Nick Norcross. That's tied fifth between Nick and Nick, two Central Three teammates, incidentally, on the Friday Night Pro League. And then Sean Baker, 10-27. Uh, uh, what year is it, Sean Baker? Goodness, I mean, we got Baker and Surrett. I mean, these guys are stars of 2000's Channel 50 programming. Yet here they are tearing it up again. I mean, a lot of TV bowlers, of course. Barnes, I don't believe, has been on any show, apart from our Candlepin Bowling Network streams. Fontaine was on King of the Palace for certain. Um, maybe Candlepin New Gen, Nate Fontaine was. Josh Daly was on Candlepin New Gen, among many other shows, including Skins most recently. Jeff Surrett on Channel 50 and a myriad of others. Uh, Nick Norcross, probably the earliest one, was the Comcast Challenge. Jeff Surrett also. Um, I don't believe Nick Leach has been on a, I'm not sure if Nick Leach has been on a show. Someone could correct me. I could be forgetting King of the Palace. I could be forgetting New England Candlepins. 
Sean Baker has basically been on every TV show imaginable since the 2000s. Like, I mean, born too late for Channel 50, but still. All move now, 10th string of 20. We round up the first string of the halfway point. My name is Greg Guiar, and boy, am I excited to be here. I, I'm glad to have you all alongside as well. I could get repetitive expressing just how awesome it is to be here, but I'll do it anyway. We see the standings here and the total pinfalls here. Austin Barnes still out in front, about 42 ahead or so. Isn't he just explosive? It's incredible. Jeff Bugia up on lane 24. So again, will Austin Barnes hold? Don't see him in view, I don't think, just yet. But that 203 he had earlier, the second highest Eastern Classic string of all time, is bolstering his efforts for certain. One, two, four, seven, ten. A horseman and a ten pin. Orbegia, that's a real dramatic hook to that ball and it delivers a spare. Wearing that Team USA shirt from ICC Worlds. I believe still on the Riverwalk roster. I haven't covered a lot of Riverwalk lanes. It's usually been Tony Levesque who is a uh, on his Tony the Magic Man TikTok streams. He's been covering Team Riverwalk Lanes and uh, Team Lafayette Lanes, referring to its former moniker. Jeff just misses the headpin this time. He's got the 1, 2, 4, 9, 10 in a 5 fill. I was right, of course I'm right. 9 pin goes, another spare. Bugia resilient again. Jeff Bugia, a former Channel 50 Stars of Strikes alumnus. Um, he is on Team Riverwalk. Mark Ritchie, the captain of that. JJ Terigny, Ryan Southall, and Dean Sullivan, the regulars there. Since I made name drive lane for Team Lafayette, I'll nickname all. Name them as well. Chris Kaznave, the captain. Matt Lawless, Sean Landry, Stephen Boddy, uh, formerly Central Park. Uh, Kevin Gallier and John Lascarbo. Riverwalk is on the wrong side of the bubble, which I think they were last year as well, if memory serves. Lots of leagues in my head. That's a nine drop for Bugia, nine pin left. A lot of wood and swirling out there. Most convincing hit. The backup hook. Got it. Spare. Three straight. Dick Lutsky's doing it proud. That's the results through eight strings right there, you can see here. Fifteen, nineteen, and what else? in the fourth. Doesn't quite make it over to the head pit. He's got the four horsemen in the eight pit. Five on this one as well. I mean, we see some bowlers room. The head pin isn't everything. Even Jeff Surrett only had the head pin half the time when he dished 160 on our lanes. Gotta have the angle as well. And boy, does Jeff get it the way he delivers. He gets rid of everything else, proving the point. Average is 110 in the Friday Night Pro League. The lower averages, but still doing quite well for himself. 59 through four. You saw him point there, giving right of way to the bowler on the right. That's how you remember it. Anyone who's newer to the game, 
the two bowlers are ready at the same time to give way to the right. It's not, it's called right of way, not left of way. One, three, seven, in front, got it. What a great half that is. Gia showing you how to get it done. Largely the second ball doing the heavy lifting. And that is 69 in a ball at the half. By the way, two. Willie, two batteries, if you would, please. And thank you. I'll text you as well. I'll check the, I'll check the radar gun. We'd love to get some ball speeds going here. Maybe get Bob Lee to rove around for them, but. <laughs> Yep, just two. I emptied it out just for you, now you know. We and our viewers would greatly appreciate it if you could do this rescue mission. He's got a message received. John can follow us now. We saw him with Team Hatchetman at ICC Worlds. That's Rich Lamoni's squad. A lot of overlap between them and Central 2. Four horsemen in the eight pin. That's a very distinct delivery about it. That's the guy I mentioned has the towel on his side, on his left side, in fact. Just missed him. Leach was on King of the Palace. I did miss that. And there's the head pin and a 10 box. I see you, Bob. One second. Hey, you're, you got Herbie here, huh? I sure do. Thank um, goodness. I need a breather. Josh Daly with his big 146 has moved into second place. That's the big news. Jeff Surrett also closed the gap, but he's in. He, um, Austin Barnes continues to lead. And it was a scratch 12.53 through, through nine. He, he, threw, he threw just a uh, 118. So Daly, Daly picked up uh, 20, 28 pins on him there. Um, Aaron Fontaine threw a 140. Jeff Surrett, like I said, 156. Nick Leach uh, with a 125. Now holds on to fifth place at 11. At 11.47, uh, he is 106 pins behind. So 106 pins separate the top five bowlers. And uh, I'll leave this so with you. Sounds good. So, all right, so the gap's tightened up 20 and 21, 22, huh? Yeah, that mere 118. That's actually going to make the, uh, we're heading for a milestone here that a lot of a lot of these bowlers, uh, 140 milestone is huge, but I think it, it's, it's going to reach now. Barnes will need a 147. Yeah. Daly would need a 164, 166, and uh, Fontaine would need a but what's uh, interesting, 67, 167. Tim Douglas won with a 125 average here this last year. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bowlers are all north of that average. Oh, that was crushed. Yeah, that, well, Irby knew it all the way down. I think the pin action is better. The I think everybody yeah. has learned the lessons of you know plate maintenance. Um, you know the, the pin action. I think that's due to the fact they had brand new pins I mean, a couple of years ago, maybe right after the Easter Classic they put them in, and uh, those those are always very square bottom. They're very dip, you know, they don't fall easily. Now they're they've been beaten up by a few thousand bowlers, <laughs> and uh, they they just tip and tip and fall a little more easily. Interestingly, Exeter Lane's pins have the opposite thing, where they fall at the slightest provocation. Interestingly, yeah. Um, uh, or, or frankly, Millis is in that stage right now where the pins are a little too tippy. They, they, they fall down when they set sometimes. <laughs> um, but. All right, I'm going to have to go back and uh, go to my second half um, on lane four. Folks are, folks are enjoying the day with um, yep. good fiddles coming up. See you at lunchtime. Bye for now. Why, yes, it is 4.42 local time. Get over. Ooh, it's end to end, though. That's not going to work. Unlucky. If that would have bounced off any differently for Irby, and he could have had that to go. Instead, it's nine on the fill. He got a 10.
John's competed in a few different Pro Series events, but most notably, he did. If memory serves, I believe he cashed last year at Easter. Yes, he did. 14th place, $150, and that was his first time cashing in 13 attempts. Longtime supporter of this tournament from 2008 onwards. He took a break in the, let's call them the Chris Merrill years, 2021 and 22, and then right back in it, and right back in the Money House, 23.73. He actually had a higher score that did not cash, 24.45, or it was ninth place in 2016. Last year they paid 15 pl places. There we are, get over three, it's gone. Strike again, and that's one Cavalas is gonna sit on. Oh, that's gonna, that's gonna look good. Now Troy Fournier. Sorry about that. Oh, I know what I can do. Oh, back this up. Sorry, guys. Had to back us up a little bit. Make sure nobody bumps us by accident. Troy Fournier's taking his time here. I think he's going to wait for uh, Garrett Martin to his left to complete his half, and then he'll step up. Troy Fournier, of course. A recent addition to Candlepins for Cancer out of Boutwell's Bowling Center, Concord, New Hampshire. That was a lot of fun. Great house they run out in Concord. Of course, the late great Dan Murphy, the former owner. House still hums like it should. a joy to be able to get to go all, all these bowling centers, of course, including and take you, of course, virtually along with us. And of course, April 6th, we're going to come right back here to the same house because this Saturday, Pro Series playoffs are here at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. We are looking forward to having you for that. Tim Douglas Bowler of the Year. Yes, that. So again, it's going to be interesting because we got Tim Douglas defending champion of the Easter Classic now, and now Tim Douglas Bowler of the Year. That is to say, the most pro series points in the regular season. These points being awarded for finishes in the various events. Get over seven. Yes. Fournier's got a check mark. Can Tim Douglas take either crown? That one is one. That was incredible how the pins just snapped apart. And Troy's got himself tanning a ball to start. Barry's back. Good to see you in chat. Good to see everyone in chat as well. In case you missed it, Austin Barnes with a 203, making Easter Classic history with the second greatest string of all time, 203. Only John Zernike has bowled higher, 211. Mike Yao, the house record, 213. And if Barnes had hammered that double strike of the 10th, which he threw exactly the ball for it, it could have been a lot different. Still a seven, uh, dastardly six, seven, 10. With wood around, it's very horizontal wood. I'll mark the slash anyway to indicate the wood. Actually, one piece disappeared. That's disappointing. Not really sure. But yes, Austin Barnes. Yes, Austin Barnes pulled the 203. That really happened. And yes, Austin Barnes is out in front right now. That, that update as of string number eight, right, and of string number nine. Excuse me. Box is eight. Got the spread eagle minus the 10. There's one of those variants we have seen these go today. This exactly did go earlier. Got 
Lucas Les. He got it across, and Violet Bow's gonna go. 2 4, borrow of Paul Grant's metaphor. Close. And 10. Solid work out there. Troy Foreigner has bowled in this tournament multiple times, including 2000, actually. Then came back in 2011. This is actually the second, only a second Easter since 2016. He topped out at 24-11 in 2014. 4, 6, 7, 10. Again, an immense thanks to Donnie Laura, Dave Barber, and myself for putting that in the wrong place. And John Zappi, Dottie Lawrence, Dave Barber, and John Zappi, instrumental in getting these statistics and scores to share with you on this broadcast. Dottie Lawrence is here, and her index card filing method is impressive. She was the one taking admission fees earlier today as well, but. Dottie had a real knack for identifying the bowlers. She always mentioned when she would uh, help out with WCBC Pro Tour events as well, and she got very adept at that. Very needed skill if you're going to navigate the world of professional tournament organization in the world of Candlepin Bowling. Fournier again with a perfect box, 10 again. Not much to, not much to sneeze at here, 4 for 4 on the head pin. How about 5 for 5? Not quite. He's got the 2 pin. I got Justin Kochi alongside me. Justin, well, Bob's not here, but you are. How are you doing? Struggling, but you know. Yeah. Just trying to keep my head on it. warner has got the one, six, seven, nine, ten. He's got it. In fact, it's a pretty good going there. He's gonna get a spare. Forgive me, Justin. I'm in the midst of the transition. This. Oh, I'm super glad you've joined us again. 55 and a ball at the half. Brings up Jeff Bougie, who's only got one head pin, but four marks. Interestingly. Yeah. Are, the, are the breaks getting any easier for you? No. Tougher. Now, Bob was mentioning something about the contour of the lane uh, being, uh, how was it bowling on lane two it was, you said, that was apparently the slope was a little different? Um, lane two was a, uh, it was, it's really tough, you know, you gotta, you gotta throw a slower ball over there, but, um, you know, it's tough. Uh, I threw a 48 half, I just can't get nothing going right now, but. You know, I'm hoping it gets a little bit better while yeah. the day goes on, and you know we got a nice half, nice break in about 30 minutes. So yeah, that was that speed adjustment you were mentioning. It makes sense. Get over 10, five, eight, nine. But um, you know, it's just you gotta just throw a good ball most of the day, you know. But I, it's not easy right now. Yeah. Oh, it ramps it through like. Fooey on that wood as well. We got uh, Jeff Bugia up on lane 24. Yeah, he, he's a great guy. I, uh, he used to coach me back in the day when I was young. Oh, really? So when was this? This was when I was about maybe eight or nine or ten. And you know? uh, so, sorry, what bowling center is this essentially? Uh, Jeff Bugia used to help me as a coach as a, up at a Woburn Bullet Drone. Mm. Bob Brown and uh, Paul, they all got me to become a uh, great bowler and try to stay behind the line. And, <laughs> you know, it's 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 a progress. You know, I've been doing pretty well today. But, uh, yeah. It's incredible also what Mike McIntosh has been doing uh, for youth leagues uh, as well. He's really, well, he's got a Facebook group going trying to get that reinvigorated. And, um, I promise him going somewhere with this with Corey Merrill is not to be confused with Chris Merrill yeah also out of Academy Lanes but what do you think it'll how do you how do you think the current youth outreach efforts are doing like do you think do you think we could use more kids programs in effect or yes. you think, yeah I feel like Academy is doing a really good job with their kids this year and you know, they, put, they brought back the states. They brought back all the fun things that, like, me, Charlie, Josh, and, you know, Cole Fry had when we were in the kids' league. And, right. 
you know, they're they're doing so good with their kids this year. I give them a I give Academy a really good job for what they're doing. Yeah. The Rock and Bowl event as well. The Rock and Bowl. Have, have, you, have really you taken part in that event as well or um next year will be my first year. Um, you know, it's fun to, you know, have the pros show up and you know, watch the kids beat us up, you know. <laughs> well, Maybe so if you're in a good I'll mood. I'll tell you, if anyone has any fun plans to do, go to Academy Lane. It's really fun. They take good care of you. Averill, Massachusetts. Uh, Josh is a really good guy. He takes really good care of you. And, uh, yeah. And what a shot by Jeff. Yeah. 104 and a ball. He's raking right now. He could easily go 130s at this moment. Jeff Bajia, great guy. Throws a great ball. Such yeah. a... Such a funny character off the lanes as well. You get to know him pretty well. It's such an extraordinary ball that sort of like backup curve he's got going on there. It's quite incredible. <laughs> I didn't think your commentary was that off color. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, people. How does that happen? Sorry. Sorry, Steve Bronchuk. <laughs> we actually had recently, for, albeit for a Duckman broadcast on Candleton Bowling Network. That was Drew fun Stewart. to watch. Yeah, Drew Steele had the call on that. He was out at North Chelmsford Lanes. Yep. Similar game of small ball. You can watch that for the idly curious. Whoops, that skips off the foul line, so it loses the break. Oh, brother, how does... What a day uh, for Austin Barnes today. Um, well, current leader, I'd say. Current leader, yep. Remind me, you're somewhat near his lane, or no? No, no you're on the wrong corner. I'm on the other corner. <laughs> Too bad. I'm, I'm in like 60s right now. I'm trying to fight my way back up. So. Yeah. Oh, there he is, right there. Oh, of course. He did it on lane 13, so we're gonna see him soon. In fact, uh, this will be probably about strength 15, I think it is. And there's my uh, favorite bowler, Nate Lees. Not great, not bad. <laughs> Mr. Nate Lees, my favorite pro bowler in the house. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, Troy in the, what up, buddy? he's in He's in there. He's in there for sure. Good, good. Jeff Bajie is in the Come legends. On, yeah. It. Nate's there awesome strike. There you go, Jeff. What a ball, buddy. You can't how can you not love Jeff? I love Jeff. He's he's a good guy, you know. Happy to see him still bowling though. Yeah. I mean I mentioned it. Star of 2000s bowling television, yet still getting He's it getting done his, today. His son's gonna be like him one day. Alex will get this. Alex, you said? Yeah. That's your son's name, right, Alex? Yep. yep. Really? There you go. It's good to see him throwing 300. <laughs> see what uh, Jeff does here in the 10th on a strike. Throws a good mix ball, too. I love the way he throws it. It could do some damage. He's got this head pin. Two, four, six, ten evens up. Last ball in the strike fill. Yeah, we did not get video of the Austin Barnes 203. He was on the wrong side of the house. Heck, we were on the wrong corner. Yep. Nice game by Jeff. Yeah. 131. 133. I'm mistaking. Yeah, 133, in fact, with the 8 fill that it had to update. Great. And uh, we got, uh, I forget the guy's name that's coming up right now. John. John uh, Kefalis. Kefalis, what a good guy he is. Yeah. Very. He's, he's bowled all the forms of bowling. He's done duck pin and 10 pin himself. Actually was, uh, used to reside in Arizona, in fact, and did a lot of 10 pin bowling there. Then came came here and took up small ball as well. Nice game, Jeff. No, he'll still he'll still bowl ten pin as well, I'm sure. Yeah, boy, he's feeling. He's got a double strike. He did it. Oh man, it strings like that. You, not totally surprising how he's been so successful. I am falling off the train right now, but you know there's another ten to go, so start making the noise. You we know? have seen so many times where. Uh, it, 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 one way or the other, you know, bowlers either gain steam in the second half or lose steam in the, the second half. And I think it's that divide that really defines the pro bowlers. Let's see if uh, John can throw a triple strike here. Win some money for the day. I'm, here we go. It's, it's the first double strike we've seen on this particular lane, of course. 
our three bagger and four bagger pools going today. I mean, some bowlers have entered that, just saying. He's missed the head pin this time, unfortunately, but it is a six on the first one. So we'll put that on the board. It's nice to uh, see some legends that came by today, like John Zappi, Craig Holbrook. It's nice to see those guys around. Yeah. It's a, it is a pity we won't have Craig Holbrook in the field today, but he did come by. That's nice. Yeah. We got John he Blaze. Got to the going spare. On, Blaze. There's Jeff Bajia. Another multi sport athlete, John Blaze. Candlepin and Duckpin. What's up, Brian? Justin Kochi flexing his connections next to me. I'm Greg Guyar here on Candlebin Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. We're in Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Best of the best there. Phil is three and is that the lunch call? Wow. That's the lunch call, so Greg, I will see you for the second half. Sounds good, see ya. Six and seven, those are good pins there for Herbie. Sorry, I missed that last leave. Yep. John, are these pro bowlers? A lot of them are. I mean, you can tell the difference pretty quickly, but anyone who's dishing above 120, like Kapalas is, in fact. I mean, that ball gets away there, but, you know. This tournament also brings out the best of the best, including internationally from Canada as well. And although anyone can pay the entry fee, and it's a once in a lifetime experience for a lot of people, it's the premier competition that really sets this tournament apart. In addition to, of course, its trademark grind of 20 strings. Three and two split for Irby. Three pin, no, oh, gets cherry picked. Tough one. Black is there, so he'll go for the easy way out. Almost scooted across, eight box. Still a chance to bust into the 130s. And remember, 125 was the winning score last year. 125 was the winning average, excuse me, last year. Um, Austin Barnes is considerably north of that borderline 140. He's on a complete tear. Cavallis is not care to look at that one, but he, mm, no, I don't think he's going to look like it any better when he turns around. 17810 though, with Wood. Uh, the problem with that Wood is I'm not sure if it's covered up the left side of that head pin, which is going to make it difficult to cut into the 10. But if you send the wood wildly, pin decks and sidewalls are available. Ball bounced on the plate as well. Hasn't this been fantastic, folks? Eight box. 132 for John Kafalas. Uh, you should plug his YouTube channel real quick. Irby and then the number four. U R B I E and then the number four. For more great bowling. He travels around bowling lanes and has sort of a a league unto himself, I think it is, you know. Not a lot of views. His views des his videos deserve more views, including some uh, yesteryear coverage of the Pro Series and other major events. I, he's covered the Worlds as well. And certain strengths of this Easter Classic as well. Never live, but he was the video guy for many, many years. Yeah. Troy Fournier. Working a spare right now. You see his good head pin accuracy up to this point. Ah, just five on this one. Four horsemen in the nine.
chips out two more. Cheryl, Nathan Fontaine is in the field as well. I mean, Aaron Fontaine's making a lot of ripples, but fantastic to see Nate. It's been a long time since we've seen him out on the, uh, at least since I personally have seen him out on the lanes. Fontaine's, of course, the grandson to Tom Olsta. Nominated him as much for the ICBA Hall of Fame some relatively recently. I mean, Cheryl, you knew that, of course. I tell the viewers. <laughs> Edmund, oh boy, that is the one five punch. Oof. Well, I remember Steve Reno Jr. making this on King of the Palace. That's about the only solace I got. Good luck, Troy. Took out the right side trying. A question in chat, do you need a League average to bowl? No, you don't. This is a scratch tournament, so if we're just basing it off total pinfall, you can bowl. As long as you can pay the entry fee, as long as you can bowl properly in sequence without bowling, cutting anyone off, but also maintain pace of play by not being too scared to cut anyone off. You know, it's simple, really. Uh, Bob is here with the latest uh, well, through nine strings. Have you been uh, alerting the viewers to what's going on to our left with Austin Barnes? Uh, no, it, it started with a triple <laughs> in the 10th box. What? And then uh, he had a, he had a split for, that he converted into a 10, he had a nice seven. So it was a, a triple, seven, seven, two. So 19 fill on his third strike. And then he threw a strike in the fifth and now he is up there uh, dropping, he dropped nine on, the, on that strike. So that was a 114, 104 half. Oh, yeah, 104 half. Don't tell me. Okay, he's not going to get a mark in this one. I was like, is he going to get another 200 of this kid? Come on. Well, We've okay. only had one in Easter Classic history before him. So, no, he, he, he needs to, right here, he needs to, he needs to start going deep. But um, he, he does, the other milestone of getting a 1,400 for his first, before sitting down for lunch is now well within his reach. As yeah. He, he is, six, he is uh, 50, 50 over, 54 over. Uh, I mean, through that's, six. I mean, my God, nobody other than Jeff Atkins has rolled 2,800. That's a 140 average. Then. Okay, yep. So he's, he's likely to be halfway there. He hits the head pin and he shakes and bakes. Oh, that was a tough lead. He got a 7, 9, 10. That's Austin Barnes. Lane 21, yeah. Yep. So tough, beautiful, beautiful ball, but he's he's got to make three pieces of wood come alive here. Troy Foyner's having a good string as well. That he does it. He did it. He used both walls. And he, he shot the double. He shot double wood on the left side, picked up the 9 and 10 on the right side, and then the, 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 first, 20, piece, sorry. the first piece that jumped over, hit the wall, came back, and picked the 7. Spare. Man, Austin I mean. Austin Barnes is at 124 and a ball through 7. I mean, this is, is 50, 54 over and a, and a ball. This is, I mean, defending champion of the Friday Night Pro League with Academy 2. That, that's chilling to start mentioning Jeff Atkins' name in the same sentence. All right. I, I, I'm getting goosebumps, honestly, thinking well, about it. Austin was working on something earlier this year. I, I know he was, he was a little frustrated with his game around the 9 pin tournament at Academy when I spoke to him last in, in detail. Yeah. But he is looking beautiful today. There he is. Man. Back on the head pin and gets one of those weird splay leaves, one, three, and one. That's a that's a five fill on the spare. Yeah. So he's at, he's at 59 yes. over through yeah. seven one, complete. A one, three, one, basically. That's got the crowd behind him no, as well. He, 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 but he only needs 40. If he gets a 47, if he throws a 147, he's got the 1,400. Yeah. He does so, not get it on lane 20, unfortunately. By the way, Craig Holbrook has a very strong theory about how things work here at Lita based on today's performance and his historical experience here. He says that 11 of the 12 top top 12 bowlers, and the only except for maybe Baker, are left to right bowlers. They're throwing right, they're the right handers. Interesting. Right handers throwing a, throwing a uh, reverse ball. Oh, there, he almost picked, he almost picked yeah. that three way. It's a, it's a third ball anyway. That was, that's, that's a nine. So he's hanging at uh, one. Yeah. 
Yeah, Folks, we'll follow lane 20 for a little longer and then break the stream here. When we do, please remember, uh, please ensure you like and follow face on Facebook or subscribe on YouTube to Candlepin Bowling Network uh, so that you're in the know about the next stream. Or maybe it'll pop up against your algorithm, but... Yeah! Why would you drop the headphones like that? Let me know if you're good. I can take the headphones from you, buddy. Yeah, sorry about that. He's at, he's at 138. I had to walk over there to see. Yeah, thank 138 you. 138 through 8 complete. So that's one high 150s right now. Yeah, he's at 145 pending. with 7 down on the first ball. And here he is for the spare. Of course he did. Oh, my goodness. Of course he did. Of course. So a spare in the ninth. He's he's in. He, he's, he's a 1,400 man. My goodness. Well, folks, we are going to see him. Uh, so... Actually, it'll be string 14. In fact, we'll see Austin Barnes. Man, is this good to watch. By the way, that's Chris Bover at lane 19, if you're curious. Also a, a former champion, two-time champion, in fact. Got some juggernauts coming around. Remind me, how long is the lunch interval for the sake of our viewers? A half hour, hour? It's a little closer to an hour. Um, there's a lot. Of, they got to feed 100 people, and we got to stay in line. Yeah. The bowlers go first, and then you, um, the civilians will follow. Yeah. I'll I'll go ambiguously in the middle, I suppose. Uh, Austin Barnes, six on his first on his fill. Going for the uh, check mark. He gets gets it. A spare in the 10th, he'll see an 11th rack, and Austin Barnes is in a territory very few have drawn. Man, he's at 14, 17, and Just hope counting. the hamburgers don't weigh him down too much. At the half. It, it's, it's this time where you start thinking about, like, okay, what, do, what exactly should I eat for lunch to make sure this performance keeps up? Cheeseburger, cheeseburger. <laughs> I saw Cloudy with a chance of meatballs only just now. Good movie. What was that? Oh. There he is. Of course he How about a, how about a strike, Phil? That's 173. Oh, my goodness. 173. And All right. Well, if this were a 10 stringer, it'd be a, a route. It's 20, unfortunately. So that's the only bad news you, out of this. You heard the applause. He was at 12.53, so that puts him at 14.26. 14.27. That, 14.27. That's what it says up there, anyway. Okay, 14.27. Oh. Hey, Greg, I'm going to go eat. And yeah, wow. Us, too. Just, wow, All right, wow, I'll take wow. your levels out. Folks, end of this stream, another stream will start in about a half hour, hour-ish time. Like and follow Facebook. Look, subscribe on YouTube to Candlepin Bowling Network, and we will see you soon for the thrilling second half of Ray's Easter Classic from Lita Lane to New in Nashua, New Hampshire. Until then, so long for now. <laughs>